Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself an overlocker. Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Welcome to Sewing Street on Monday the 13th of March. Where's that? It's like halfway through, isn't it? So yesterday was spring, um, Saturday it was winter. Weird, isn't it? But um, at least the mornings are getting lighter, which is great, isn't it? But Easter's coming up, isn't it? And today we have got a bit of an Easter vibe going on. We've got um, Sandy Miller chip in, who's going to be doing two Easter theme projects that you can use for any time of the year, to be honest. But with the thought of those daffodils blooming and the tulip bulbs starting to come through, and all the lambs skipping around the fields, we've got a bit of a spring Easter vibe, which I hope will cheer you up with the, now that mornings are getting lighter, we're all about um, welcoming in the spring. So we've got a fab day for you, fab, loads and loads of different things. Um, but we've got an early bird today. Now the early bird is one of my favorite things. In fact, I'd like to say that this was a bundle that I created many moons ago to go with um, one of my needle cases. 
So I love this bundle because I'm really into needles, as any of you watch regularly know how much I love needles. But buying individual packets of needles, not sure which one you want, always a little bit complicated. So I put together a bundle of nine packets of sewing machine needles that will cover all of your sewing machine needs, nearly. There are a few other ones, obviously, that you can buy. This will cover all of your basic sewing machine needles. Now, the normal price is $22.99, but not today, early bird, $19.99 for nine packets of needles. And honestly, your machine, when you get your machine, normally it comes with a universal needle, that's the one you use all the time. You will, won't believe the difference it will create if you use the right needle. Because the universal needle, that your machine comes with, it's actually got a very, very slight ball point, which means you can use it for woven fabrics as well as stretch fabrics. However, that's great for general usage, but if you've got specific fabric, it, there's a massive difference. So I rarely ever use a universal needle because, I prefer, because I've got the whole pack. And if you've got the whole pack, you'll be the same. I like to use the right needle for the job. So like the Sharps needle is the best needle for using on cotton fabric because it's sharp. There's no ballpoint. You don't need it. You need the sharpness of the sharp needle. Now, I mean, and in here, there are six. Yeah, six needles in there as well. You've got the jeans needle, obviously brilliant for um, weightier fabrics. If your needle breaks, could be you need a jeans needle for anything like canvas, denim, anything that's heavier, use the jeans. Leather, it's not just for leather, use for PU, use for vinyl, use for anything that's a non-woven fabric. It's got a slightly chisel point, so it will go through a lot better. So if you're using um, a jeans needle with your leather, don't use the leather needle, it makes a difference. Obviously there's a pack of Universal. Now this is great for all cotton fabrics, jersey fabrics for general usage. It's when you want something to do the job properly that you use the others ballpoint needle perfect for jersey fabrics because it separates the fibers rather than splits them so you won't get laddering stretch again ideal for um finer stretch fabrics quilting these i always use for my quilting they work better they go through the fabric better. Um, you will find that they will penetrate those layers. They're fine, but they've got a thick shaft, so they'll penetrate the layers, which is what you need for quilting. Embroidery, if you're using specialist embroidery threads, they're slightly thicker than normal threads, and therefore you need a thick, a deeper scarf. That's the little groove that's behind the eye of the needle, and the thickness of the thread will sit in that deeper scarf and it will go through the um, fabric better and the thread won't break as easily because often when you're using metallic thread it will break. Using an embroidery needle does help to avoid that. And finally the top stitch needle, obviously when you're top stitch you can use a normal thread but quite often we use a thicker thread and therefore you need that extra large eye that the top stitch needle's got because you can get those thicker threads through it. So if you use your machine a lot, you've only ever used the universal needle, get the pack. It means that if you've got the pack you can have a go. You can see whether you know, sometimes I'll use a sharps needle and then I'll use that for everything and I'll use it for my quilting as well. But when you've got the quilting needle, you think, mm, actually, that makes a difference. Top stitch, if you're using a thicker thread, don't struggle when you find you, the, the needle isn't penetrating the fabric as well because the, fab, the, knee, the thread is so thick. Pop a top stitch needle in. Anyway, that's the whole lot. That's the whole pack. 19.99. Unbelievable value for money. Message, oh, can we have the screen on cap? Message. Oh, I have this bundle and your case kit, both are fabulous from Terry in West Sussex. Oh, thank you, Terry. It, it really does make a difference. You have a look on the line, have a look and see what all of these packs cost individually and then see what fantastic value that that is. But needles are so inexpensive, it's really worth spending the money to get the right one. Because of all of these needles you're getting, so you're getting, I'm just checking, yes, yeah, six, six in every pack. And what's even better is all of the, most of the packs have got different sizes. So like in the sharps, you've got 60, 70, 80. In the leather, you've got 90s and 100s. In the, um, the quilting and the top stitch and the embroidery, you've got the same sizes because you don't need the different ones in that. But it's worth it for the, for the price, 
there are more part people who've got this in their basket than we've got available now so if you've got it in your basket please check out when you get it home experiment with them and see what the difference is you know don't struggle with hemming jeans and your needle breaking just pop a jeans needle in it takes seconds and having these then when you when you've got through them all when they start to um blunt or they're not going through as well buy another packet then always have the right needles to hand it makes your sewing that little bit more professional Anyway, I'll leave that with you because we've got more people who've got these um, in baskets and we will have people missing out, which is a shame. We'll try and get some more in stock. Anyway, coming up today on Sewing Street, the menu. So now at eight o'clock, we've got a whole fabric, uh, fabric for little princes and princesses, which is an odd title, really. I'd say it's more like fun fabrics. We've got fun we have got a whole hour of fun fabrics and it's lovely having um, plain fabrics, isn't it? But isn't it lovely having novelty fabrics? Also, Hannah's put together some very special ripstop bundles where you get half a metre of plain, half a metre of matching ripstop. Ideal for making all of those little um, gym bags, dat bags, plimsoll bags, makeup bags, wash bags, so that you've got the lining in the ripstop and the outer in the um, plain fabric. Um, great if you want to make welly bags walking boot bags all of that sort of thing and we've got some special bundles for that so it's all about novelty fabrics eight o'clock it's uh, they are gorgeous as well you will really enjoy that it's nice to see some novelty fabrics because add a bit of fun to your sewing nine o'clock we've got sandy miller chip misochi in who is going to be demonstrating how to make a beautiful easter bunny soft toy let me he is a little bit high. He put this on. He's on the tall person shelf. Look at this. This is the William Morris bunny. So we have got instructions for the bunnies and we've got kits. We've got four different kits so you can make in different colourways. Look at him with his William Morris ears. He's beautiful. Look, he's even got jointed arms and legs. So he could be um, making for a child. He could be your Easter decoration. He could be just something that sits on that chair in the spare room, just looking lovely. Gorgeous, isn't he? I feel like I want to bend his ears over like that. He's beautiful, isn't he? Anyway, we've got full instructions kit. Sandy's going to be doing a full demonstration. And as always, she's got fantastic tips and techniques of different um, interfacings and waddings we have got the h630 in so you thought you knew everything about with the h640 oh no i heard i learned this morning about h630 anyway it sounds fantastic sandy uses it all the time to make a massive difference to a make so if you love the h640 hang around for nine o'clock we'll learn all about the h630 look we've even got the pom-poms for the tail as well it's beautiful isn't it that's the William Morris version, and we've got three others as well. That is nine o'clock. Um, Ten o'clock, sewing room tools. Never have enough of the right tools. I have got a whole host of fantastically useful and beautiful tools. I'm going to show you how they work, how they will make a difference to your sewing, because having the right tools for the job, like having the right needles for the job, always makes a difference. I'm always a sucker for sewing room tools as well. And, oh, we've got some fabric bundles as well, including a little bit of Tim Holtz, which is one of my favourites. Then at 11, um, Sandy will be back showing us how to do the spring sheep applique cushion. I'll get that down from the tall person shelf. Look at this. We've got instructions and we've got full kits. So this is the cushion available, as always, in a choice of colourways. Um, and we've got a wall hanging that matches it as well. Now this is, a, we've got kits that have all of this fabric in, but this is a bit of a stash buster project, or it's a bit of a memory project, or it's a way of you showcasing those special fabrics because each of the sheep only uses a small amount of fabric. So there's only four on here, the wall hanging has more, but maybe you want to make something from baby clothes, those special little prints. So the kits have got all of these main fabrics in. Maybe you want to put some check shirts on something. You want to make an Easter make to give to somebody. Make the wall hanging. Use your special fabrics. Use it as a memory thing. Um, and lovely gift as well. Beautiful, isn't it? But you could even use like bits of shirts, baby clothes, ties, because they only use small amounts. But the kits have got all of the other fabrics in them, including the sheep. And this is a place for you to do a bit of stash busting. And we will show you the wall hanging when Sandy's in at 11. You can make it your very own. That's 11 o'clock. And at 12 o'clock, 
I'm going to talk about this all day. Very excited. So I had Julie um, on for the first time with me a couple of weeks ago, um, Jimmy Jumbo on Yarn Lane. And we had a chat. And I said, oh, and I suddenly, it just like dawned, I, do, I worked it all out. The whole point of Julie's crochet hooks and needles is their yarn stash busters. Now, with fabric, stash busting is easy, isn't it? Cut it up in small pieces, sew it together into a patchwork quilt. What about all that yarn where you've got half a ball of double knit in blue, you've got three balls of super chunky in beige, you've got a couple of balls of full ply cotton. What do you do with it? Unless you can buy more of it. So I said to you, right, I've got it. It's just, it's worked it out. So I brought this yarns. I would like to say this is my yarn stash. This is a minor, minor selection of my yarn stash. Julie sent me a hook, because she knits and doesn't crochet. I meant, send me a hook, I'll have a go. Look at the hook. I mean, these are now available on pre-order. I actually, I actually just want this as an ornament. Anyway, so she gave it to me, sent it to me. I got my stash out. I've bought a bit of it in today. And let me show you what I made. I'm sorry, I do apologise in advance for not having sewn all the ends in. Look at a granny square in jumbo. Can you imagine a whole blanket? And obviously if I'd sewn all my ends in, it would be a lot neater. But look at that. I haven't bought anything. And what, what you do, this is the joy of it, is you get all your yarn, doesn't matter what thickness is, you um, combine it together to, and... Um, Julie's got a special tool with her so that you can wind it and also work out the because you need a certain thickness to be crocheting with but you can experiment as well so look there's a granny square then I thought what happens if you do half double crochet or no half half time look at this da, da, da. so I had a bit of super chunky in beige not even, can't even remember what that's for. I had a bit of chunky in yellow and I had it in orange. So I did, there's only 13 stitches in this row. So um, you could do yarn meetups with your friends. So I've left it live, as you can see. It's live and I'll um, show you how to do it. It's great. Once I'd worked out how to hold the hook and stuff, it's, it's just fab. I sat there on, um, it's brilliant. So if you haven't seen, oh, I could actually, if you could just get on with the rest of the show, I'll just do, I'll just do my crochet if you don't mind. Um, I watched Death in Paradise on Friday night. <laughs> I feel like I've crocheted Death in Paradise. The whole murder was solved during this. Um, so that, this is 12 o'clock. So if you've got a yarn stash, you don't know what to do with it. If you've got a mixture of stuff like this, where you've got a bit of chenille, a bit of red double knit, a bit of a mess of pink, all sorts. You can join it all together. You can make blankets, scarves, all sorts. We've got um, knitting needles, Tunisian crochet hooks and normal crochet hooks. So Julie's gonna be on with me at 12. We're, I'm gonna show you how to do the crochet, how it works. And she's going to show you how to work out the thickness of the yarn that you need to combine together. So we've got a new tool for that. Absolutely wonderful. This is the first time I have ever seen anything that you can use up your yarn stash with. So I said to Julie, I will bring a select. I did have to untangle mine. There was a, I had a big basket that was all in a big mess. So I did bring out stuff that wasn't all tangled together. She's bringing her yarn stash on. So that's 12 o'clock. It's going to be brilliant. Just love that so if you want to get ahead with this um to shop with us you can do it two ways the easiest way is to do it online www.sewingstreet.com go onto that screen Boom, here it is then click on watch live that's across the top when you get onto watch live you'll be able to watch live and then you'll have two columns so you'll oh those needles are gone amazing not surprised we need to get more of those We've got the columns coming up on today's show. So those are the items that used to be called pre-order. So things I haven't talked about yet, but you can get ahead and shop with. So if you scroll all the way through, you can then shop ahead on the, fab, the novelty fabric bundles, the bunny kits, the wall hangings, all the sewing room tools. And if you go all the way th down to the bottom, look, at the bunny that's the lilac bunny we told you we had it in various colorways there's the pom-poms now those pom-poms will sell out for the tails because they are brilliant for the tops of bubble hats so if i was you i'd get ahead with those faux fur pom-poms these are all the different tools that we're going to be showing oh let's look there's the bunnies all sorts of tools 
We've even got some of the thimble pots, which are quite nice. And do love the very fine permanent markers. One of my favourite things. Anyway, all the way through. Oh, cactus pincushion. And then we get all the way down to... Oh, there's the sheep. She sheep. The sheep wall hanging. Please do get ahead if you want the kits or the instructions. So, this if you go right down to the bottom, because they're put on in order, um, this is where you'll find the wall. Now, all of these crochet hooks, knitting needles, true knits and crochet hooks, they're all handmade by Julie herself in a little workshop. They are fantastic value for money. And honestly, I'm going to hang mine on the wall. Buy, buy one for decoration. The needles are 60 centimetres long, the knitting needles. Absolutely beautiful. And there is the brand new tool, which looks like a stick with a hole in it, but it isn't a stick with a hole in it. It's for winding and measuring your yarn. So please get ahead with that. If you have got anything like, this is a minor part of my stash, and you're thinking, I've got, I've got a few bin liners of this, because we have, and you know, you don't even need to breathe on it and it gets tangled, doesn't it? Even though I pre-wind a lot of it. This is what you can do with it. You can sit there in front of the telly, you'll have a whole blanket made. It's so quick, it's so easy, and you can create. It's a bit like painting. You can mix yarn and create your own colours. Actually, that doesn't look too bad now, does it? And if you don't do normally do knitting and crochet, you know, this is, this is ideal for beginners because it's such a big crochet hook. And it looks stunning, doesn't it? And you could just... So, but I wanted to talk about this now, I mean, because a lot of you who tune in eight might not think about staying on for 12, but Julie and I have been planning this. Once the penny dropped and I thought, oh, this is how I can use up all of my yarn. That was it, I was away. So I'll put it all back in my bag. It'll all be tangled by the time we get to 12 o'clock, just on its own. Um, and I get to keep the hook, which is even better. Right, I'll put the um, bag and the... Right, I'll put those on the tall person shelf. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, right, I'm going to move over and we're going to... Oh, back to this one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've moved over now. I'm so confused. I'm going backwards and forwards and go backwards and forwards. Uh, which one do you want me to do first? Right, let's talk about spring to start with. We have got a beautiful pastel bundle. Look at that. That is just spring in a fabric, isn't it? It's called Kids Pastel, not sure why. It's a pastel bundle. Basically, you are getting six half metres of pastel. So you've got this beautiful pale peach. Then you've got sunshine yellow. Should be what? Should be over £20 this, £19.74. You've got sunshine yellow, you've got lemon, you've got pale pink, you've got that beautiful spring green, and then you've got like a bluebell. I'd go like a lilac-y blue, it's a bluebell blue. Isn't that beautiful? £19.74, you are getting three metres, so six half metres. So if you've got any springtime pastel Easter makes that you want to do, this is absolutely ideal. Um, morning, Bex. Really looking forward to 12 o'clock. Crochet-tastic from Donna. It is. It is going to be crochet-tastic. I am. I'm going to be harnessing my inner death in paradise. Oh, oh we all know crochet in front of the TV is just like the best thing. It just is the best thing. And if you haven't done it, honey, you need to learn to crochet. You need to learn. I had the fire on. I had nobody was in the house. Chocolate, coffee, crochet. Need nothing more. Um, anyway, kid, that's the pastel bundle. Ideal for those Easter makes. Maybe you want to make some special napkins for your Easter table. You can make two napkins from each half metre. You could even then bind them in one of the other colours. How nice would that be? Um, if you're making quilts for charity, really good for that. If you just want to make a really simple patchwork quilt, half square triangles, flying geese, ideal. Because those pastel colours all go together beautifully. And you're making a little saving, which is always good. Um, but if bright is more your thing, we've got a bright bundle. So again, we've got save £3. 
19 pounds 74 for three meters six half meters we've got sunshine yellow we've got fuchsia pink we have got sapphire blue scarlet that's beautiful um leaf green and bright pink that's gorgeous isn't it so that's rather than your pastel spring that's your super bright spring isn't it so you can use this keep it in your stash do it if you're using doing a plique and you want to make some flowers look at that that's the petals that's the center there's the leaves they will carry you all the way through spring summer and autumn so you can use them all to make a beautiful array of um, brightness or individually great if you want to line something I love your enthusiasm it's infectious from Sheila oh thank you Sheila but yes but if you were here Sheila you'd be enthusiastic at all because this is you look at this and you go oh oh yes mm. yeah I mean to be honest with the Dewey Jumbo thing I did after the show Hannah and I sat down and chatted with her for ages because I was like I'm with you on this this is brilliant I want these as ornaments and, and that's it, you see, because if you, well, obviously you all sew, like I sew, so you do get excited. You should all come here with me. Can you imagine how excited we get together? We, yes, we'd, we'd, maybe not all of you, maybe just two or three, but we'd get very excited together, wouldn't it? Because this is great. It's just a shame I can't take it all home with me, really, isn't it? But it's, I can't. They notice, you see, which is a shame, really. What should we do now? The, the astronaut fabric. Well, I'm going to have to look through the whole lot. Dark blue. Oh, they're all oh, like that. This is an on and gone situation. <laughs> I've never heard of one of those. According to Hannah, this is an on and gone situation. Oh, this is lush, isn't it? Space kids. Look at the price. Look at the price. $2.99? Why is that only $2.99? Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's 100% cotton. It's gorgeous. It does feel like a cotton poplin. What does it say on them? Sp space. Space race. Space race. Look at it. You've got little UFOs and rockets and spacemen and stars and constellations. This is beautiful. I think this is just your normal, yeah, this is your normal 44 inch, 112 centimetre width. 2.99. The quarter of the stock's just gone. It's lovely, isn't it? I mean, even if you just made one cushion to pop on the bed, how lovely would that be? Pencil case. Oh yeah, even that little pockets, if you're doing things for children or yourself, pockets on your dungarees, cushion for the bed, little um, drawstring bag. Um, if you want to like kids parties, make little drawstring pads for the, fav for the party favours, you don't have to put much in them then. So if you've got the bright, you know, if you wanted to make it a bit, go a bit further, if you've bought the bright bundle, um, the red's going to go beautifully with it, isn't it? And that blue. And the yellow. See? You could mix together um, the space fabric with the plain half square triangles. Gorgeous. And for fussy cutting as well. So if you do EPP or you do little bits of applique, you could cut out the small pieces on it. Brilliant. I love that. 2 99 Get it. Oh, when it, what was it again? On and gone? On and gone. It's not gone just yet, but it nearly has. On and nearly gone. Is that this one? That was on the top. That's amazing. This one is called Teddy's on the Go. Oh, look. This is really cute. So this is meant to be, this is meant to be three ninety nine, but no. Yeah, I think that's fair enough, Two ninety nine. It's so cute, isn't it? I just want to make dungarees with this. But this is available, remember, as with the other one, it's available for, by the half metre, so that means if you want more because you're thinking, actually, I'm going to make um, some little curtains that go underneath the bed or a little blind, if you want more than that, it will be sent to you as a whole cut piece. So if you need two metres, just put four units in your basket and you can have loads of it 
That is really sweet. Do you know, or even if you've made a cock quilt or a baby quilt, this would be lovely for the backing of it because it's really fun. I'm going to measure it just to be sure. Oh, the space one is on and very gone. On and gone. Is this one on and gone? Yeah, that's your 44. That's your 44 inch um, norm, normal width um, quilting weight cotton. So you've got a really beautiful bright blue background and in it, I don't know whether you can see, there's arrows all over the place. So again, you could cut these out. You could cut them out as squares and you could even make then a quilt with all the different teddies on it in each of the squares. So let's have a look. The yellow from the bright bundle, perfect. Now this is where this blue goes to, goes with it, doesn't it? It goes with the clouds. Red, obviously. Um, half of the stock of the teddies is gone. I really like this. It would be really nice as a really just a sim or even a cushion back. I'm thinking, um, you know, if you want to make things because it is very unisex, isn't it? If you wanted to make things for kids' room or nursery, it's just fun, isn't it? Little book covers, love that. Again, think, remember party bags. When my children were young, I always made them party bags. Wished I didn't, but it did mean rather than all these rubbishy plastic gifts, I only had to put a few things of chocolate in it, and I made them all drawstring party bags. And this is ideal. And also, the kids love it. They go home with these little bags and they're so excited and you know it didn't take you long. A grey one. Oh, here it is. So, now this is, this is the Hannah Ripstop bundle. So, under £10. Now, this is great. This is a genius idea by Hannah. So, we've got half a metre. We've got half a metre of transport beep beep so we've got bus taxis cars mm, rubbish lorry maybe pickup truck fire engine stop signs all sorts on there and then a half a meter of gray ripstop now if you've not seen ripstop before it's brilliant very lightweight very thin won't add too much bulk but it's waterproof and it doesn't fray it stops rips I guess that's the point, it doesn't rip. But it's ideal, so if you wanted to make, maybe make one of those drawstring bags to take swimming, you can use this for the lining. If you want to make wash bags, you know it's like with kids going away on sleepovers or going to stay with grandma and they need their own items, you could make them something from this. Um, for the ripstop, I would go for a sharp needle. I mean, your normal universal needle will go through it, but as I said before, if you were watching when we did the needle packs, um, it does have a slight ballpoint. Go for a sharp needle so that it really will pierce this. That will make quite a difference. Um, the ripstop also is why. So the fabric is your normal um, 44 inch width. This is, and, and you can sew together with them, but they're great for wash bags. But this is wider. I'm just going to measure it for you. This is, yes, 60 inch width, 150 centimetres. So you'll get more you've got a little bit to practice with as well. So anything that you want to make, that you want to make waterproof without it being too thick, this is ideal. So let me show you if you, so this is 100% cotton. So if I put that on the other side of here, single figures on this bundle, let me show you. So if I put that on that side, what I would do if you're going to line it is make the bag from the ripstop, make the bag from the outer and then sew them together around the top. And then if you, fold it like that so it gives they will pretend we're a bag now it gives it a, a bit more weight it's not too um chunky because this is quite thin but then you've got that lovely waterproof lining as well perfect and a little bit left over as well for it keep that extra bit so if you're making like a little um makeup bag then you've got the extra for that but if you're doing things maybe you've got the school fake coming up or you're doing church fates or making to sell, you know, just a simple drawstring bag for the PE kit or your um, shoes, dirty shoes, ideal for just, you know, kids stuff, just kids stuff, lunch bags. You know, there's, you could make like just a really simple fold over top lunch bag or bags for your water bottles because it's got the rip stuff in it. 
because they all the kids have to bring water bottles into school you could make a little um drawstring bag to put that with a strap so they can carry it put the rip stop inside and in that nice shade of just a really gentle pale gray goes beautifully with that now this one is very low in stock have we got any of it left hannah there are only six of these bundles are remaining when everyone's checked out so if you want this one it's going Oh, now we've got one of the fabrics of the Beep Beep range. This one. Oh, this is, is it this one? Oh, I like this. Now, this hasn't got the ripstop. This is just on its own. So if you want half a meter or more of this, this is brilliant. Now, look at it. Now, you can use it like that. Wouldn't it make a brilliant wall hanging? You could even put pockets on it. So it just says, uh, let's go, slow down, let's go, keep moving. The way it works, let me show you. When you buy the fa when you buy the fabric, there's the selvage, there's the selvage. So when you buy more than half a metre, it will come as a whole cut piece. You just get longer roads. So you could m just make a striped quilt with it, couldn't you? You could use it as a wall hanging. You could use it as a play mat and they can just keep putting... You could even, if you cut some of the roads, you could join them across the top of other roads so that they could go round in circles you could use it for the borders cut the strips into borders put that round around the edge of the quilt but it would make the most gorgeous play mat this is about to sell out well let's do the rest of our ripstop bundles now ladybirds ladybirds look at this one so we've got yellow with red ladybirds that's your that's your cotton fabric again this doesn't have to be for children this can be for grown-ups that's a really fun um picnic bag isn't it yeah so 7.98 because of the cost of the this different brand of cotton fabric really affordable isn't it um oh Hannah's going to drop the price on it six 6.99 so i'm thinking picnic bags lunch bags for when you go out in the summer so you've got the lovely ladybirds the ladybirds won't come anywhere near you because i go oh it's too many already and then you've got yeah that i can't guarantee that just a suggestion or maybe all the ladybirds will be attracted and then you get half a meter of the red ripstop I've made a little drill string bag to keep my tire inflator kit in my car. Makes me <laughs> smile every time I see it from Terry. I'm with you on that. I make little drawer string bags for all sorts of strange things. And it does make a difference just having like little bags to put things in. I think that's a really good idea. It's like I have a drawer string bag just to keep my turning tools in. And it makes me smile every time I look at it. You don't need ripstop for that. But for things like that, where you, you know, where you've got stuff, where you, you know, like, or maybe you've got in the garden, you've got like a box that's full of garden string and twine, I have. If you made a bag, drawstring bag with the ripstop, you could put all things like your seed packets or your garden twine, or you could even make a little bag to put your garden tools on. So maybe for a present for somebody, you think, I'm gonna get them a trowel and a fork, that's nice. If you make them a little drawstring bag to put that in, suddenly that present becomes amazing. Look at the ladybirds. Yeah, I don't think this is, this doesn't have to be kids, does it? But I quite often, when I make, buy somebody a present, I nearly always make a drawstring bag to put it in because it just looks nicer. What did, um, toiletries for holidays? Or, um, maybe you've got some shoes, shoes to go in your suitcase. I made a bag the other day that I could fit two pairs of shoes in because whenever I go in the suitcase, in, in when I go away, I get a carrier bag, I put my shoes in it. But if you've got a little bag with a drawstring, quarter of the stock's gone. Six, six ninety nine. That's not just the cotton fabric half a metre, that's the half a metre ripstop. And remember, the ripstop is wider, so you will get more of it. You'll have a bit left over. So perfect present for somebody who's birthday in the summer. Buy them a nice pair of flip-flops really inexpensive buy some bright pink ones everyone loves bright pink flip-flops and make a little bag or maybe you go swimming in your lunch hour ideal just to pop your cosy in and then you can go in the wash so this the ripstop totally washable 
Be careful, obviously, when you're pressing it. Start off with your iron very cool um, and use a pressing cloth or make an iron cover. And then use the leftover ripstop, you know, for extra things like even if you're making um, just a little makeup bag. Or maybe you use hand cream or hand sanitizer a lot. Make a little bag to put that in. I love little bags. And they're so easy. And if you're new to sewing, this is the first thing to start with. Make a bag with the drawstring top. No zips, simple seams, really simple. And it makes, it, it just keeps stuff together. So I've got little um, drawstring bags that I put all my cables in. Fewer than 20 of the bundle. This bundle at 6 9 10, that's mental. Oh, should we go pineapple? <laughs> this is not oh no one more rip stop oh this is pink ladybirds are we going to go to the same price Hannah six ninety nine please six ninety nine please thank you very much love that this is beautiful this is yeah gardening gloves bag to put your gardening gloves in if you've got lots of gardening gloves like I have I'm not sure why because I think because I lose them so then I buy some others um, or you know when you've got things that you keep under the sink maybe you keep lots of different sort of um, cloths and wipes all that stuff put it all into one of these bags with a lining as well wipeable washable look and that is a very good match Anna snacks Snacks, car snacks. Um, really nice to make a little bag with a waterproof line in for putting mint imperials in. I always have a bag of mint imperials in my car, but whenever I open the bag, they usually fall all over the place. But in a little bag with the waterproof lining, because then they wouldn't all stick together. I love a drawstring bag. I made one for a friend wanting to learn crochet. Inside was book, hook and wool. Anna, that's brilliant, you see. So you could have just bought them the book, the hook and the wool and wrapped it up. But putting it into a little drawstring bag, especially because even if they don't keep it in there, and you, and you, especially if you line it with this, they'll use it for something else. I'm with you, Annette. Always love a drawstring bag. Keep everything in them. Um, that's a very good match, Hannah. Well done. Look at that. Look at that. No, but look, at that's a great match, isn't it? And even if you don't want to use that with that, you've then got for six ninety nine, you've got half a meter of gorgeous, vibrant pink ladybird fabric, and you've got half a meter ripstop. Six ninety nine, just can't go wrong on that. What's the most popular bundle, Hannah? Ladybirds. Oh, ladybirds in pink is the most popular. Mmm. You see, I think the problem is, it's a very odd name for this out, Little Princess and Princess. No, it's all about great, fun, novelty fabrics. It's not just about kids. Um, love these bundles, though. I'd quite like one of these. But you think of all the stuff, golf balls. See? Now, golf balls get wet when you play golf. I don't play golf, but I know people who do. And they get wet. So if you need a bag to keep all your golf balls in... And imagine, um, imagine your husband on the golf course when he gets out his pink ladybird bag. <laughs> I always think of you. And he won't have wet balls. Because, <laughs> sorry, I just had to say that. Just had to say that. And I knew it'd make Hannah laugh. And then you can put all his wet balls in his bag with his waterproof lining. Perfect. Honestly, if I said to you, right, give me 10 things that you would do with the bag with the waterproof lining. If you, in fact, if you could send them all in, then we'll know of all the things that we could make as well. Swimming kit. <coughs> yeah, so even a hairbrush, hairbrush and a comb. And, you, and so maybe you go, or if you go to the gym. Uh, some people do, apparently. <laughs> apparently, people do go to the gym. You could... Um, you could put your shampoo, conditioner, your brush, or tote bag, yeah, your tote bag. You could make a lovely tote bag, front and back, line it with that, you turn it inside out, and you could sit on it. Yeah. In fact, if you made a cushion, you, this would be great for a garden kneeling cushion. If you made the front from this, and look at the size, if I open it out, if this was a garden kneeling cushion, make the front from that so it looks lovely, put this on the base, then it's waterproof. 
or you could use it to sit on in the garden. Single figures on that one. I've used ripstop for baby changing mats. Yes, Pauline. Yeah, true. Yeah, and it particularly, and if you're using eco-friendly nappies, you're going to need that. Ba I mean, it, and that, isn't that the most beautiful baby changing mat for six ninety nine? Put a bit of wad in between. I like that. I do think the pink golf balls bag is my favourite idea so far, though. Just think how pleased. But how cool will you look on the golf course? Hmm? I think it's a great idea. Everything needs a little bit of waterproofing. Let's do Very Hungry Caterpillar. I changed the names of these at the weekend because they said lit Very hung Hungry, the country. <laughs> Which made me laugh. Yeah, no, it's because I changed them. Yeah. Oh, oh no, I changed these at the weekend because they said Very Hungary. Caterpillars, <laughs> which made me laugh, but I'm not sure what they've got to do with Hungary. They were like the country. Right, let's do this one. Now, we've had World Book Day, haven't we? So that's why we've been thinking about this. I love this. Who hasn't read The Very Hungry Caterpillar? I know I hate caterpillars. I actually have a real phobia about caterpillars. Long story. But I like The Very Hungry Caterpillar because he looks very cute. Hi, I'll make a drawstring bag to keep a wet umbrella. Oh, my, Lynn, that's genius. Because those, um, whatever they're called, sleeves that your umbrella comes from, they do not keep them dry. And also when they're wet, you can never get them back in. That is a brilliant idea. Because it's a brilliant idea. Because you get your umbrella, well, you can't put it in your bag, can you? But if, Lynn, that's genius. I'm going home to make one. In fact, I'm going to make one from this, so I'll have that. I'll put that in that stash bag, mine, and um, that'll be perfect for my umbrella. Thank you, Lynn. Or walking boots. Walking boots. Yeah. You could have oh, April showers. Yeah, I'm going to have a word with Amber Makes about this. Amy, Amy, umbrella bags. <laughs> we, need, we need something for wet things. I'm not doing the girl, yeah, not doing the golf one, but I do want an umbrella bag. That is a genius idea. See, I knew you lot. You lot know everything. You're better than Google. So that's, um, that's the Very Hungry Caterpillar in rainbows. Is this your favourite, Hannah? Doesn't actually even feature them, but it's the colours, isn't it? It's lovely, isn't it? The very, isn't it gorgeous? Because it's, you know it's Very Hungry Caterpillar because you can see all of those images and those colours in the book, but it's just lovely, isn't it? Half a metre, only six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. That was the same price as the ripstop bundle. Mm, but this is designer fabric. There is a difference. This is designer fabric, but it does show you, doesn't it? Value of the bundle. Oh, crochet hooks are selling, guys. Just letting you know. You need to be here at twelve, but you need to get your crochet hook first, because. Because um, I'm not sure who talks the most and the fastest out of me and Julie. So it could be interesting. Might, might neither of us actually get a word in edgeways. Um, but it'll be fun. So get your crochet hook in advance. <laughs> we might have a cup of tea. Can we have biscuits? So there's the very hungry caterpillar. Can I do um, fruit now, Hannah? Fruit. I like this bundle. I thought it was pineapples, but it's not. It's... It's not got a ripstop, which is unfortunate. This is strawberries. This is like mad um, strawberries, isn't it? Psychedelic strawberries, it should be called, not ladybug love berries. You've got strawberries with, um, with ladybirds on. Is it part of the ladybird collection? So it would look quite nice with this one then. So if you've got this bundle, it is part of that collection. That's really good, isn't it? It's psychedelic, it's beautiful. Do you know what? This is lovely as a whole fabric on its own. Um, but also it's um, great for fussy cutting if you want to just cut out a strawberry. But you don't just get that, by the way, 9.78. You also get half a metre of orange. 
that's beautiful that zingies it up that's drawstring bag isn't it lining not waterproof though no we ran out of ripstop hannah got it taken away from her she had it confiscated from i don't know what she'd been doing with it but she had it conf confiscated for another show we're not sure what i know we were going to have Hannah had this pla hour planned of rip stop and everything and she had it taken off her, but we don't know why. I'm hoping there's the most amazing rip stop show coming up, <laughs> but she had it taken off her. But anyway, for a non-waterproof line bag, this is ideal, isn't it? But how about using these? If you did um, EPP, wouldn't that strawberry look gorgeous? But I'm thinking, think ahead of that summer that does arrive at some point. If you're making things for summer makes, for a fun um, patchwork picnic blanket, or just a little mat. They're just really, they're fun and summery. Love the strawberries. Really nice. So that is Ladybird Love Berries. Half a metre of orange. I've asked the hub to buy me a crochet hook as he's given me a sickness bug. I think it's only fair, Donna, absolutely. I think that's only fair. A definitely a crochet hook. And the winder thing as well. Don't forget the winder thing. It's new and um, Julie's going to be explaining it, but it is an integral part of the winding so you can mix your yarn together. And Donna, yes, he should definitely buy you a crochet hook because I think they're going to sell out, so he needs to get you one now because I've because I've told everyone about them um, and you've got between now and 12 to get hold of it so you can just sit and enjoy um, the joy of comparing your yarn stashes and also send photos in for that hour of your yarn stash because we would love to see it not just bin liners I actually want to see the yarn as well oh now this is I like this this isn't ripstop, this is waterproof though. PU coated, so look, there's the back. 4 99 for half a metre. This is super wide. One moment, caller. Let me just get my tape measure. Oh yes, 60 inches. Now, dog beds, dog mats, picnic. Maybe you're making um, outside tents, teepees, kids' dens, covering, you know, those director's chairs where the canvas covers always fall apart. Very easy to slip off, the, slip off and copy. Um, cushions for your outdoor furniture, garden kneeling mats, gardening bags. It's actually quite, I don't know whether you can see, it's not like the ripstop, it's quite thick. This is absolutely brilliant. If you want to make the most beautiful patchwork picnic blanket, you don't want it getting wet. This is ideal because you've got that waterproof on. And then if this goes on the grass and it gets a bit muddy, a bit dirty, nobody will know. Brilliant for, brilliant for kids going on like scout camp. They love, um, when my son had all his parties, I made all his party bags in camo material. They absolutely loved these. They'd be great for like messenger bags, wouldn't they? This is brilliant. So 4 99 half a metre, and it's 60 inches wide. And look, it's almost like a plasticky back. I mean, it's a, um, I guess it's a polyester or a cotton front. It's PU coated. It's actually, it's quite good for non-slip actually. You could put this on the back of a rug, look. <laughs> yeah but look how it doesn't move yeah I mean, I'm not guaranteed there's no non-slip guarantee on this but I'm just saying it's quite good but you wouldn't get um, you wouldn't show up any dirt on this so anything that you used in the garden or outdoors absolutely perfect dog coat but like I took the dog for a walk yesterday. I cannot believe how dirty she got. She was just covered. So I, I had an old sheet in the back of the car. So I lay that all in the front footwell for her to lie on and then had to wash it. But this would have been ideal. Or, you know, you get the mats that you put the dog bowl on. I kicked yesterday. Water went everywhere. Um, even, even had to wash the mat as well. It was in such a state. But this is ideal for that kind. Fishing kit. Golf bags. Back to the golf theme. Yeah, golf balls. Yeah, if, you're, if your um, husband isn't really wanting the pink ladybird bag, you could make one in this instead. Because it's so hard to make stuff for, aren't they? Anyway, that's going to sell out. Uh, the pink lady... Single figures. 
Single figures of this one. This is ideal. I'm going to make myself one of this. This is for my umbrella bag. It's fantastic. I tell you what you should do if you're going to make an umbrella bag is that the um, tubey thing, whatever it is, sleeve that it comes in, make it bigger than that because it's always really hard to get in there, especially if it's wet. So use that as a pattern, but make it a bit bigger and a slightly longer and wider. And then it'll be really easy. You can shove it in there, put it in the bottom of your shopping bag, and then you can open it out when you get home. I'll keep that because that's mine. The other um, ripstop one that's in the the yellow one with the red back, the red ripstop. Oh, hang on, I'll have that one back. Cat's been uber efficient here. This one, have we? That's almost sold out. There are only fourteen of these left. In fact, what a nice present! Going down the present, buy somebody an umbrella, make them the special bag, put their name on it as well embroider it on, write it on with the, in the next, um, no, at 10 o'clock we've got the um, permanent marker pens which are on pre-order. You could even write their name on it as well. Ideal. Um, Hannah wants a walking boot bag. Again, great idea. But lovely, applique someone's name on it or just write it on. Brilliant. Um, next. This one. <coughs> this is this is wild. Uh, Hannah moved off the kids theme very swiftly and just put in fabric she liked. I love this fabric. So this is like multicolored cheetah. This is cheetahs who live in rainbow land. So it's like your cheetah print, but the background is bright pink, and then we've got oranges and mustards as well. So this whole animal print thing, massively popular at the moment, but everyone's doing other spins on it. None of this natural animal business, no, it's fluorescent. Now, in this bundle, because you've got seven half metres, you've got three and a half metres in total, at the moment that works out as, how much, Hannah? 6 99 for half a metre. But, yeah, I... I think um, Hannah's been on holiday for a week. She's, been, she's on that sort of, I'm just come back from holiday feel. Right, we're going to drop, are we going to drop the price? But I'm going to show you the other ones first. Right, look, giraffe in black and white. Have you ever seen a black, now can you imagine if you saw, can you imagine a black and white giraffe? And then we've got um, the, sp the spot pink and blue. Then we've got zebra, obviously, in orange and pink. We've got cheetah in blue and purple. And we've got zebra in black and white, the only real one. And then we've got the spot in... So all of that, all of that, we are going to crash to 34, 93. What does that work out per, meter, per half a metre? Takes us down to 4.99 for half a metre. I'm thinking if you make things for a stall or for charities or for fates, can you imagine all the drawstring bags on your stall in those? Tote bags. But also teenagers, cushions, bedrooms. You know, they're always hard to make for, aren't they? It doesn't have to be kids. Can you imagine a scatter cushion, one of each of those across your bed? It'd be wild, wouldn't it? Tote bags as well. Again, if you're making to sell or you're doing fates, it's the sort of thing people will be drawn to your stall. Even if you made simple tote bags, just with a ham, fewer than 20 of this bundle, 34.93 should be 48.92. That's 33 even. <laughs> right, I'm gonna write it for the last time. It should be 48.93. It works out. Sorry, got it. I mean, a 6 99 for half a metre is amazing for this. I, I love the fact that the only one is right, it's the zebra, but only 12 of these. But look at the black and white zebra, and then look, I love these two together. So if I was going to make a tote bag, I would make the front in this, the back in that, and then do them the other way around for the lining. Just fun, isn't it? So imagine that. Or cushions. Down to single figures on this bundle when you've all checked out. So imagine there's your bag and there's the other side. Or cushions. And you'll get, uh, there's enough in half a metre to make a cushion front and back 
or a tote bag front and back. If you want to keep it really simple, you can go more complex, make beautiful cube shaped wash bags, would look fab, wouldn't they? Gorgeous. Please check out on that. We are down to single figures, but that is because it's working out at 4 dollars for half a metre. And it is cool. Now, we have also got them available by the half metre. So if you only want one of them, but you want more because you really want a dress made from this, for example, then we can we do sell them by the half meter and we will sell it as a whole cut piece if you need three meters put six units in your basket it'll be sent as a whole cut piece so starting with this one i just want to give you all the codes for buying them individually right and we're going to crash the price on all of them to 4.99 to match the bundle so there's the zebra stripe bright 4.99 available by the half meter and you can buy it in multiples, it will be a whole cut piece. Zebra stripe in, we've got to do it quite quick, we're running out of time. Well done if you're getting these. Zebra stripe in black and white. There's not much left of this one, so you need to be quick. Anyone who bought it on pre-order, don't worry, you will pay the final price. Cheetah in blue and pink. Probably called something else completely different. Oh, you said fast, Hannah. <laughs> Oh, it's called Pebble Print. Is it called Pebble Print? Yeah, I wouldn't have called that Pebble Print. That's more like a cheetah in blue and pink. Right, let's do the cheetah in orange and yellow. These are all 4 99 If you bought them earlier, don't worry, you will be charged the lower price. Be uh, when the graphic disappears off the screen, it doesn't mean we've sold out. You can check that when you go onto the website. It just means we've moved on to the next fabric. That's called Blotch Print weird right okay uh, then how about the giraffe i love this one i bet it is it is giraffe in black and white this is a giraffe and a zebra's baby <laughs> i don't sure practically that would work well you do get great danes and chihuahuas don't you it's only the same thing really Giraffe, black, is it the same thing? Yeah, I'm not sure it'd work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Cat's pulling her face and Hannah's laughing at the thought. Um, spots, blue with pink. Not sure what this combination is. A parrot and a fish. Yeah. <laughs> a big octopus from the sea. Yes, maybe tropical. That's four ninety nine, and then finally we've got the the orange spots. Da da da, orange spots crashing to four ninety nine. Um, so those are all of them available by half meter. Just by half meter if you want, or if you want more, put that number of units. It'll be sent as a whole cut piece. Um, and very very quickly at the end, the mega bundle of all of them, where you get seven half meters half a meter of all of them 34 pounds 93 if you can't choose um we are on single figures of that and loads of you've got it in your basket so if you want that big collection check out Whoa, right we run out of time so um that was a great fabric hour, wasn't it beautiful um i'll see you back here in a few minutes type sandy is going to be with me showing us how to make this beautiful bunny please do a get ahead in the break buying the instructions or the kits and also the tails, which are great for bobble hats on hat, by the way, hat bobbles on hats, are available separately. So please do check out on, because those are the sort of things that are going to sell out. This is the William Morris version, by the way. Um, I'll see you back here in just a few minutes' time. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. 
You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals, and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself an overlocker. Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. 
Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Welcome back to Bunny Hour on Sewing Street. So this is all about the bunny. Look at this, look. Gorgeous. Now this, there are four different versions of this. This is the William Morris one and already half the stock's going. Now look at the price. Look at that price. $17.99, you are getting full instructions. Helen Newton, so we know that they're brilliant loads of photos all the instructions you need and full size templates no enlarging necessary obviously you need to trace over them because they overlap but you can do that with a bit of greaseproof paper so full instructions then you are getting um white i'll just check is that half a meter? yes half a meter of white Beautiful. It makes them a really beautiful, crisp, clean bunny. And then you get a fat quarter, gorgeous William Morris, which has got rabbits on it. Look, fat quarter of that. You see the rabbits? So, and birds. It's got rabbits and birds. And you're never going to, you're not going to use all of that, are you? Honey? No. Oh, no, there's any small parts. So you've okay. Got a lovely bit left. So, nice, but oh, good. Not, just probably enough to make a drawstring bag. No, not really. Just we're a bit obsessed with just those. Just a small drawstring bag. <laughs> that, just a small one. That, that's for the inside, the ears, the bow tie, and the soles of his feet. And you get six bunny tails. Five, because I can't count. <laughs> five. You don't need five, you only need one. So you get four extra. It's just that for some reason they come in packs of five. So that's how you get them. So you so for seventeen ninety nine full instructions. So once you've used all the fabric in here, you can make another one, and you can make another. You've got another four extra bunny tails, half a meter of white for the whole body, single figures of the William Morris, fat quarter of William Morris, and the bunny tails. That's amazing. There are there some bits and pieces of general haberdashery we'll talk about in a minute. You need, but for the main fabric and pieces. Um, you can make it all with this and I mean this one has got buttons to join to him and you can put various interfacings whatever on it but you can just make it from this $17.99 that's fantastic is it single figures with that one that one's about to sell out the tilde one now look at this this is the one that Sandy's going to demo with so exactly the same you get full instructions you get your half a meter of this beautiful optical white for nice clean crisp bunny and then you get a fat quarter of the tilde i love this green it's a real vintage green isn't it but it's very spring it's very easter isn't it it's almost art deco isn't it it is art deco isn't it's it lovely. but it's got that kind of 1950s green it really has it's mm. lovely i like that one yes just beautiful it's lovely i mean this is great for this sort of bunny, you can have this on a shelf, can't you? You can put it in the spare room on the bed, you have it on a little chair, you can use it for your, for your Easter display, and, and especially with it, well, you'll see it with Sandy demonstrating with it, um, with this kind of Art Deco feel. It's a, it becomes a collector's piece, becomes an ornament, doesn't it? And obviously you can make them for children, obviously, because they're bunnies. You do need to be aware of the age of the child and what you're putting on it. So if you're putting buttons for the joints, maybe you don't do that. You know what's appropriate for your child, how you attach the tail, how you do things, but you know the age of the child and what they're doing and what would be appropriate for them. Gorgeous. But I think a lot of people would actually be buying this for themselves. I mean, what a lovely thing to have as your Easter ornament. But this is all year round. It's a beautiful, it's a well-structured toy. It is, yeah. It can be a toy. I feel like it would be, I would use it as a decoration, but beautiful with the tilde. Again, $17.99, which is amazing value because you are getting the instructions, half a meter of white fabric, a fat quarter of the tilde fabric and five bunny bottoms. 
amazing right so that's the tilde lilac spot now that's the um that's the one that's in the picture so again you get full instructions you get the white fabric then you get a fat quarter of the lilac spot it's quite a large spot more people have got this in baskets than we've got available so that one's gone and then finally we've got a little pale blue spot see i'm thinking as well um lovely birth gift christening gift think about the age of the child but you know in a child's bedroom or a newborn you put this up on a shelf it's beautiful so this one we've got the full instructions you've got the white fabric this one is a pale blue spot again once you've made it you've got the instructions you'll have more of this fabric than you need you're getting five tails you can make more of them 17.99 Fewer than 15 of this bundle are left in stock. So if you want this one, you need to get checked out. Fab. And um, I did talk about tails though. So now in your kits, you will get... Um, oh yeah, sorry. We'll just do that instructions. If you want instructions on their own with no fabric or tails, 9 99 99 if you want just the instructions on their own. Um, now all of the kits come with five tails but if you want an extra special tail look at this one we have got these available separately now these are often used um, for pom-poms for bubble hats they're faux fur they come with the ribbon on the top so that you can tie them on and we have used this one to um, for an extra special tail now all the kits come with five pom-poms like this but if maybe if you're getting the instructions on their, own, on their own, or if you want the extra special tail, faux fur pom-pom, $1.99. It's um, six centimetres in diameter. So again, you could use them for bobble hats. You can use them for sewing onto glove. You know, when you see pom-poms on the end of gloves, they always look nice. Buy a load to put them on the bottom of a scarf, but they make beautiful bunny tails. We are limited I said this at eight o'clock, if you want the pom-poms, you need to get ahead because these are extremely limited. We're about to sell out on those. But that's to make your bunny that extra special. Right, now for the joints, buttons have been used. We have got selections of buttons. You can use any buttons, but we've got a selection of buttons. So if you want um, a choice of buttons, we've got this jar of buttons. These are Bright's Mix. They are a mixture of sizes and they're also a mixture of colours. $5.99 for the jar. I've got some of these at home. They're great because you get all different sizes and colours. So these would be ideal if you wanted to be multicoloured. But they're really, really useful because you've got tiny ones all the way up to... Also, they're a really nice thing to put in your button collection look at that look at all of that i will put them all away i promise hannah's going what have you done that for well how are you supposed to see them so look you get tiny ones like this because i've got these at home they're fab aren't they look tiny baby ones all the way up to great big ones and everything in between all in spring colors actually uh, we've also got these in another colourway. I haven't got the pack here, so unfortunately I can't um, pull those out. Um, yeah, so in the picture there's... Where's the picture? Oh yes, for some reason there's three jars. You only get one jar. The same thing, but bright ones. So if you just want some buttons, if you're not doing bunnies at all, but you just want extra buttons for your stash, $5.99. I have an immense button stash and I love it. So maybe you've got the instructions on their own. You, depending on what fabric you're using, you'll have a whole collection. So if you get the pastel pack of buttons and you get the bright one, you have got a button for every occasion. I often like if I'm sewing a press fastener on something, I'll often sew a button on top just to decorate because it just looks a bit nicer, doesn't it? But on here, obviously, we've used brown buttons just for the, for the arms and the legs to make him moves. I'll put those away in a minute. Right, so um, I mentioned H630 at 8 o'clock and it's sold out. <gasps> sold out? It's sold out. H630. It's sold out. 
Now it's the same as H640, but it's slightly thinner. Um, has it definitely sold out? Oh, but I'm just showing you anyway. Okay, and it's slightly thinner. We will get it back in stock. So you use it in the same way, but it's ideal for toy making or if you want to use something. But you can obviously use H640. Now, we'll talk to Sandy about this in a minute. In the instructions, it doesn't talk about using H640, but Sandy has used this for her bunny, and we'll talk about that in a minute. His arm's sticking out. Yeah, it's doing his yoga. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, using H640 will give your bunny more structure, and it makes it easier to stuff as well. So, 999 that's a meter piece. Sandy in a minute will show you why and what she does it. And it's not in the instructions, it's just one of her toy making tips. You don't need to use it, but it will help. 9.99 for a meter, way more than enough, so you'll have it for a long time. Okay. And then the last thing, again, that that's not in the instructions, is it? Is that the lightweight interfacing? Yes, it is. Oh right. Yes, yes it yes. is. That's for the ears. That's for the ears. So if you want to give your ears some extra, Just you don't have to, have to use it, but to give it a little bit more stability. If you haven't got any lightweight interfacing, we do have it here. One ninety nine for the pack, and it's oh yeah, a meter by a meter. So if you want um, lightweight interfacing, that's just for his ears. So these are all the extra bits and pieces. You may already have them at home, but if you haven't, it's quite frustrating when you get it and you think, oh, I need some interfacing. So if you need some lightweight, we have got it here. Right. Sandy, while I, I put these you... buttons away, <laughs> yes. let's start with this. Um, shall right. we talk about the wadding and the interfacing yes. first? Um, as you probably know, I make a lot of Yes, you are animals. a toy, a I, soft so I toy maker. lots and lots of memory bears mm. and other animals as well. And I've always found that by just putting a bit of interfacing, um, you can use the H640, H630. You could even use the thin interfacing as well if you just wanted it very lightly um, sort of padded. But I sort of find if it's got a little bit of padding in it, it just sort of gives that um, body to it. It makes it sew it up nicer um, and when you stuff it you find that it stuffs better as well you can really get into those so does seams. that apply to all soft toys then i do i i interface all my soft oh, toys okay because i just find that if you don't and you're trying to stuff it oh it's easy like, to overstuff there's it. always sort of like really? crinkles in it yes whereas if you got the interfacing oh. on it it just makes it yeah, I no, really, i always find it i end up overstuffing well, things well i always overstuff mine and I'm, i do make so you can see i make but them i quite overstuff firm. them and they go sort of stretchy and lumpy like you, you say but by putting the that, you can't just, overstuff them not really and you, it just sort of yeah forms i see it what you mean and makes it yes. nice and soft. whereas if you haven't got you don't have to but i've always no, I, found but i know because you, cause you get a little easier. sort of creasy wrinkle well i do yes. always yeah what a fantastic idea so and it just gives it that bit it of does. firmness and a bit of softness as well to yeah, it. it does doesn't it, it sort of makes the the animal just sort of look Yes, it does. Softer yeah. almost. Well, I I, also more professional, I think. Yes. Gives it that look. Yes, yeah. that's a great idea. I've never so tried that. That's what I always do. And it doesn't really matter what interfacing you use. I mean, you can use just the light one. So if you've just bought the light one for the ears, then just try that one on it if you want. If you then want to go a little bit firmer or a little bit softer, try the H630 or the H640. So that's what I put on mine. So I'll start off with, when I when we got the pattern, as um, Beck said, they are sort of overlapping the patterns. So I photocopy them two or three times and then I can cut the pieces out. So you've got all the pieces that you need and don't forget your little nose piece as well. So if you just photocopy them a couple of times, you can cut out all the bits that you need on them. So those are all the pattern pieces sort of cut out. Because you can see there where sort of like the bow tie would have overlapped and the larger bunny piece would have overlapped there. I always tend to start off with the arms and legs. So with the arm, I've cut it out. So when you're cutting them out, let me just get the arm here. It says you need four, obviously two for each arm. But when you're doing it, if you just fold the material over and then cut two out, you're getting the reverse of it. Yes, and I guess with this plain fabric, it doesn't really matter, does it? But if you're using a print yeah, fabric, no, it does, a right Because side. obviously with your feet, you've got one <laughs> face in that way, yes. one face in the other yes. way. So you need a reverse of it. So if it's folded over, okay. you get the reverse of it. So even if it's plain, you need to do the reverse right. of it. Okay, um, quick stock announcement. Right. 
the only bundle kit bundle we have left is the one with the tilde one which is the oh. one that sandy's demonstrating um in that bundle you get the full instructions with the pattern templates you get half a meter of the white fabric that's used for the bunny and you get a fat quarter of the tilde fabric that's used for the lining of the ears the soles and the bow tie and you also get five bunny tails all of the other bundles have sold out this is the only one that we've got left um, if you want that 79 which is amazing price for what you get and you'll be able to see what this bunny looks like in a minute when Sandy um, finishes oh, it. Oh, I like that one. I think it's lovely. I like a bit of Art Deco. Though, I do so love that. I love, love Art it. Deco. And um, if you want instructions on their own, we still have some of those left. $9.99 for just the instructions. Okay, right, sorry Sandy. That's okay. So as I say, when you fold them over, because you need, you need the reverse the other way. of it, yeah. you, it's best to fold it over and then cut it and you know you've got a, a left yes. side and a right side. With some pieces, obviously like the ears, I think they are slightly different. So again, you would need the left right. and right side of it. The sole is the same on both sides, so that's fine, but it's still easier to just pop it down. Linda says, dimples when you stuff the bunny if you do, don't do use in phrases like cellulite. cellulite. Well, yeah, no, it that's is, true. absolutely, yes. You do. If you don't want a cellulite bunny, give him some interface. Yes, basic. well, I'd never thought of that. I'm going to try the wadding, though. I think that's a really good idea. Yes. And then with the ears, they are... So can I just borrow yeah, this Yeah, yeah, you can have your bunny. With this one... If you notice they do sort of stick up so they are sort of slightly directional so with this one i sort of fussy cut it so we had two little birds in the ear from the william morris one oh when, so fuss oh you fussy cut but you've got enough fabric you've to got do plenty that, you? to do it absolutely and then you can with the bottom i just did the leaves on the bottom but, oh, but you can see they're idea. going up so i did i wanted the two birds in it when i, well, I must admit when i did it the first time i do bunnies and my bunny's ears goes down so i'd done it and then put it on and thought Hmm. His birds are going down, so I had to recut it because these bunnies' ears go up. Oh, so, okay. So don't forget they go so up. If so if you, you are... get the instructions you're using your own fabric, then do fussy cut yes, them. It's yeah, worth because it, then you've got some lovely sort of little patterns in it. Gorgeous. And say with the William Morris, you've got plenty in there to yeah. fussy cut, which is really quite nice. So, and as, again, with the, the tilde one that I'm doing here, make sure I've done it so it's going up, so you've got your fans yeah, going up. Yeah, because his ears than, are going to stick yeah, up. So if, you, if they were going down, they'd be the wrong way, so... That's yes, just I what you mean. So yeah. I thought I'd let you know, don't do what yeah, I did. Yeah, the direction is, <laughs> yes. is going So up. I had lovely bunny ears, put them on and thought, oh no, but the you birds could, are But if you get down. just the instructions, you could really use special fabrics for the ears, yes. couldn't you? And you, there's so little that you actually mm. need because you just do one side of the ear because obviously it's white on the other side. So you've just got two pieces for the ears, the little bow tie and the soles of the feet. So you can see, I mean... A fat quarter would be plenty even to do those bits mm. in, really. Look nice in Liberty, wouldn't it? It would look beautiful. Or even cave. Yeah. Could you imagine? Really bright. Oh, yes. It'd look well, lovely. then you could make the bunny any colour. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't have to be white. It could be yes. any colour. Yes. And you can also make it in different fabrics as well, so you can make that sort of plushy fabric. Denim. Denim bunny. I'd like a denim bunny, yes. because then you could have one, you could have all different colours for them as well, like a patchwork you bunny. You could do a patchwork bunny as well. You could make a Because with all bunny. the different pieces... You'd have loads of different, you could make him all in each bit in a different You could fabric. also use baby grows. They oh. make lovely sort of bunnies and things like that. So if your child's sort of grown out of the yeah, baby grows. Yeah, that would grows, be nice. I guess you would really need to wad or interface yes, those, wouldn't you? Because they'd stretch yeah. way out. Yes, and I find then if you're doing sort of different fabrics with it, so you might want to have a bit of a cape on the top because mm. you've got maybe just plain white um, baby grows then if you interface them all, the fabrics will go together so easily. Because yeah, I have all sorts of different fabrics. From so like Especially birds. those velour baby grows would be oh, nice, wouldn't they? Love. It'd be so soft mm. as well. Or even so like the fleecy ones as well, you know, like yes, the little fleecy yeah. jumper maybe so they've got. So memory you, rabbits. Yes. So you could do anything with it really. And, as and also, you, I guess what you can do is, because you're making it, you could embroider the, the name. Yes. On his foot. And if you did on it, it's like as um, you were saying, like as a gift for a baby, if you mm. took it to a baby shower or something yeah. like that, and you brought the, the date on it, you know, oh, sort that'd of be gorgeous, or, you know, wouldn't it? You know, a name or whatever. Well, yeah, you could have the name and the date. That's couldn't right. You? It'd be lovely on it, wouldn't it? And really? say you'll have to give it that name because it's named. Because it's got a name on the bunny rabbit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, after it's born, yes. but that sort of but thing, or like baby's first Christmas and that kind of. Or a Christmas you know, present, so then you would know the name and the date of the birth on it. So you because those sort of things, you never know what to get, do you? 
and I think for a christening, it's something that you'd put on the shelf and yeah, and it's leave. a special. And it's very special because they, they're going to have lots of cuddly toys to play with. But if they've got something special to sort of look at, That's, yeah. and again, if it's made with their clothes as well, mm. it's something that they can pass on even to their children as well. You know, that mm. was mummy's baby grows when I was little and things like that. So it's there's yeah. lots you can make with it. It's a lovely rabbit, really lovely. So I've cut the two arms out and I've interfaced it as well and I'm just going to sew it round about a quarter of an inch all the way round and I always think things just sew up a little bit better when you've just got a little bit of interfacing on it as well because when you're going around the corners as you can see it's quite easy to sew curves whereas if you've just got the cotton I find it harder oh, to yes, turn it round because the, the cotton isn't as stable when you're trying to just move it round um, with your foot it will, it will get stuck mm. sometimes, but if you've got a little bit of interfacing on it, you can just whiz it round. It's oh, okay. so much easier. And then when you leave the gap, always just do a little bit of a backwards and forwards because when you're turning it, um, I tend to lose a little bit smaller gap than you should do just because I don't like sewing the other up as much. So you can... <laughs> no, I'm a bit so, like that. Yeah. It's like, how so I think, small, how small can, can I, I make it? With? So um, I've got tiny fingers so I can just move it in and it doesn't take much and as long as you've done that backwards and forwards um, reverse stitch on the turning you're fine now I tend to get a chopstick or something like that just to push it out so we're pushing this out and then turn it round and that's your arms finished so you need two of those and so then you would just stuff that and as I say I always tend to overstuff it. So people sort of put it in, be generous with your stuffing and sort of stuff it till you can't really stuff much more. What I do... But because you've stabilised it, you can't overstuff it. It's not going to push out it. of shape. And because that's what I find is I overstuff and I put it's all out of shape then. If you've just got the cotton, as we know, when you quilt and things, it's quite easy to push a cotton mm. out of shape. Whereas if you've got that interfacing on, it's not going to go out of shape. So you really can get in, into those nooks and crannies. And you find that if you don't, you can't get into those nooks and yeah. crannies. Because as you say, it will just sort of distort the cotton. Mm. Um, and the other thing I do, so you've got the gap. Um, and whilst I've made them all up, I tend to just put a little clip and it almost sort of irons up it. So when you come oh, okay. to, to sew it easier. up, right. you can sort of almost see where it should be. Um, and again, when you sew it, I tend to do a ladder stitch on it mm. just to sort of sew it up. And I'll sew halfway and then... <laughs> just, it's a good job I've got two. <laughs> <laughs> Which okay. does it. So when you've sort of sewn halfway, you can still get tiny little bits of stuffing and just sort of put them in so that you can still sort of wiggle them around because it's right. surprising how much more you can put in there. Yeah, because it's always hard to see exactly, isn't it, when yes. you've got the gap. So I always find that I stuff it as much as I can or I think I can, but obviously you're trying to sew this up so you don't want it falling out here. So you, I'd sort of sew up halfway and even up to, as long as I can get the, the chopstick into that little gap, I can still push little tiny bits of, it, of um, stuffing into that and then just carry on sewing it up. So that's the arm, so we've got two arms. Then the foot we do very similar as well. You still need, oh thank you, <laughs> you still need an opening in it, even though you don't sew the foot up at first. So I'm going to just sew all the way around Leave the gap and again mm. do the reverse stitch either side of the opening, which is very important. Okay. So, so this is where you can use other fabrics. Yes. If you're making your own, then there's loads of different um, fabrics, like charm packs are ideal. Yes. I've got, I've got one here. It's red. Yeah. This is a gorgeous charm pack. Um, I think this would be absolutely ideal. It's got lots of little hearts on. Well, oh. not all of them, it's got a whole range. But look at the little hearts on that Wouldn't one. Wouldn't those look lovely on it? And you don't have to have the same on now, the ears. Now this charm pack, 42, 15.99, and, and Hannah's going to reduce the price <gasps> as well. Moda, that's Moda. Now, I'm thinking if you've got a charm pack like this, and especially 12.99, um, shall I show you all the different prints while Sandy's doing that? You've got hearts, you've got script swirls. You could use this for the whole bunny. So, oh, yes. for some of the pieces that don't fit onto there, what I would do is I would join them together and it would look quite nice. So, say you were doing an arm, 
you could join two of these together and then use that as the pattern to cut it out. So rather than each section being one fabric, join all the fabric together and then use that as a whole fabric to cut out with it. It would just be beautiful. So if you buy the instructions on their own, um, you know, you, you want use a collection of fabrics where they all go together. I mean, I love this one with all the little squips on it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Love is patient. See, that's ideal, just having that across, like on the inside of the ears. Um, 12 99 for that. Because you don't need the same on the ears as you've got on the feet. So if you have no. like, the script on the ears, then you can put the little hearts on and the feet. And just having the little hearts yes. as well. And then the bow slightly different. Gorgeous. So 12 99 Absolutely done. Thank you for that little bargain, Hannah. Right, so we've sewn up the, the leg and left the gap there. Then on the foot, I fold it over and just put a little mark. Um, in the middle on the sole here. Mm. So what we're going to do is open the foot up and I always tend to put it on the front and the heel first. It doesn't really matter which one. So open up the seam, make sure again if it is directional I want this to be at the toe. So you can put a little T on the top of there because sometimes when you turn it over you can't always see which way up it is. So just pop it along there and then clip it. I always use clips for this, it's much easier than pins. Then go to the other side and again open your seam up and just sort of finger press it a little bit. Pop in where the line is, line that up with your seam at the back and pop a clip in. And then we're just literally going to go round. It's really not as easy, some people, as hard as people think mm. sometimes, they think, how am I going to put that into it? You just literally just bend it round and it will fold in. And again, if you've got that interfacing, it sort of stabilised it a bit more. So yeah. it just makes it easier to So do you just use wadding in, I mean, like wadding, or do you use interfacing? I always think interface. of um, Wadding, I tend to use a wadding more than right, an interfacing. Right, okay. But if it's a heavier fabric, I would use an interfacing. So just a thin interface oh, so it okay. depends really so if you're doing it in a denim like you said right. i would probably just use the light interface oh, that you've okay. got there not the, again, not right. the okay. you can use the wadding but you've got quite a bit of thickness so there. yeah you, so, so think about whether it's going to stretch and especially with the arms they're quite small so if you've got wadding and denim and then you're turning that the right way out it's going to be quite thick and bulky so if you've got just the denim with the thinner interfacing mm. it will still make it nice and stable but it'll make it easier to sort of turn around. Oh, okay. So we're just going to go around here with the feet. Now, if you've not done a foot on a toy before, at this stage, I would tack it on. I know sometimes it's quite old fashioned these days to tack, but I still tack things into place because trying to get that under your sewing machine, if you're not used to doing it, can be quite difficult because you've got a lot of clips on a very small area. So I would just do big tacking stitches round that oh, and then okay. that's easier to put it on. So just the do that machine. by hand quickly and then, quickly. You, then you've got then it you together. Then you can put it on. Okay. So I know it's an extra couple of minutes but I think mm. it's worth it because sometimes if you're going under the sewing machine and you've not done it before, it's going to go wrong. Then you're going to end up unpicking it. Yeah, so it's actually so quicker. it's actually quicker to tack it than it is. So, and then I always do it with the, the sole facing down. So if you put that onto the sewing machine, take off the first couple of clips here and pop that under your sewing machine. And then just take it very slowly and just literally oh, okay. follow it round. So when you get to the side, you want to push this side of the leg to the other side of the sewing machine. So you can go round here quite easily. The um, special bunny tails have sold out. Then as you get near the back, I'm you want the seam flat. So you'll flatten that out. I don't know if you can see, you flatten that out just before you get round. Now, if you've got a pair of scissors or a little pokey tool, sometimes I just hold that down as I sew it along, but just make sure you don't get the needle underneath it. So just to sort of ease that round. Then when you've gone past, move the foot to the other side again, so it makes it straight again and line the side up with the side of your foot so you know you're going the same width all the way around and just go slowly and just keep moving it so you know, there you go. And so you take it round until you get back to that bit at the top and then I just reverse it a little bit. And that's the foot on. Message from Darren, I love the bunny. Just tuned in, what is between the fabric? Is it wadding from Darren? Well, Darren, 
you should have been near the beginning. But we do understand. You see, we the thing is, Darren, we expect everyone to turn on at eight and turn off at one. But we know that you pop in and out <laughs> all the time. So um, what Sandy's using is an H640, which is a fusible wadding, or you can use H630. Um, either of them. It's a fusible wadding that you um, put on between and it's because it's a cotton fabric so it gives it more stability and it also means that you can't overstretch it and put it out of shape. So it's Sandy's top tip. The instructions don't include that but it will help with um, It'll help with it. all sorts. It'll help with sewing so we it. have got, that's on screen and then that's just for you Dano. Darren, 9.99, the H640 fusible fleece. But please do, if you've just tuned in, because we know, you know, we obviously expect yes. them to watch all the time. We do, but, of course. But we, I know you do have other lives. So if you do get to a point, you think, what are you on about? Just message us in and we will be able to help you. Now with the foot as well, on the curve, I just trim into it a little bit. Um, and on the sole, I've used pinking shears to just sort of pink round because it's on a curve. Um, you can cut into it, but there's a lot of curve to cut into. So if you use the pinking shears around it, just mm. saves trimming into it 16 .99. at all. $16.99. I love, I use oh, them for everything. I do as well. Dressmaking, can't be bothered to overlock. No. Can't be bothered to overcast. Cushions as well, if you sort everything. of Everything, love my pinking it, shears. Yes. And like normally, I would sort of pink round here as well. So if you've left enough gap, pink all the right round. So you've got it at the top here. So you can see, you can just go into it and just sort of trim round. And you know that that curve's going to be lovely then. So it's just you like can go quite close. lots of notches. Easy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then but I think it's often it, it's something like that that we often forget. We yes. you just think, oh no, I. You think of it for other things, and you forget. Oh, actually, that would be a really good. Thing I to use do. it an awful lot with my teddies and stuff mm. because there's so many curves on them. And if you're trimming into it, sometimes you can cut into the seam, and you think, oh, I've gone a bit too far there. Whereas with the pinking shears, oh, if true, you if you yes. go along, you know that whereabouts you are with mm. it, so it's much easier. And then again, just. Um, turn this the right side out again and just make sure you've got that pushed out and the little foot bit and you can get that a lovely shape when you're stuffing it as well so those will really come out and it sort of almost gives it like a little roll around the side of it with that little bit of interfacing yeah, it in does, it as doesn't well. it, so it gives it like a little edge it does oh Oops. it looks lovely in the tilde it does like it's it? little feet oh, I know, they're so sweet. it's the green is a good color now that is the only kit that we have left so we you can get the instructions on their own um, and they're in single figure. So in that bundle kit, you get full instructions. You get half a metre of white fabric for the bunny. You get a fat quarter of this gorgeous green um, tilde. Beautiful, isn't it? That's used for the ears and the soles and the tie. And you also get five bunny tails. Um, we have got instructions on their own. Right, instructions on. Now remember, the instructions come with da, 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 full templates and more importantly, you don't need to enlarge them. You will need to trace them off because they overlap to save a bit of space. Over half, well over half of the stock is gone. Just use a bit of greaseproof paper to trace them. Yes. You don't have to use anything no. fancy, just trace them off. To be honest, because they're quite thick black lines, you could just put plain paper on, you'd be able to see through. You, yeah. you don't need to use tracing paper. It's quite easy. because. Helen always does that, the lines are really thick. Yeah, so, so they'll be you fine. Just, yeah, you don't need a light box or anything like that. Um, if you want the white fabric, we have got it available by the half metre. I mean, it's always on the website anyway, but if you want just half a metre of the white cotton fabric, and you maybe, you, maybe you've got your own fabric, maybe you're going to use something special, like a cape or a Liberty or a tulle or something that's got a beautiful print where you can fussy cut the ears and the soles. Um, or maybe just been waiting for the half metre of white. 379, half a metre. It's it's our Rose and Hubble quilting weight cotton. It's your 44 inch width. It's a really beautiful quality. It's really important to us when we're selling um, plain fabric, because often we sell it in bundles with our designer fabric. It has to be great quality. There's no point in us putting inferior quality. Now, if you want more than that, because you're going to make loads of rabbits, it will come up as a multiple. So if you want, say, a metre, just put two in the basket and you will be sent it as a whole cut piece. But that is our, that's our brightest white. So if you get an extra half metre, you've got enough of the fancy fabric to make okay. two. So if you've got two children, you want the both oh, you rabbit. Oh, you two. And you've got lots of them. Oh, yeah, so if you've got as well, kit, just so get an extra half metre. Yeah. Morning, girls. These are the bears I made for my friends, three grandsons, and I interface them too. Love, Babs. 
Where are they then? Oh, I thought she'd made it. Did she send you a photo? <laughs> yeah. I know, but you often put photos on, Hannah. <laughs> oh, they come through the email. Okay. Oh, well, we, um, Babs, could you... <laughs> I thought she... Yes, could you we send the photo? We waited to see the bears. <laughs> send a photo, Babs, to studio at sonestreet.com. Yeah, like, where's the photo? <laughs> Because I would like, yeah, if you want to send us photos, you have to email. So could you send it? I want to see the photos. I want to see the, the three photos bears. as well, yes. Studio at sewingstreet.com. So with the, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> with the ears, you can see there's one edge that's slightly straighter than the other edge. So when you're doing it, you're making two patterned and two white. So make sure you join up the right ones. Right, because the right they're not ears, symmetrical. Because they're not symmetrical. Right. So you, you obviously fold over the material to make two of the So label ears. your ears. Yes. And then, then, now with this one, I've just sewn around it again, and I'm just going to um, pink this round as well, because again, there's lots of curves So with on this, this one, this doesn't have wadding. This it's is purely got, interface. It's just got the fine interfacing, because I suppose you don't want the, uh, the bunny ears to be too... Stiff. So you will need lightweight interfacing yes. for the ears. That is on the instructions. The wadding is something that Sandy always uses, but you will need, if you, well, you don't have to. If you want them all floppy, that's absolutely fine. But yes. if you want them to be able to stand up, you'll need interfacing. We do have meter packs of this. They, um, that's on the website. And again, make sure you reverse sew at either end because you're going to be turning this out inside out. And because there's not too big a gap there, when you turn it out, you don't want it to sort of split there. So you want a good sort of seam, a good, um, make it quite nice and sturdy. And again, chopstick always helps pulling this through as well. There's the um, interfacing on the um, screen now, 199 for a meter plate. That's lightweight. I don't know what I'd do if I run out of H640 or interfacing. I'm so like, yes, I put I it on like that. all the things that I make and it's I make the bags and the toys and I'm like, oh no. I always I'm buy the extra <laughs> wide, you know, the 8020 extra yes, wide because yeah. I use it for so many things. <gasps> or bonder web. <gasps> I get slightly fearful yes. when my roll is coming to an end. It's ridiculous, isn't <gasps> well, it? I'm like that I with use my interfacings sorts. and stuff because I look at it and think, oh, I've only got three packets left. I need to get some more. It's not going to oh, be shaky, I think. So, um, yes. Yeah, you know the 30 metre roll. Oh, right. Have you not mm. seen that? Oh, I think it's I, 30 metres. I do get that. It's, when it's 30 centimetres. It's like that. Anyway, I get we sell bold. it by the roll. Do you? Yes. <gasps> have you not seen No. We'll find have you. I not seen that? How have you not seen I that? I watch you all the time. How have I, I, know? I not well, seen well, that? Well, I'll find you one and show you. <gasps> there we go. And then just iron that. And there's your little ear. Now with this one, you want to fold it over into the middle and then fold it over there so it almost just sort of meets in the middle there and then pop a little clip or a pin on that and that's your ear finished. So we've got the ear finished. Now we're going to go on to the main body of the, of the rabbit. <gasps> oh yes, look at that. I know. I've only got the small That's roll. Bonder Web Envy, it isn't, is, it? isn't it? We do sell oh, this. Oh, I know. Mm. Mm. Yes, I, Hannah's going to find that. I buy bolts that. of interfacing as well. So <laughs> right, so on here you've got the eyes. So you need to mark the eye on it first. So I always just sort of punch the eye hole meters. out on the pattern. Um, and then just draw it on. Now, if you're going to be ironing it, don't use um, a heat resistant pen. But I'm not going to iron that at the moment. <laughs> That's quite annoying when you it's, do that. Oh, I've done that before. I'm yes. so <laughs> um, and don't forget, when you're doing the other side, reverse the pattern over. So you need to line it up, reverse the pattern over. And as you can see, I've just marked my little eye on that one as well. So one's been made up already. Now we've also got a little seam on it. So again, I've got a little hole where the dart finishes. So I'm going to put a little dot there, then just pull it away slightly from the edge and just put two little marks. So this is, just bonder web, yes. 30 metres. Oh, can I stroke it? You can hold it. See how heavy that is? 30 centimetres. You don't need bonder web for this. No, but, we, don't. we do for the next show. But we do for the next show. This is, That's fine, for anyone who runs out of bonder web, like me and you. Last a week or two, do you reckon? Comes in the box. 
rip off. And it comes with loads of leaflets as well, because oh. it's because it's supposed to be for shops. So you get loads of leaflets in there as well. Huh? Look, you get a whole stack That's of them. So you can pretend you can pretend you're a shop. Get a whole stack of them in it. Because you you can play shop. It's like when you're little and you play shop. I you know. Cut yourself a little meat and you draw a leaflet to go with it. So shops, you, when you go into a shop, you can, you know, and you buy a meter. That's yes. what they get it off. But you can have your own roll. You can have your own. I oh. know. I absolutely love this. Never a waste of money, Bond. No, well, we'll put it in your next show. So, yes. Oh, please do. So I put the little seam here on the top. Now you need to fold it in. So just fold it um, together you can sort of see where it goes in fact i'm going to turn it over and i'm going to put the hole on this side as well so i know where the end is there we go so you've got it on the reverse as well and you can match up your two little seams there okay um you do need um, to check out on these instructions i'm just warning stop warning absolutely all the kits have sold out there are loads of you have got these in baskets and we are limited in stock on them remember it includes the templates these are fantastic to use up your fabric stash to use as memory rabbits yes memory bunnies memory bunnies um beautiful as decorations gifts if you're struggling to think of a gift for someone i don't know who would not want a bunny for all sorts isn't it baby's first birthday christening yes. baby yeah. showers or even, even you know 50th birthday present Oh, why not lovely. who else gets a bunny i know but now, they are limited in stock now we have got more of you've got them in baskets so you do need to get checked out so i've done the little seam oh now that's where the this is where the ham or the roll comes in and i always use these in toy making because it's lovely to just sort of you can't and if you, you can't do that do it. flat you're not going to get it it's much better if you do it just over right, a curve right okay um can you, and you can just see okay, it yeah, just yeah. do it on the curve so that's the front done I've not caught the eye with the iron. So, and then on the back, you have sort of like a cut out here. So you cut that bit out of the rabbit and then you join those two together on the wrong side and just sew along the same as you have done with the seam. And you've got like a little sit bone, I suppose. So that's where the bunny rabbit will sit. So you can see on here. Oh, that's his bottom. It just makes him sit nicer. Oh, okay. So that's and that's nice because he, he, he then he's on a shelf, really isn't nice. he? Or he's yes. on a chair. Because sometimes if they are all rounded, they're a bit wobbly, yeah. but he sits really nice. So you've got that one. So now we're going to sew them together. So this is when I have to sort of check. So I sort of go, there we go. I think it's outside. Clip right, it. there are more people who've got this pattern in their basket than we've actually got available, so you need to check out. Once you've checked out, and don't think um, if you're new to Sewing Street, oh, well, I'll wait until because of the postage. If you check out now, your postage is applied when your basket is closed at midnight. You can then check out another 300 times between now and midnight. You will still only be charged 395. The problem with not checking out is that there's more of you got it in baskets, so somebody else will get yours. So if you want it, you need to get it checked out. And I think it's one of those patterns that you'll find all sorts of things. If yeah. you say, just mm. sort of like maybe a present, and you think, oh, I know what I'll do, I'll make a rabbit. I'll make a rabbit, yeah. They don't take a long time to make. Once you've got used to doing this, the pattern, mm. you'll find it so easy to make and you'll sort of it's a real go-to well it's also the thing if you stand there in front of your fabric stash and take a moment to realize how beautiful it is you'll stroke it a little it won't bit take first. long <laughs> before you yeah, give it a little stroke it won't be long till you think mm, actually and because it doesn't take an awful lot of stash if you've got a beautiful maybe meter of fabric that's your favorite liberty mm. cape, you know tulip pink you think oh i don't really want to cut into that you could just take almost a slither off the side of it and you've made something absolutely beautiful with it you've still got quite a nice yeah, bit left that yeah. you can sort of sit and stroke but you've also put something lovely on your rabbit as well mm. and, and just, just those sort of special things where you think oh i just i sorted out my wardrobe last weekend it was so painful so yes. painful i just at one point thought, i just just want to go it's so boring <sighs> that's something um, i need to do but i had <laughs> a pile of clothes to go to the charity shop things that really just needed throwing out but then I had a pile of sentimental clothes clothes that I probably would never wear again either because they didn't fit me or were really out of fashion or something but I just couldn't bear to throw them out and actually that's those would be nice to make something with that's what I do in most of my clothes with, I go through my wardrobe and I think 
That'd make a lovely bear, I can't forget. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine is so just like... So from our wardrobe to the cupboard in the sewing room. So I mean, I've got a beautiful <laughs> silk Chinese-style dress oh, I bought from Monsoon in a, like a size 8. There's no way I'm getting rid of that. You there can't is also fit into that, bear. No way I will ever fit into it again. So that's in my sentimental pile on the top shelf. <laughs> so you need to turn it into a I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe just cut bits off. Make a quilt. No, I can't cut it. No, I can't no. Cut it so unfortunately, it just has to go on this sentimental pile <gasps> till one day. Yes, because you never see it. Whereas if you make it, I know. Something. I mean, it is ridiculous. You I do see it. it on how yeah. I laughed. <laughs> I know. I've got a sort of a nice sort of Chinesey silk oh, dress. It's beautiful. I think mine's probably about an eight as well. Mm. I keep looking at it. Thinking, Full one length, day. really one. like long. Oh, and mine's I remember wearing it to a New Year's Eve party as well. <laughs> What colour is it? Oh, like a deep burgundy, oh. deep red. It's absolutely oh, gorgeous. Beautiful. And it was really expensive as well. Oh. Anyway. I've got a cream one with like grey embroidery. Oh. And I came out, I keep looking at it and it keeps going back in the wardrobe. I know, I know. Well, I have a one sentimental make a bunny, pie. Yeah. <laughs> now again, I sort of uh, pink these as well. So just sort of go around it and it just saves you chopping, it, you know, sort of making little cuts into it. There we go. And especially on this deep, um, curve there. You can go quite close in, just make sure you don't cut any of the stitches and then go round. Okay. Then I've made one already. So we want to put the ear on. So this goes just in between. There we go. Wait a minute. Oh, I've actually sewn it up and not put the ear in. So you need to, I'll just unpick that bit there. Sorry, you do need to pop your ear in first I was getting carried away I sew my it's a lot of my ears on afterwards but this one you actually sew it in between so no problem just unpick that and it just goes here where the where the little seam is you need to put your ear in there so what you've got to clip on it anyway and then just make sure that it's standing up in the right direction then put it over the top and then just sew that back up again so don't forget to add your bunny in. You will be following the pattern as well, so uh, as you go along. And Helen's patterns are always fabulous. They they walk you through it so easily. So. They're great, aren't they? I've got a message yes. from um, Tracy here. Good morning. Lovely to see you on this morning, Sewing Street, Sandy. You are amazing. Oh, thank you, Tracy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's great. She knows everything. I was in the oh. dressing room. I said, right, now I'm crocheting this dress, Sandy. <laughs> what can I line it with? Because it's stretchy, but I don't want it to stick with a long conversation. I knew she knew the answer. Mm, yeah, even even so, I still go to sewing classes and things like that and have do, to do you? courses. You can never learn enough. Well, no, I know. I, there is that. You always I've learn been something. I've sewing for longer than I can remember now. <laughs> <laughs> I've made loads and loads of toys and I've never thought. And, but if I make door stops, I always put wadding on because of the stuffing. Never you crossed see? my mind to do yeah. with toys. So. so you always do it with toys. And if you've well. ever crocheted a dress, Sandy knows the answer to the lining. If I ever finish it. But you it. can never learn enough, I don't think, can you? can always learn from people as well. Well, also, I always think keep people, it in. people stumble across tips. Yes. Mind you, I stumble across things and think I've invented them. And other people go, yeah, I've been doing that for ages. It's really annoying, <laughs> isn't it? You're so pleased Why with yourself. Why didn't you tell me if you've been doing that for ages? <laughs> because I've just discovered it and it's life changing. <laughs> oh, it's not fair, that is it. But no. it's great when someone meant you think, oh, wow, that's such but a there's, like... there's so many crafts out there as well that I just sort of think, there's so many I want to learn. Mm. And you sort of think, I'm never going to get to learn all those. <laughs> no, no. And you just sort of really, and then it's sort of like you think, no, calm down, just stick with what you're doing. But, um, but there are that's never, ever think you've learnt it all so well I quite like going on a workshop for odd things I went on like a ceramic button making <gasps> workshop oh, which was just an fantastic. afternoon yes. not sure I'll ever bother again because clearly I don't have a kiln yes. but um it was a lovely thing and then like a couple of weeks later I went and picked up all my ceramic buttons which clearly oh. I can't use because they're too precious that's right but they could go with the material that you're not going to use yes either, they can they? go with my sentimental shelf but you know it's when you do like little workshops like that what that's a lovely, lovely thing could you use the air drying clay yes I guess you could you it was just nice you know we had cake we had tea we all had a chat we yeah. made buttons it was a lovely afternoon I've been sort of delving into lots of different quilting methods 
because there's mm. so many quilting methods, aren't there? You know, there's Japanese ones and Indian ones, and there's um, all sorts. All there's, sorts. You know, scrap your plique and um, graffiti quilting and all <laughs> sorts of stuff. I know, and it's, it's just great, been blowing it? my mind all these different quilting I know, I, methods. I could never be bored ever. Oh, never. Never be bored. I too much never, to do. Ever. If you've don't got have a fabric stash to do. and some thread, never be bored. I know. The trouble is when it's your job as well, you just sort of carry on, don't you? So it's my job, it's my hobby. And yes, I, do it. I have <laughs> and that I do problem because it has been my job and my hobby forever. Yes, and me too. Yes, yeah. they, the two interlink and But overlap. aren't we lucky having a job that's a hobby? Oh, and Christine says, morning, Rebecca, Reed and Sandy, enjoying the show. Thank you, Christine. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, gosh, we've only got like a minute left. Okay, so we've pinned it all round. Just, I'm going to take a couple of the clips out there and I'm just going to mark a little bit here. So that's your opening at the back there. So if I just sort of talk you through the rest of it, so you'd sew all that round and turn it the right way so you've got your bunny here. Yes. Then with this, to joint it, you need your buttons. So with that lovely pack of buttons that you can buy, yes. use different colour buttons. I've used all the same, but you could use a lovely Ew, different you colour. Hold you. So you could use a lovely different colour button. Mm. Then if you've got a doll needle, which are the really long, I right. think we do sell them. Yes. I'm not sure if we've got them. I'll just show you what they look like. They're the really yeah, long Yeah, we ones. have. If you have a look on the website, we do have the doll needles. Mine are a bit crooked because I use them every day. Yeah, my son they, used my, his use mine to put speakers in his car still not sure why and he goes is it all right that it's the bent <laughs> if, if you use pliers you can straighten mm. a little bit and i also use a really strong upholstery thread oh, as okay. well so you go them on. through one button so i sort of start with the arm so if you had the arm here i would put the needle through because you've got marks on it so put the marks on go through attach the button on there so you bring it through the button would be there go back again so you've right. actually got your button on here then put it on the mark on the bunny go right through the rabbit to the, and it comes out the other side then take the other arm take it through put your button on take it back through and i go backwards and forwards probably about four or five times okay so and then as i come back up i'll twist it round a little bit and then take it down again and um, just so that if it is for children they are quite tight yeah um, and then sort of like so you can see just inside i sort of like you probably can't see but they're wrapped round and round the shank inside oh there. i see so, just to make them really yeah. secure so always use buttons that have got either four holes in them or two holes in but them no never with the shanks because right. it won't make it Flat strong buttons enough only um and i've been making the toys the memory bear for about five years now and i always put when i send them back if they do break, let me know and I can re-thread them for you. And they've been used as toys, they've taken on holidays, oh, okay. they've gone in bags, and I've never ever had to re-thread anybody's. <laughs> oh, so, so use a stronger thread. So I use a really strong, you can buy like an upholstery thread, which mm. is a lot stronger. Um, or and I always double it over use a really nice long length so you're just using the one length yeah and then just and I sort of put it down so you've got it here and then you can sort of hold mm. it and pull it through so and again with the legs sort of when you've got one on and then I sort of I sit it up once I've got one thread through to make sure that they do sit up nicely oh, and then you can right, sort okay. of take it back oh through brilliant again. those are brilliant tips there um you go. well thanks that's great Sandy so I will see you back here in an hour for you the will. sheep for the sheep on the shelf of very the tall web. people <laughs> Will we have enough fun to wear? This will be in an hour and there's a wall hanging as well. Again, this is a bit of a, a scrap busting one, but we'll talk about that yes. at 11. Now, the only way that you can make the bunny now is all the kits have sold out is with the instructions. And just a stock warning, we have more of you who've got the instructions in their basket than we've actually got in stock. So you need to get checked out on that. Okay. We'll leave the graphics on screen for that over the break. Um, it is going to sell out. So please, if you do want this, do check out. Otherwise, you will be disappointed because I don't know when we'll get them back in. Um, any of the other items that we had are on the website. Um, do you have a yarn stash? I do. <laughs> In the garage, in the spare bedroom, yeah. in the workroom. Really? Everywhere. I put well, we have an idea. So this is this <gasps> is a minor part of my yarn stash. Yes, I love yarn. So we well. have we have the yarn stash busting <gasps> tool with Dewey. I love Dewey. These are great. Twelve o'clock today. I've bought part of my yarn stash. Look at what you can make. <gasps> Any yarn you can mix together different weights. You can dip different colours. Um, different um fibers so cotton wool acrylic i even made look a granny square <gasps> that's 
that's lovely. Should have sewn the ends in, looks a bit messy. 12 o'clock today. It's not just about crochet, it's about knitting. This is the only way that I've seen that you can use up your yarn. It's fine with fabric, you can make patchwork quilts, but with yarn, what do you do when you've got half a ball of this and a quarter ball of that and two balls and of that? And you find you always have, and you don't, you're not going to straight away because it's it. too lovely. No, no but, but you look. can't knit anything up with it, so it's absolutely brilliant. There's only 13 idea. stitches in that row. <gasps> That's a scarf, isn't it? That's a, yes, yeah. Imagine if I get that, could have been a blanket. It could. And that's all the bits that have sat. I actually carefully collated my yarn stash because it was all tied up in the middle. So I have brought some of it with me. Julie's bringing hers. That's 12 o'clock. Just don't want you to miss out. If you've got a yarn stash, send us photos. But I want to see it. I don't want it in just bin line. I want to see what your yarn stash looks like. I wouldn't dream um, of showing you mine. <laughs> yeah. And Sandy will be sending us a that's photo right. of her yarn stash as well. On, on Facebook. Yeah. So um, I'll see you back here in a few minutes time. It's all about sewing tools. I've got some really cool sewing gadgets for you. So don't go anywhere. I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes time. Here at Sewing great point. we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself an overlocker. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. 
You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals, and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself an overlocker. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Hey, welcome back to Sewing Street. So this hour is all about the tool. We've got a new thing here. Now I've not seen this before. Have you ever seen a honey bun? So I love a pre-cut, love a jelly roll, love a fat quarter bundle of charm pack, a layer cake. This is called a honey bun, so which is basically a design roll, jelly roll, and which are normally two and a half inches wide by the full width of fabric. But this is one and a half inches and it's called a honey bun. What a cute name. That's the name for it. They come in different colours. Um, that's what it looks like. So it looks, it's like a jelly roll sliced down the middle. But they're one and a half inches. So just think of all the things you could do with it. Wouldn't it be brilliant for log cabin? So if you're sewing it all together with a quarter inch seam, obviously you end up with one inch strips. So if you've got design rolls, you could mix these together with honey buns. It's a great name, isn't it? Now, the, the, the motor patterns are made specially for these honey buns because obviously the fat, the widths, ugh, the strips are narrower, so you don't want too big a print. Look at that, there's loads of, have a look online, loads of online tutorials. Um, if you just put into Google, honey buns, you'll see all the different things. So this is, each one is your normal 44 inch width fabric, but it's just one and a half inches. So that's your normal 44, but they're just one and a half inches wide. What a brilliant idea. Now this one is gorgeous because in it we've got shades of, um, sapphire blue some have got florals we've got spots oh i like the um look, look at the nice check in it as well we've got some blues we've got teals greens i love this one with all the little blobs on it because you do need them to be these tiny prints and then it moves through into beautiful like lime greens it's very spring isn't it and then into pinks as well that checks gorgeous oh yeah show some pictures this is inspiration for honey buns so the mon ha honey buns mode these rolls could typically contain 40 to 45 strips cut to one and a half inches long so this is what you can make with them there's um like a little quilt oh that's a good idea. oh i like that cushion so you imagine cutting all of those strips 
That's really simple. So I guess what you do with that cushion that's on the right is you could join them all together and side by side and then you cut them into the little pieces to make each row. That's clever. This is just Hannah searched honey buns. But you can actually buy patterns. There are online tutorials. I mean, I'm sure you've all got your own ideas, to be honest. You can adapt your own patterns. But I... Oh, there's an, and another one. Oh, yes. Right, so if you go on to the Missouri Star Quilter, she does a video of what you can do with them as well. Fantastic. Log cabin would be brilliant with them. Or, you know, you could use them for borders, bindings. Yeah, bag making. Quite often when I bind things, I don't always use a double fold. If I'm using a single fold binding, this would be ideal because I normally cut my strips one and a quarter to one and a half inches for that anyway. So look at the colours in here. This is really nice. So if you love a pre-cut, I've never seen a honey bun before. These are so sweet. Look at the colours in it. That's just one, just one thing. Can I choose what I would want to do next? Yeah, okay. Right, can I do... I'm going to do Tim Holtz because I've just spotted this. I love this. This is... The, yes, this is supposed to be a tools ash, but this is fabric instead. Yeah, we just pick things we like. I love Tim Holtz fabric because I like having fabric that's a little bit novelty, but not kids' novelty, more grown-up novelty, but also fabric that you can use if you're making things, um, you know, like for teenagers, not just for all for men. Um, I love using these for linings. I've made quite a few denim wash bags, and these for linings are brilliant. So all of his fabric, this... Um, this let me just check how many in there that you get. 20. 20 fat quarters. So you've got one with music on, you've got one with text. And with all, you see all the overlaying of the text. They are beautiful in patchwork because you've got textures and colours. I mean, even this one here, look at the texture in that fabric. It's gorgeous. Imagine lining a wash bag with that. It looks really stunning. It's like sort of old brown paper. Now, we've got for you today... This is on, we've only got single figures left of this. There's a five pound saving, 74.99. I mean, it is beautiful. So less than four pounds a fat quarter. Look at that one. Oh, it's like um, wooden rulers. And then we've got, an, oh, I like this one. I've not seen that one. Look at that one. That's beautiful, isn't it? But it's like, they've been, that one's even got like a little bit of blanket stitch. All of his fabrics are slightly sort of aged and distressed look. But they make such interesting pieces. And they're wonderful for fussy cutting. Because all of them have got little numbers. This one's a map. Imagine fussy cutting this one. I love to have a collection of Tim Holtz. And I just keep these and I use little pieces of them. But you could make a whole quilt from them. It's just when you want something that's a bit novelty, but just a little bit quirky, a bit unusual. Or even if you're putting a pocket in something, you imagine having the sort of the clocks as the little pocket. And then you've got this, I mean, and like this. This doesn't even look like fabric, does it? It's like some kind of distressed leather. Anyway, all of that in there, you get all of those pieces, 20. So if you love Tim Holtz, this is his neutral bundle. We are in single figures of it, 74.99. And that is a, so that's less than four pounds a fat quarter and absolutely stunning. Wouldn't that make a beautiful quilt? But I, I don't, I'm, I'd love to make a quilt. I've never have done. I keep mine and I use little pieces for different things. Just gorgeous. Well, we don't have that many with that have sort of labels and different things in. Right, I'm just going to do the other Tim Holtz one. Now, there's only three of these, but again, we're going to take five pounds off. But if you want that little saving, if I can get into it. Oh, okay. da -da -da. Right. So this is um, bold. Now, I, these are gorgeous. Look at this one. I used, what did I use? I used this one, is it? Yes, to make a tote bag. I've got this fold-up tote bag that lives in my handbag, and I used that for one side of it. 
Isn't that gorgeous? You've got like um, dressmaking pieces from like dress patterns. Beautiful. And then you've got little bits of ticking. That's like your dressmaking. Um, like a scrapbook of an old of a vintage dressmaker. So these are the fabrics that you're getting in it. You've got the one with all the post labels on. Gorgeous floral. Even the planes are like grungy. That one's got all um, bottle tops. Look at these. I love my Tim Holtz collection. Often, whenever I get some, I, I keep it all in one box. But look at the colours of this. So you could use them all together. And the red one. Beautiful. So you could just use the planes, which aren't planes. They're sort of distressed looking. Um, or just use the whole lot together. Look at this one. It's like old postcards. And then everything is in layers of graphics and text. And you've often got like labels and bills and receipts and postcards. Beautiful. $74.99. We've only got four of those left. So if you want those, um, it's kind of a last chance opportunity. Um, right, thimble pots I'm going to do now. Yeah. Because you, you said, Hannah, I could do whatever I wanted. And then you can choose. <laughs> I love these because these are brilliant for keeping um, like fabric marking pens. And I've got a pot in my sewing room and I keep like my seam ripper, my fabric marking pens, my hemline glue pen, all of those things in there. You can also keep scissors in them. They're really nice as well to put a plant in. Look great with the spider plant in. So they are, they're not um, china, they're plastic. So they're nice and lightweight. So if you wanted to um, s have one as a gift, you could even fill it with um, some fat quarters rolled up and give it to somebody or just fill it with some hand creams or put um, um, a pot, a plant in it. Lovely thing to wrap some. You could put cookies inside, couldn't you? Six ninety nine rose gold. Look, it's silvery coloured inside. But um, yeah, easy, even if you wanted to post it to somebody, it'd be ideal. But it's just a lovely thing. Or just have it as an ornament. Super size rose gold thimble. It does say it's a desk organiser, but you could use it for whatever you like. Fill it with sweets. Fill it with the mint imperials. I would fill it with mint imperials. Just have on my sewing table for moments of snackage. Right, Hannah, you can choose next. <laughs> Thank you for that. We can do the template plastic, yes. This is great, this is. So if you want to make templates, whether it's like patchwork templates or um, even if you, um, there's two sheets in here. It's got a grid on it. So if you wanted to draw specific ones or great for pattern pieces. So, so maybe, for example, like you, you bought the bunny pattern in the last hour and you want to make loads of bunnies, you're going to make bunnies to sell and you want to keep your templates nice and solid, then you can trace around them onto here, cut them out and then you've got them. You don't need to use the grid lines, but they're really good if you do want specific square ones. Oh, I mean, you can see through them. It's not... Um... So maybe you're doing like... So maybe like you've got EPP and you've got your... Um, you've got your card template. You can then cut out your the template of your um, the fabric piece that's bigger. Then you could place it onto your fabric, and you can see through it. So, for example, let me get a fabric so you can see what I mean. So you can use the grid lines if you need to. But say I was doing EPP with this Tim Holtz fabric, and then I'd cut out this. Look, I could then place the template on here. You can see through it, so you could then cut round it. Or if you were doing like soft toys and you wanted to fussy cut something or keep your templates so they last longer, this is ideal. Just $3.99, you get two sheets in the pack. It's got the grid lines on it if you need them, if you want to use them for regular shapes. If they're not regular, it doesn't matter, you can still see through. And actually what's quite useful, if you've got a bigger sheet with the grid lines, you could mark where the center point is if you specifically wanted something that was gonna be in the middle of it. So just $3.99 and um, you get two sheets in there. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Now, this is ideal for um, turning, well, many things, actually. This is kind of a multi-use tool. It's called a precision stiletto. So, it's really good for turning things right sides out. It's like the, the real version of a pokey tool. So, if you are one, I bet we've got one. Maybe I will. I will open it somehow. Sorry, bear with, got it out now. So if you wanted to turn something right sides out, but without piercing it, you've got this end that's nice and pokey. Um, this end you can use if you're for ironing. So if you don't want to get your fingers burnt and you want to hold something flat. So maybe you've got a seam, you know, when you've sewn a quarter inch seam and you want to press it open, you can use this end or this end to open it up. Then you can press that seam open. So rather than put your fingers on there, you don't get it burnt. It's ideal for that. Also, when you are, um, particularly when you're doing quarter inch seam allowances on a sewing machine, and maybe you want to ho hold something flat, maybe you're going around a curve, or you need to hold a seam pressed open while you sew over it again. Like when you do quarter square triangles or fl flying geese, where you're, you've done a seam, you press it open or to one side, and then you sew again, and you need that seam to stay facing. As you're sewing through with your machine, you can hold it with that. So it's ideal, it's a little tool, but absolutely perfect for that because you can use it for all of those things. So, um, and I think the fact that you can iron with it is brilliant. We use it all, quite often see use the, all the, we quite often see our designers using it and then people say later, what is that? So the clover tools are brilliant. I mean, if you've got any clover tools, you'll know they're always designed spe for very specific purposes, beautiful quality, and they also work for those specific purposes as well. Um, and I think it is really good that you can hold it near an iron. So when, particularly I find that if I'm pressing seams open, if it's of a bit of a fiddly area or it's a curve, you want to hold that with your finger to hold it flat. Well, you can just use this section for it and use it to turn and then hold things flat. So it's one of those really useful things. Keep it in your pot with your seam ripper next to your fabric uh, marking pencils and ideal. And it's clover, so it's great quality. They're always beautifully engineered for such things. Right. Fine liners. Um, where are they? Okay, oh, they're drop ship. Right, <laughs> these are fab. So they're fine liners, so they're really, really fine point from Sam Tangle, but they are permanent markers, which is brilliant. So if you want to write a name on something, label something, maybe you want to personalise something, maybe you're making a drawstring bag for your golf balls, and or maybe you want to and you want to label it you can use these but they're very fine because quite often the permanent marker pens are a bit thicker but these are brilliant or maybe you want to draw your own fabric maybe you tangle already and you want some more pens pack of three permanent markers or even as simple as you need to label the kids clothes and you don't want to buy iron on tape um, you don't want to buy those sew-on name labels. You can just write their name on it with this. And it's great for things like shoes. Remember you're trying to label shoes that you need to do for school shoes and um, sports shoes. Ideal for that. If you do tangle, we've also got a wooden sewing box. So if you do that, if you've watched the Sang Tangle shows, you know what I mean. If you do that now, wouldn't this be ideal? I feel, I mean, it's a beautiful box all on its own. It's wooden cantilever. Look, it's got two little opening. Look, put things inside. It's got the handle. Oh, and we're reducing the price. So it was $26.99. Special Hannah Price today. Hannah Price is $14.99. So there you go. That opens like that. And then you've got... Um, oh, there we go. Just wonder where the handle You've also got... A little drawer underneath. Now I feel like this is crying out to be decorated. Yeah, there's your sand tangle fine liners. Be ideal for that. You could use decoupage on it, paint it, 
Or you could just leave it as it is. It's just leave, it can be just, it, it, it isn't designed so that you have to decorate it. You can just have it as, I think, 14.99. What a beautiful gift. For anybody, it doesn't even need to be sewing. It could be used for all sorts, you know, for any hobbies where you've got lots of little items. Fill it up. What a lovely thing because it's the sort of thing that you can keep out in a room because it's really lovely. Beautifully made. So you've got the two little sections there. Should be $26.99. It's like a proper traditional sewing box because it's got that cantilever. That's gorgeous, isn't it? $14.99. Get it while it's at that price. Right, we're on single figures of that. Um, that is a Hannah special price. It will go back up again at midnight. We are on single figures. If you need a new sewing box or you know someone who does, or somebody who does maybe like model making and they've got lots of small items, but that is, that is about to sell out. So if you've got it in your basket, please do check out. I will leave that with you. I have got another sewing box. Oh, this is a nice one. So this is your fabric covered one, but look at the top of it. Can we get on over the head? So this was $27.99, sewing box floral. It's a machine embroidered top. Oh, Hannah special. £10 saving, $17.99. Look, it's got a fabric gingham top, machine embroidered flowers. Look, there's even a bee. This is so pretty, isn't it? You've got the plastic handle. All the sides are covered in um, a fabric print. This is what I love. So look at the fabric print. It's got exactly that same print of the flowers that you've got on the top. But this is machine embroidered onto the gingham. And then this is the actual fabric print. It really thought it through. Even the ends of the handles are covered in fabric. Then at the front of the box, you've got a magnetic clasp with the fabric covered opening. And then inside... You've got your usual, as you do get in a sewing box, I'll turn it that way around. So you've got your plastic tray, you can keep all your little pieces and um, nicely fabric lined inside. You've got, I'll turn it like that, you can see, look, there's the pin cushion bit. And then you've got a little pocket here with a drawstring that you, with a elastic so you can keep items in there. So this is lovely. If you if you're thinking you know you know somebody wants to start sewing maybe a child and you want to fill it with items for them to have or maybe for you you know we've all got lots of loads and loads of different sewing equipment I have a sewing box I keep on my sewing table that just has the main things that I use all the time obviously I've got loads and loads of other tools that sit on shelves but this is for what I use all the time so that if I'm doing some sewing in the evening I want to go and sit in front of the telly I can just take my sewing box with me this is perfect $17.99 it's really be it's beautifully made with its brass hinges as well but I do like the way that you've got this fabric print around the outside and that has been copied exactly on machine embroidery on the top. It's also padded, so you can use this to put pins in as well. Or, you know, when you're sewing, you've got a needle and you think, oh, I can't bother to put that, I'll just pop it in there. Uh, right, this one, single figure. So if you want this one, you are gonna need to check out on it. We are on single figures of this one. Right, while we're talking about beautiful things, be pin cushion. Gifts, good gift for Mother's Day. Look at that. It's a little beehive. Eleven ninety nine. It's a pincushion. Oh, not today, Hannah special. Nine ninety nine. So it's, it looks like a little beehive, but it features fabric. It's a really nice slate grey with um white bees printed all over it got a little bee on the top as well so it's it i mean it's labeled as a pin cushion you just use it as a little ornament can't you but ideal popping your pins in next year so nice little gift really i love my flu floor sewing box my epp from janie in bristol that's that's true though for small projects like that if you've got your sewing box it means that you can keep your glue your scissors your needles your threads in the top you can keep all your epp pieces in the little trays all your fabric underneath it just keeps it in one place i keep my epp on a tray just so it's all together in one place but a sewing box brilliant idea um, I had my eye on the wooden sewing box. I'm glad I waited. Great price. I've got lots of graphic 45 papers waiting to be used from Catherine. Yeah, I think um, it'd be brilliant for that, wouldn't it? It'd take, well, sold out now. It's a lovely box though, isn't it? I've got another pincushion. I love this one. 
This is so cute. This is like, is it an aloe vera? I think that's what it looks like. Oh, it could be our old mother-in-law's tongue. It is a pink, it's, it's called a succulent. But look, the little pot is made from felt. You've got felt on the base. It's got a different colour of felt soil. I mean, this is an amazing price, isn't it? Six nine nine. Can you imagine how long this took to make? Then they've used a succulent fabric to make these tiny tubes of the um, succulent, but in the fabric, all stuffed and then put into here. I mean, this must have taken ages to make. So to be honest, I would use it. I would just have it on the... Because I have... Um, on one of my windowsills, I've got crocheted cactus, cacti, obviously pots of crochet cacti and I just keep them all as ornaments but that's beautiful isn't it again it's one of those gifts you give to somebody and they think oh that's the sweetest you know when you just don't know I love that just don't know I, I like the fact it's got the little felt pot as well only 6.99 right spool rack these are limited. I've got one of the... Actually, I've got the one that's twice the size of this. Uh, there's not many of these left. We'll just show you a picture. Seven ninety nine. You can get 25 spools on this. I've got one of them. Mine's the... There is a bigger one. And it's brilliant. I've had it for ages. You can get spools of all different sizes on it. I keep them all on there. It's the best way to keep the thread because although, yes, thread does unravel, it doesn't all get tangled into each other. If you keep your threads together in a pot, it all gets mixed up. Even though it, the thread does come off, they don't all get tangled up. And you can so easily, this is for storage for me, you can easily see what you've got. And also for storage for me, it has to be easy to put away. If it's difficult and you've got to take lids off and stuff, then it doesn't happen as easily. But with that, you can so easily put it away. Um, we've got this one as well. Depends on what you want and where you're putting yours. This, you can get 32 spools on there. 4 99 That's fab, isn't it? And because they're easy to put away, I always find, because I've often got like loads of different spools up, I can just go and pop them all on top. The space that that uses up when you look at it, because I measured my shelf before I bought one of these, look at the depth. It's not very big at all. It is. Because we've all got those little awkward spaces, so you may as well use it. And like the, um, the depth of it is like four inches. Yeah, I mean, the wooden one, obviously, is more attractive if you've got it out on your desk. But depending on the space that you've got and what you're going to do, whether it's going to go on a drawer, um, and, it, you know, it depends on the space you've got and where you want to put it. Once it's covered in spools, you won't know. But for four ninety nine, if you look at the... Um, if you look at the size of it and the, spa the space that you will save, and I just find, because I keep... Some of my more special threads, because I can't fit them all on my spool rack, in a box. But they do tangle together on here that they don't. Four ninety nine. I mean, it is. it does help to organise it all. Hi, Bex. I just ordered the wooden sewing box. I've had my eye on. Thanks for the great price, Hannah, from Steph. Yes, I know it's Hannah's special price. Well done. It is a really beautiful sewing box. And it's sold out now. So, well done for getting it, Steph. It is lovely, isn't it? I like these kind of traditional looking things. Bobbin box. Bobbin box. Yes, I have. £2.49. £2.49. Should always have a bobbin box. When I got my new machine, it didn't have a place to put your bobbin, so I bought a bobbin box. £1.99. That is fab. So how many can I? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Twenty-five. 25 199 so I bought myself a bobbin box and it is really useful because even with my old machine I kept them under that bit that lifts up underneath the um, needle plate but again they all got tangled if you put them all in here I mean obviously the threads do come off them but they don't get tangled up together I mean it might not 199 if you it might not be the only thing you buy together you might have bought some other things but have a look at your bobbins and if you've got 25, it is really useful. And if you haven't, get some more 
empty bob bobbin spools because then you can keep them wound up with all the different colours and it's really annoying when you haven't got enough bobbins or they all get tangled up and you have to then take thread off them what a waste but if keep them in the bobbin box 1.99 that's a great Hannah price I mean maybe you've already bought something already this morning your postage is, is done remember you can keep checking out all day so don't think oh well I've already bought something I've done my PMP no you haven't at midnight, that's when your basket's closed. That's when your PMP is applied. So, one ninety nine, and it's like I tell you what, as well, it's a nice plastic. It's that kind of soft plastic. It's not a shatter one. I don't know what it's called. So it won't, when you drop it, it's not that sort of. Um, don't know. I have no idea what that's called, but you know the plastic that shatters. This is more like um, a rubbery plastic. Well, it's not rubbery. There's probably a special name for it, but it's not that one. This one ninety nine. It's a great thing. I've got a pattern. Oh, is it for the Dino pencil case? Yes. Yeah, so thinking about storage, let's think about pencils. But this could be for your sewing kit, couldn't it? This could be for your um, your little sewing kit. This could be for your EPP. This could be for all your fabric marking pencils. This could just be lovely. This was demoed on the 25th of October last year. It is gorgeous. And there is a tutorial online for it. Because Studio 77, she does her own tutorial. All of her tutorials are online there. Um, all the pattern pieces here, just need to cut them out, trace around them. There they are. And you can make, look at it. It's like a proper dinosaur. And then the mouth is a zip. I love that. So you can use this for your storage or you can just make it as a pencil case for somebody who loves dinosaurs. That's so sweet. All instructions are, oh yeah, look at it all. Obviously you need to, you don't actually need that much fabric for it. You don't need much fabric for it at all. But look at these are just different ideas of what people have done where they've used, um, different print fabrics you could do a patchwork one couldn't you 9.99 studio 77 77 yeah 77 dino pencil case it's lovely though isn't it anyway all the pieces are on there and you don't need to enlarge them or anything they are all in the right side it is one of those things that once you've worked it out and you've made it you will make it again and again i love that i've got another one here Right, now from studio, um, studio 77, this is a unicorn bag. I'm going to get it out so you can see the patterns. Now you get bits in here as well. So this is what it looks like. This is the unicorn bag. I mean, obviously you use your own fabric. You can do whatever you look, you make yours and whatever you like. So this is 29.99 because you're getting the full pattern with all the pattern pieces and there's a lot of them, all 100%. Um, you get the zip, look, rainbow zip and look at the fixings. Look at the, um, you get the D-rings, you get the swivel clips, you get the magnetic class in this rainbow, you get the end, the zip slider is in there for the zip, and also basically all the hardware that you need. I've never seen magnetic rainbow magnetic clasps. And you get the bag slider as well. So you can make the most beautiful unicorn bag when all of with it's the hardware. I think that is gorgeous. Beautiful. This was demoed on the 29th of July last year. So if you want to watch. But again, S Studio 77 has um, online demos of all of their kits as well. So you'd be able to see it. So if you want to make the unicorn bag with this beautiful, I mean, you can make it in whatever fabrics you like, but getting the hardware in all these rainbow colours and it's beautiful quality hardware as well. And the rainbow zip, I think that's a fantastic price. There we go. Unicorn fabric. 
I've got three unicorn fabrics. These are fab. This um, pink one. So now this is a canvas fabric rather than a cotton fabric. It's not super stiff, but if you were making a bag with it and you wanted something with a bit more structure, so it's not as, it's weightier than your um, quilting weight cotton, but it's not like super thick canvas, but it's better if you're, um, if maybe you're making lightweight curtains or you're making bags, lampshade covers, something like that, that you just want a bit more weight. I mean, ideal for cushions as well, bags, because it's got that a bit more weight, but it's just a slightly heavier canvas. All of the stars and like the um, clouds at the bottom of the rainbows, they're all glitter as well, metallic glitter. Now, this is normally £7.49 for half a metre, but Hannah's price today, £4.99. Wow. So this is like a canvas fabric. You've got this metallic glitter sparkle on all the stars and the clouds all over it. It's beautiful. You could use that for the unicorn bag, couldn't you? Only $4.99. So you've got that heavier weight. So I think for a canvas fabric, $4.99, that's fantastic. Love that. That's cool. I have two more unicorn fabrics. Right, please carry on checking out for that. Now I've got two more. These aren't canvas, these are normal quilting weight cotton. So I've got this one. Oh, this is nice. It's got like kind of a mint green background. So this is your normal 44 inch width quilting weight cotton. Like a spearmint green background. It's got unicorns, balloons, and again, it's got glitter on it. So look at the stars and the balloons. It's even got ice creams and sweets. Now, uh, we're gonna do a special Hannah Drop price to 4 99 for half a meter of that. Remember, if you think, oh, I'd like more than that, I've got a unicorn bedroom that I'm doing up. Um, it will come as a whole cut piece. So maybe you think, right, I want three meters of it. It will come as a bigger cut piece if you want that. $4.99, dressmaking. Imagine a bridesmaid in that. Be amazing, wouldn't it, for the unicorn wedding? Just <laughs> fantastic. So pretty. But uh, just a little pair of pyjama bottoms would be nice. A little t-shirt. $4.99. I know that's our special Hannah price. That will only be for today. Um, now, exactly the same fabric, but in a soft lilac background. So these two, obviously, because they're the same print, they go together beautifully. So if you've got the other one, this is quite nice to go with it. Crash to four ninety nine. So that's Unicorn Fantasy on Lilac. And look, together, they go, they're, they're the same pastel tone. They go together really nicely. So if you're wanting to buy them together, you can see that's quite a nice mixture. Lovely. Only four ninety nine. Right, let's do the seam roller. Oh, this is a fab thing. So if you want to press seams open, but you can't, um, A, because you can't be bothered, because you can't bother to go and get the iron, or it's just a small um, seam, and you just want to roller it open whilst you're just sort of temporary, maybe like for FPP, you don't want to go and do the ironing. This is brilliant. Only six ninety nine. So once you've got a seam, you can use this just the pressure of your fingers will press it open if you're using something um, that will melt whether it's a satin like or an acetate or or whether it's um, like ripstop or um, maybe you're using PU or vinyl all of those sort of things that could melt then this is ideal because it's enough a lot of people use them in um, leather work it's enough to be able to open it um fpp a lot of people who do fpp use it i know because jenny jackson always uses them rather than going to the iron and pressing over you only want to be able to press the seam open or over to one side just a little, just enough to hold it for when you're then going to sew it's perfect for that i mean it's what i love about it it is a fantastic price really inexpensive but it really does the job $6.99. I know, I mean, and you look at it and you think, well, what is that? Because it's just, just plastic. But it does mean that you can just press seams open all to one side, just enough so that you can then sew it, or for fabrics that you can't press, that just won't take it. And you think, well, I don't know how I'm going to press these open, but it's the, the rolling effect. You just put your finger on there, give a little bit of pressure, 
press the seam open. Perfecto. These are cool. Magnet fab. These are really good. Well, they're good for lots, lots of different purposes, but often used. <laughs> they're very strong, so I want to show you them, but I can't get them out because they're sticking together. So what you? There was three of them, and they come in two parts. <laughs> they are very secure. So if you're doing EPP and you want to hold, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you want, I'm going to separate them because they stick together. If you... <laughs> that really made me jump. <laughs> right, you sit there and you sit there. Don't speak to each other. It's like being in class. Um, so maybe you have got fabric and a hexy shape and you want to hold them together really securely whilst... Let me get a bit of fabric. Whilst you're... Um, putting your while well, you're either gluing your shape together or you want to use something that's re a really permanent fix somewhere where you want to hold fabrics together or card and you need something really strong so I've got some fabric and I've got some card here so you take the top of the magnet and you put that on and that's fine because it's not sticking at all is it so you can just get that in exactly the right place you know, but maybe you've got like a really awkward seam like you've got to get right into the corner with bag making it needs to be secure. You can't use clips. You can't use pins because of the angle it's at, or you can't get right into the machine. So you need it to stay together. So look, this means you can move it around. It's not sticking at all. You then get its metal friend and you put that underneath and that's absolutely secure. Look at that. That does not move. And then all you have to do is take that off and put it somewhere else. Otherwise they will jump together because they are really strong magnets. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's quite funny actually they really jump but they're very strong but they're just one of those things obviously because they're mar magnets they won't mark anything because it's just metal and you're not they're not sticking anything they're not leaving pinholes in anything so i'm sure that you've all got lots of uses once they're joined together they're a lot more stable as well um you, you've got lots of things that you think you could use them for i mean they'd be great for like attaching things around things wouldn't they if you had to attach fabric around something to hold it in place brilliant the most amazing fridge magnets because they're really strong Oh. Um, a stick. This is one of your um, patch a patchwork ruler. You know when you just want, so it's um, acrylic, so you can use it with rotary cutters if you want, or you can just use it for, oh, I think I would use this for drawing when I want to mark seam allowances. Yeah, you'd have to be very careful with your fingers on that, but I would use this for measuring. So it's eight inches long by half an inch wide. So it's perfect for measuring something, isn't it? Because you've just got, you know when you've got to mark a seam allowance on something or you need to turn the edge of something over. So say you need to turn the edge over. I'm just going to show you this. So, you know when you get something and it says, turn the edge over by half an inch. What you have to do is measure let me just get a pen and hopefully not one that will mark well, maybe why well, can never find anything when you want to right that one will do so if you need to if you need to turn the edge over by half an inch measure an inch and this is when this is absolutely ideal because with tape measures if you're anything like me and you um, end up burning them and melting them. I always like the end, I can't use the end if I have to use a bit further in. If you use something that's more solid like this, then you're gonna get a more accurate one. So all you do, double whatever it is you need to turn it over. So I want to turn it over by half an inch, so I'm gonna mark an inch all the way along. Then, when you come to turn it over, if you turn that over to there and press it, that's now half an inch. That is the easiest most accurate way to turn a hem if you then need to turn it over another half an inch again do exactly the same thing 
So quite often with a double hem, you might turn it over by an inch and then a half an inch and then an inch. And then you can turn it again. So if you always mark double the measurement you need to turn it over, when you turn it over, it will become half of that. And that is where this comes into play because you can mark and measure. It's only those little measurements. Again, keep it in your pencil pot. Keep it with your seam ripper and your um, marking pens. Absolutely perfect. It's only 549 but it's one of those things because it's solid. Now I've got a metal ruler that I use quite a lot. The problem with the metal ruler is you always have to put your hand around it because the, when light shines on it, you can't actually see the measurements. It's the weirdest thing. So this is ideal absolutely ideal you can use, i mean it's got eighth of an inch marks on it you can use it for all sorts of things um Roshina says this patchwork rule is brilliant that's a fifo rule it is it's it's really good for doing those little measurements the eight inch patchwork rule will be a boon to my quilt in crafting northumberland you will know what you'll use yours for i would use mine for seam allowances but equally, if you just want to um, measure in patchwork, you know, maybe you've got to measure a triangle, it's got to be exactly correct. Very handy for marking lines from Diane because you can see through it as well. It's ideal. So say you've done that and then you want to join the lines up because you've got to draw a diagonal line or a straight line on something. That's so much easier, isn't it? Than if you're using, you know, I we often tend to use our rotary cutting rulers for marking lines but which is obviously off, often too big and unwieldy but this little thing here 549 i think that's fab it's often these little gadgets that make quite a difference isn't it the oh yeah the clear grip Perfect for using with quilting rollers. It stops your rollers from slipping on fabrics when cutting with the rotary cutter. So if you haven't got creative grids, so with creative grids rulers, they come with um, like little dots that are slightly raised, textured to stop your rulers slipping on the fabric. Now, if you don't have those and if you have other ones, um, or maybe you're making templates. So that template plastic we did earlier, you can buy that that you can use with rotary, cut, rotary cutters as well. Maybe you'll do that and you don't want it to slip. That's what this is used for. So it's reusable. Shall I take it out? It's just, okay. Okay, look. Always nice to, no, okay, as I'll take it out. So you stick this to the back of your ruler, but it's not sticky. It's clingy, is that a word? So it's not sticky, it's clingy. What does it remind me of? It reminds me of, you know those plastic tablecloths but very, very thin. So you can reuse it. So you stick it to the back of your rulers or attach it to the back of your rulers and then it, they won't stick, they will cling to things. Or maybe you've got patterns that keep slipping on something like if you're using like cotton lawns and silks and satins, you can use it for that. Absolutely ideal. It's, oh, that's what it is. Electrostatic, that's the proper word, not clingy. So if you want to put it on your ruler, then you just, um, you cut it a little bit smaller than your ruler and stick it on. But you can, um, you can draw designs onto it and then cut it out as well and use it because it's because it's not clingy it's electrostatic so it will cling to fabric but you could cut out quilting templates with it because it's got this um car almost cardboard back if you wanted to cut out templates from this you could draw them onto here cut round and then you'd cut it out so there we go that's what you get what's the measurement of that Hang on. It's 30, 12 and a half inches by 36 inches. So it's a yard long by 12 inches wide. 4.99. So you will know what you think you would use it for. So you might have rulers that you want that extra grip on. Or you might think, well, no, actually, that would be really useful for labelling different things or for cutting out templates with because it will cling without it sticking. Perfect. 
I mean, it is one of those products that, that you might overlook and think, well, what would I use that for? So, like, for example, I mean, even things like this little ruler that you want to not cling, because it's not a creative grid, it's, you know, it's a little ruler, it's not going to have that on it. All you have to do, you don't need to use very much. I mean, it, it says cut it a little bit smaller, but I'll just show you, it's, it's quite thick paper because you need the thickness, because it's reusable, you can keep it on here. So you cut it out and you stick it to the back of there. All of a sudden, this now, <coughs> electrostatically, you see, isn't moving. If I've got, if I take the ruler, look. I mean, there's no stickiness. It is, honestly, it's like, um, like a plastic tablecloth, but a lot thinner. It is electrostatic. So maybe you're doing bag making temp templates and you, do and you want to use them over and over again. So this ruler moving, this not, you stick that on there, not moving. The table is moving. Loads and loads of different things you can go. I think for £4.99, so it's 12 inches wide, it's a whole yard long. If you've got small templates that you find move around a lot, or if you're using pattern pieces and you're cutting out slippy fabrics, it's just something that you can um, use as templates. And it's one of those things that, you know, we, we kind of overlook because we have them and then we forget to show people exactly what they do with them. They're stayed in place now. So if I was going to put that onto a piece of fabric, Oh, we've got you multi-buying that now. I'm going to have to iron that off, aren't I? But look, you see, so if I put that onto my fabric, and now say I want it, and I've cut it to a specific shape, I could just cut along that. Then it's not going to move, it's just going to cling. But it is ideal for these plastic rulers as well. Because how, how many have we got where we've got these little rulers, or we haven't got the creative grids, or we've got older ones, and we want it to cling? But... There are other things that you can get. Let me show you the um, images on here. So look, this is, you can actually take it off as well. And it just means that your rulers won't slip. Also, it's, um, you can use it to cut out shapes, to make templates for tracing and stenciling. Obviously, you could use it for fussy cutting. So maybe you're doing EPP. Cut your hexagon shape out from this electrostatic cling. And then if you've got something, my fabric's slipping. Um, the table is slipping, not the, the electrostatic. Then if you put this on, so maybe if I'd cut out a hexagon or a square shape that was the size of the fabric, not the size of the template. Look, I can just pop that on, it'll cling to that and I can just cut round it, which is brilliant. It just means that you're not, you're not cutting too close to it. And, it. and it gives you instructions on it. And it's great because it comes with this kind of slightly waxed card. So it won't all stick together as well, that you can easily get it apart. Only four ninety nine. Um, it says also you can draw designs onto the clear grip with permanent markers, cut it out and use it as a removable sticker. So do you know what you could do? You know when you are... Um, doing quilts and you're cutting out loads and loads of different pieces you could use this for little labels because there's so much of it and just put it on there it will just cling to the fabric take it off and you can use it again 4.99 oh let's do a price comparison there we go you will be on the long river that's what i always tend to do just check just to be sure 9.98 with us, and that's the same product as well. That's not a comparable one, that is exactly the same product, 4 99 So if you've ever cut your fingers or your fabric in the wrong place because your ruler has slipped, this is ideal. I mean, even if I get a creative grids ruler, because I haven't got any non-creative grids. Now these don't, these are brilliant because they don't, you can, they can move. I mean, they are great because they've got all the dots on. But if you want to be doubly sure, if you've stuck, and not even stuck, cling that to the back, that isn't going anywhere. 
So if you ever do have problems, I mean, the, the creative grids are fab because they've got the back around the, around the edge. But particularly for rulers that don't have that, or if you are concerned about it, just the fact of putting this, and you can take it off as well. It's extra secure for you. I think four nine times worth it. Right, very very popular. Loads and loads of you. Oh, we've got a video. Like a video. Okay, so that's like one of those acrylic templates. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, right, so she's she's cut it out and then is uh, put it onto the back because not sometimes the rulers you've got, they're not like grid rulers, they're sh specific shapes like that. So, you know, when you get like well, ones like that, like the drunkard's path shapes, that is really great, isn't it? So if you've got templates like that and that you find that they do cling, this is the product for you. I've got to try and get it back on its little roll. And we've seen it on, on that Long River site, over £9 and ours is four ninety nine. And that, honestly, is exactly the same product. I don't know why they're selling it at that price because it is exactly the same product. And keep when you've got it, you know, until you've used up the whole thing, keep it... Keep it rolled up on here. I mean, it, it doesn't because it's not sticky. It won't stick to each other. Right, there are loads of you who have got this in your baskets now. And a um, lot of you multiplying. Please do check out during the break. I will be back with you in a few minutes' time with Sandy, who is going to show us how to make beautiful sheep applique wool cushion, wool cushion, cushion and wool hanging. Please do check out on this. There are loads of you who've got this in your basket, lots of you multi-buying. Once it's gone, it will be a while before we can get it back. Remember, it's 12 inches by a yard, 36, 12 by 36 inches. You've got a lot there. We've got you multi-buying. It's going quickly. I don't want you to miss out. I would stay with it so I can ask the rest of your questions, but we've got to go to break, otherwise we're going to miss out on the sheep, um, on the sheep applique. We'll leave that graphic there during the break. Um, and I will see you in a few minutes time. Keep on checking out. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from 10 pounds to 500 pounds. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call center on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day.
Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself an overlocker. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too.
Welcome back to Sewing Street. Um, congratulations to all of you who managed to um, check out on that quilter's grip. Fantastic. It's an amazing product. Um, can't believe what price we had it. It was really, really cool. So well done to all of you because we had loads and loads of you who had it in baskets. Anyway, this hour is all about the, um, I'll just, let me just pinch the sheep cushion, all about the applique sheep. This is great. I mean, obviously, this time of year it's lovely for spring it's lovely for easter it's really sweet to have as a give as a gift for somebody but it's also a really nice thing if you're doing something as a memory design so we've got instructions and we've got kits and i will go through those in a minute um, but the sheep you could use specific fabrics that you love or if you wanted to do it as a memory cushion you know how about making each sheep in like a different um, item of a child's clothing like baby grows or little dresses or something or you could use them as memory items for um, other people as well because that is beautiful isn't it so in the kit we give you enough fabric to make the cushion but obviously it's nice if you use other fabric because you only use tiny little bits for the sheep a little bit of liberty something really special if you don't want to you don't need to there is enough in your bundle but we were thinking wouldn't it be nice to put in these little bits so i'll go through the bundle so you can see for the cushion because we do have cushion and wall hanging so for this cushion um in the kit you get full instructions so everything that you need, including all the templates, full size, are in the back. Then you get two metres of fabric in total. So you get half a metre of the white fabric, half a metre of this really pretty blue print, half a metre of the blue gingham, then half a metre Liberty Wiltshire Shadows, just saying. Now, in the kit, you won't have any of the, um, the sheep face fabric because you only need such a small amount of it. But we've got a little pack for you. So what Sandy did when she made this, obviously, there's enough fabric in this kit to make the whole cushion. But what she did was she used, we've got a little fat quarter bundle for you that has a fat quarter of white, light grey and dark grey in it. And if you get this as well, you can then mix and match. So if you want to have a dark grey square, you can. If you want to use it for a grey sheep, it just gives it a little bit um, more choice. Obviously, you don't have to have that, which is why we didn't put it in. You will always need a little bit of dark fabric, but I'm sure loads of you have got a little bit of grey in your stash or black to use for the sheep's features. So $29.99. So we're going to do a little saving on that, Hannah's special saving for you, £27.99. So we'll do a little saving for you on the kit. But you've got enough fabric to do the front and the back of the cushion. So you, there's the gingham, there's the Liberty fabric, you see, and you've got more than enough fabric here. All of those fabrics, all in the kit. But if you want the extra grey fabrics, now, there are fewer than 20 of this one left and remember it should be 29.99 you're getting four half meters including one liberty and full instructions obviously as well fewer than 20 so I'm going to do the pink version next this is the one that Sandy will be demonstrating so you'll be able to see what it looks like so in this one you get half a meter of they've all got half a meter of white get half a metre of this really pretty, I don't know, is that one, I don't know, just check, it's very pretty, it's, it is Liberty, it's I'm it's thinking it must be Liberty, didn't want to say in case I double double check, half a metre of this really pretty floral Liberty fabric, it's very fresh, it's very springtime isn't it, where you've got um, roses and tulips in reds and yellows and pinks, um, half a metre of this pink floral, and then half a metre of the pink gingham. Such a fresh bundle that, isn't it? It is. Spring, springtime tree price, look at that, how fresh that is. Fresh and pink and pretty. Again, there are fewer than 20 of these. So there is enough fabric in here to do the whole cushion front and back. It's just we're offering the grey in case you want to change it up a bit and add in different coloured sheep. 
beautiful but everything you bundle need and then this one is your sort of minty green so yes right the pink one we have only got 14 of those left so if you want one then you need to get that one in your basket and checked out only 14 of the pink bundle left right let's move on to the mint green so again full instructions do, do, do. half a meter of white then you get oh, what is this one hopscotch oh that's poppy cotton that one um half a meter of poppy cotton it's got um like a tealy blue greeny blue background with daisies on and then you get another is this one poppy cotton another poppy cotton look that's pretty isn't it and then you get half a meter of the mint denim so that's your kind of your green mint gingham not denim why did you say denim weird <laughs> definitely nothing to do with denim at all gingham mint <laughs> Gingham, have full instructions with your spring. I don't know why I said denim. <laughs> don't know. Fewer than 20 of these. I think these are all so pretty. It's so difficult to decide, isn't it? Now, the Helen Newton kits that we did with the rabbits when Sandy did them earlier, they all sold out. All sold out. So before we'd even got halfway through the hour, they'd gone. So if you want to get your hands on these, I'd get these checked out. And remember, full instructions are in there. Now, remember... If you want, you can get instructions on their own. No fabric, just instructions. So if you've got your own fabric, or if you want to use your fabric stash, do a little bit of fussy cutting, use pretty sheep, half of the stock of instructions on their own have gone on pre-order. Before we even started the show, half of this stock had gone. 9 99 mm? I think then... But... To be honest, with the, the price of the fabric, it's worth getting the whole bundle because for another $17.99, you're getting all of that fabric. And you know it's going to be way, way more than enough to do it. And it is pretty. You just have to decide between blue, pink and green, really. I think I like the green the best. Mm. that's lovely isn't it that's a real spring it time, is very isn't it? spring isn't it very fresh it's fresh and it's clean and yes. it's just lovely isn't it, really it? Is sort of minty isn't mm, it fresh, beautiful isn't it? so that is the cushions and the instructions on the road now if you love the sheep and you want to make something bigger we've also got wall hanging so this is the wall hanging 16 sheep so in there you get the wall hanging creates 16 sheep. I'm just going to see what size it is when it's done. Hmm. I'll have a look at that. It doesn't say. It probably does somewhere. I've got one almost done if you want to. Okay, we'll have a look. Um, so in the bundle, you get half a metre of the mint green, half a metre of this very pale pastel pink and half a metre of the blue. 200, so, oh, and half a metre of white, I was thinking I'm missing. It's about 70 centimetres. Okay, 70 centimetres square. Centimetres, yeah. yeah, so do you want to hold yours up? Yes, yes. Yeah. So Sandy has made one, but she's mixed in several fabric collections from this. There we go. So that's the backing that's, that comes round to make a binding on it as well. So it just adds another little... I think um, we're missing a fabric side. from here, Hannah. No. Unless we've got more of one. Ah, right. That's what confused me. So you get a metre of white. I was thinking if we've got four half metres, that's two metres. No, we have a metre of white. Right. So you get a metre of white and then you get half a metre of the blue, half a metre of the pale pale pink and half a meter of the mint green yeah so I, that's one thing you get more fabric in this bundle because you get extra half a meter and you get the instructions and you're going to match, match the price well now there's enough fabric to make the whole wall hang in here obviously if you want to do your sheep in different patterns and prints and colors um, entirely up to you because I mean Sandy did but they the sheep are little 
So you could eat, use the kit as the basis for it to do all the squares and all those really pretty pastel covers. This could be, um, this could be a cock quilt, wall hanging. This could be used, you know, as a little play mat. Play mat, there's the sheep. Just a little spring quilt, you know, that you just put across a table or just, you know, in the entrance to your home. There's the sheep. So the, the templates aren't very big. So what you can do is choose some of the fabrics from your stash. You know, they're only little pieces and use that for the sheep. We've given you more than enough fabric. You can make all the squares. So at $27.99, that's a really good price. And it gives you the opportunity to personalise it. Quarter of the stock has gone when everyone's checked out. It gives you the opportunity to personalise it using your favourite fabrics or again as a memory quilt using someone else's favourite fabrics or clothes that remind you of somebody or something and a beautiful gift for them as well. And it's the sort of thing, once you've got the pattern as well, if you want to make a bigger one, you've got the pattern there. So say you think, well actually I really like that but I'd like to make a single bed one, just make more sheep. And you've got the fabric to get you started. So we're giving you more fabric and we've matched the price. It's a win-win. So that's the, the sheep quilt pattern. Now, if you don't want the fabrics and you just want the pattern, we do have some of those at 9 99 if you only want the pattern. So please do check out on that. Right, cushion. So where do we start with it then? Just four squares. Okay. So you cut out the four squares. Again, Helen Newton's patterns are so easy to follow. Right. And, and like you were saying with the quilt, it would be so easy to just add some more squares on. Yes, if you want to make, make it, it bigger. Yes. And if you wanted the cushion a bit bigger, you could always add another couple of squares on this and make it a larger cushion as well if you wanted. Right. So I've just cut out the four squares and I used the, the pack that you had of the three colours there and then just chose one of the extra oh, okay. gingham as well. So you've got sort of like plain ones so you can put your fancy okay, sheep on Okay, so it. if you want to buy the um, the special... So the pink, the pink bundle, which is the one that Sandy's doing, just so you understand the different colours, in that you get the instructions and you get half a metre of these three, four fabrics, because you get the white as well, all of those. But if you want to make that go even further, um, maybe you want to make a couple of cushions and maybe you haven't got any dark grey for the sheep's face, then we've put together a special fat quarter and, it, and you can see from Sandy's cushion that it goes beautifully with the fabrics. So in here, you've got three fat quarters, one dark grey, which is perfect for sheep's faces, one light grey, which you could use if you wanted to make a grey sheep, or you can use it um, as one of the background squares, and you've got a fat quarter of white as well. So it's kind of, yes, it's the sheep fat quarter pack. So you can use it to make your cushion go kit go further, but also if you want to do what Sandy has done here, where she has put, you know, some, because it actually, the sheep look lovely on this colour. Or if you, you know, you want to put a light grey, it just makes your fabric go further. And particularly if you don't have any sheep. So if you want the sheep fat quarter pack, it's there. And okay, I, right. And I think so Helen says to use the white for the back of it, but there's enough material to use. I've used the gingham on the back as well. Oh, okay. So you've got plenty of material in there. And the sheep are only about nearly three, I mean, inches, but about just over two and a half inches. So if you had a little charm pack, you could make some lovely little sheep. Yeah, that if you wanted yeah. some extra to go in there or you've, as we were saying on the previous show if you've got extra little bits of material left over that uh, you just want to pop on there you can make okay. some lovely little sheep on it I think it'd be quite nice for almost like a little play mat for mm. a child the, the quilt. Oh I think that's a lovely idea again it's one of those gift things isn't it and you could embroider their name on one of mm. the, the plain squares if you didn't want to use all sheep so I've just sewn the two squares together I'm going to iron those now I iron my seams flat. Should I pull this over a bit? Um, a bit controversial, I know, but some people do. No, I don't do think there's a right or a wrong. I think it's entirely up to you. I think sometimes when you're doing certain um, parts, like if you're not, if you're going to do chain piecings or if you're sub-cutting, you've got to press them to yes. one side because otherwise the seams come undone. But other than that, it's entirely up to you, isn't it? it? And I think because I was sort of dressmaking before I did 
quilting yes, yeah I've always sort of folded my seams out I just sort of find that they, they lie slightly flatter sometimes I think it is so honestly only if you're sub cutting you have to do it do to it, one side yes. but oh I don't know there's a whole thing about one side and it's entirely up to you I mix and match you, yes there are times when I, I will put it to the side because sometimes I think, especially if you've got lots and lots of seams and they're quite small and you're trying to open yes. them all out, then you think, this is getting silly now, I'll just sort of do it to the side. But if I can, especially like this, you've got four quite large squares, then I would tend to just And it's easier to nest them. seams if yes. they're pressed to one side, but I sometimes get to the point, I think, oh, there's too much bulk in this yeah. screw. It's all getting pressed open now. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, you sew the two squares together and then sew them, just check you've got it in the middle there. That's the only one you need to match up, really. Um, use, um, I used just a slightly smaller stitch on it. Oops, there we go. Over half of the stock of the instructions for the cushion have gone. So if you've got the instructions on their own, so if you've got them in your basket, you need to get checked out. And if you bought the Obviously bunny... Obviously, they are all in the bundles. If you bought the bunny in the previous hour, some of that Morrison, um, William Morris Oh, material yeah, that's true. That would be nice would on make the sheet. Lovely, you could fussy cut a little there, uh, William Morris. Oh, I on. think that's a lovely, I think if I did it, I would use maybe some from the kit, but then some yes. of my own as well. Yes. I thought I could cut this blouse up later on. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, bit, it would be like, nice, A little bit it? of William Morris, yes. Beautiful. I think that will go in the um, Maker Bear pile yeah. <laughs> when I'm finished with it. <laughs> there we go. So literally just do your, your four squares together. That should go on there for a second, shouldn't it? It's quite nice because it doesn't burn your mat, does it? Because it pops up. So again, it's a lovely, I did this on a Sunday afternoon and it was a lovely Sunday afternoon project to do. Oh, okay. Because it's sort of, it's quite simple to do. You can sort of spend some time looking at which sheep you want and... Yes, sort yes, of, so know, it's not going to take you ages and ages, but just a, a nice thing. So actually, that's when it becomes quite, an, if you want a quick make or a gift make. Yes, if you want to take this to somebody, say you're going in the evening for a meal or something, mm. you've got a spare cushion pad, you could make this up in an afternoon. I know, and, and it's quite lovely. a nice relaxing afternoon to do. Um, so when we do the, we put the borders on now, so we've got two smaller borders and two slightly longer borders, and Helen gives you plenty of extra room on it, so she said that's for sort of beginners, so you don't have to measure it up and it doesn't match. Oh, okay. So, so, just so when you put it on, and then I will trim it off so you want to put the top one on and the bottom one on and I think I it works really that. well with your grey squares doesn't it well I like that because I thought it made the material pop rather than having um, the flowers on the square I mean you could then use the dark you know plain mm. sheet but I thought if you got I mean the ones that I got are lovely flowers and I thought just putting it on a plane would be much nicer than, than putting it on the flowers. Well, also, you're making a two pound saving on the cushion. So to get the fat quarters, yes. it's worth getting those for five sixty nine because you're going to use those colours anyway. And um, it's funny, isn't it? Everything is really fashionable and very neutral. So I think mixing the greys with the pastels does I, work really well. I think a lot of people have got a lot of neutrals in their home mm. nowadays, haven't they? And, and I think it's lovely to add that pop of colour. And I think you can make it pop as much as you want so I mean you could put the plain white on the back if you didn't want the fancy on the back as well yeah, true. and literally the pop of it would just be the the flowers and then you've got enough material left of that to make some lovely pouchy bags with it on <laughs> drawstring yeah. bags so could, uh, yeah more <laughs> umbrella <laughs> waterproof umbrella you drawstring can bags never have enough if you were watching bags, a you wonder what you? I'm on about but <laughs> best idea I've heard today <laughs> go back and watch <laughs> When you go out, you always need an extra drawstring bag, don't you, Tim? <laughs> so the graphics on screen at the moment, um, $27.99, are for the pink bundle kit, which is the one that Sandy is currently making. So you get the, in this kit, you get the instructions and you get um, these four fabrics. This one is a Liberty. So you get Pink gingham, pink floral, liberty floral, and white. Half a metre of each, as well as full instructions. Twenty-seven ninety-nine. If you want the um, the sheep accessory bundle, that's on the side. Last few chances of that. Not many of those left. Because Sandy's mixed it in. She's used it for faces yes. and all sorts. 
And in fact, yes, yeah, so if you use the dark razor background, you just put his legs in white. I've just done on this one, yes. And you could have a black sheep. You could. Couldn't I was you? thinking about that, having the black sheep If for you the did family, a whole yes. um, quill, if you did and the wall hanging. just one black sheep in there. I made you? a yes. bird quill and they were all, um, all the birds were in liberty, but one of the birds was black because it was like the black bird. It was weird. But it was, it was quite cool. This is the blue version. Again, using the blue bundle and the sheep accessory fat quarter pack. So all I've done here is once I've put the top and bottom piece on, mm. just trimmed it up. Okay. So, so it's a very beginner friendly sort of quilt, but people I think would be very impressed if you gave them this as a present. Everyone loves a sheep. They do, don't they? Especially knitters and crocheters. Yes. We all love a sheep. Oh, yeah. Where would we be without a sheep? Well, I guess originally all yarn was wool. Wouldn't have knitting and crochet without sheep, would we? No. Although there are alpacas. And oh, I love an alpaca. <laughs> and all of those. But I bet sheep was the original one. But they were, weren't they? Yes. Especially in this country, wasn't it? I mean, that's what people made all their clothes yeah, out of, wasn't sheep. it? You'd, um, you'd have a little flock of sheep in your back garden and... Uh... Um, I'm loving the show. I'm so proud of you, Sandy. Oh. Love from Tom and Percy. <laughs> that's my stepson. Hi, oh. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and Percy's my cat. He'll be sat there watching. <laughs> Obviously the cat. Yes. 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 Tom won't be watching, but Percy the will cat. be watching. <laughs> These yes. cats are so clever, though, aren't they? Yeah, I think Percy signed on behalf of Tom. Yes, he probably would, yes. He'd be the one that said, come on, Tom, let's watch it, you know, because he loves watching Sewing Street. Yeah, I bet he does. Let's watch it, Tom, sit I'm... down. Yes. Do you really want to turn it over? <laughs> I know, yes. There's no football on, it's Monday. <laughs> you can't watch the other side. Yes, you've got to watch me. <laughs> I'm not there, so you've got to watch me on telly. Thanks for watching, Tom. <laughs> yeah, we're you. really <laughs> impressed, and we hope you've bought... Tell us which kit you've bought, Tom. That's right. Yes. Did you go for the pink one or the green one? <laughs> Going to teach and by the time Sandy gets home, she expects a full it, yes. sheep cushion. I want it all finished. And dinner. He'll cook dinner. Will he? Oh, yes, it's very good. Is he a good cook? He's a chef. Is he? Yes. Really? Yep. Yeah. So he'll be cooking lovely tea for us Will tonight. he? What are you going to have? Um, we're having lasagna, salad and chips. Oh, yes. And he did a lovely... I could well eat lasagna, oh. salad and chips. And he did a lovely beef and orange stew last night. Did he? Tea. I love it when he stays with us. I keep saying, do you want to stay a bit longer? Yeah, that's that's like the perfect house guest. Isn't it just? Is it? Oh, yeah. Especially I've been really busy this week, sort of doing lots of samples and bears and things. And I kept saying, oh, I can't do any lunch. It's all right, I'll do you lunch. So he's been doing lunch for me. So he's been there. Uh, I said, he can stay any time. <laughs> yes, that, he's, a, he's the perfect house guest. So yeah, you come around my house, yeah. Tom. I quite like the idea of lasagna and chips, to be fair. And I bet oh. it's really good lasagna. Yes. So we can just drive home knowing that we've got a lovely tea waiting for us. Oh. Because normally we'd have to make it when we get home, so uh, it'll be really nice to have it when we get home. That really will. So, oops. We'd, how are we doing for time? We'd, okay, do you want me to put the other border on before I do any of the sheet? Uh, no, or let's go, she let's go, go sheet. sheet to start right. with. We so can always do I'll second trim, border. Right. I'm just going to trim this bit off. So really you should put the second border on. But we can it do that. Let's really let's matter. I just in case anyway, we run got, out of time, right. you can go. do the other border after. So we've got the border, and then, and again, you can do any colour of the border you want. This is just the one that I chose. I thought the flowery, the more flowered one next to the plain would be quite yeah, nice. Yeah. So um, it's purely. But that's the good thing when you get the same amount of fabric is that you can choose. Yes, it's not. Oh, we've only got so mm. much of this, so you've got to do that border. You can't. You can choose whichever one you want and which one you want to put on the back. So it's lovely. Right now with the sheep, I've got. Um, here we go. So I just photocopied one of the patterns out from uh, the pattern for the sheep, and then that should be all right on there. Shouldn't it? Will it be all right on there? Uh, yes. Yeah? It just might slide. <laughs> <laughs> it goes sliding off. Might slide off over the end of the table. So we need to get some bonder web. And you said before you got that lovely big roll, haven't you? So if you want lots and lots so of So this is the five metre roll. Lots of sheep. I've just got the smaller roll. I feel very yes. very envious now. I've this is the up. five metre roll that we've got. Twenty three ninety nine, so it's thirty centimetres wide. It's five metres long, you know, which is great. It's still plenty. It is it still, still plenty. Gives you lots to do. But right. we have bigger. We have more. 
Right, so we'll you do that first. I just cut a small piece of bond web out. You could cut a piece to fit here, but if you do do a bigger bit, just sort of move it round. You don't right. need to fit it yeah. all over the place. And then you've got two sides to your bond web. So you've got your plain side and then you've got your gluey side. So you want to put it down gluey side. And as we said before, um, Helen does the lines really bold, so you don't need a light box yes, for them or anything like that. Through. Then you need, um, I use a Sharpie pen, you can use a permanent pen, don't use a heat erasable pen. No, because or a pencil. When you iron it on, you'll completely erase it. So just go round your pattern and you're drawing on the flat side, the smooth side of the bonder web, not on the gluey side. You want to... And I think the permanent pen's quite good. Um, now, she's done two lots of sheet. One is sort of standing face on and one is sideways. Oh, OK, yes. So you can choose how many of whichever one you want. Yes, yeah, so she's done three side and one, and one front. Face and on. you've done two for Yeah, so you can choose. That's quite so nice, isn't it? you can choose exactly it? which ones you want. So once you've done that, get a small piece of, of your material. I'm going to use... Um, I've got some of this. Now we can put it on, I'll give it a little bit of an iron. And you want to put it face down. Whoops, <laughs> mats. So these are great, these um, applique mats. Then you want to put it glue down. Fusing mat, the Millwood the fusing back. mat. Comes in this box. So you can iron straight onto these yes. fusing mats. Now I think if anybody saw me last time, I did it the wrong way and poor Stuart spent hours picking <laughs> off the bottom <laughs> of glue on, on my uh, huh. mat. So, because I had the wool mat, it did come off in the end, bless him. But these are great. So, if you're doing a lot of applique, they're just a must to have, really. So, you put the fabric between? You, you, yes. You can put the fabric in between those, can't you? And then you can iron on. And then so nothing gets stuck nothing to anything. Nothing comes onto it at all. So, you can iron on either So, with of the them. mat, you get the mat, yes. the rubbery so bit, and the... S and then this one. So, don't... So I think some people just peel that off and think it's just like a backing sheet. Don't throw right. that away. That means you can, can press on both sides. Yes. And you could also make... for sort of This isn't as complicated, this particular pattern. But if you had some that... Um, say you wanted to put the legs on it as well, you could then glue it all together and the glue won't right. come off because of the material this is made from. So you can lay it all so down on the bottom mat. Layer it all up and then move it right, over to okay. your sheep. So they're brilliant to have, absolutely brilliant. So, and also on this one, because you're going to be taking this bit off, if you do a lot of the sheep, because I sort of cut out three or four at the same time, especially for the uh, quilt, you do 16 mm. of them, so you're cutting a few out. So I just put like a little arrow, so I knew that was the sheep that went this way instead of the sheep that went upwards. Oh, uh, OK. So just so that I knew which was, because you're taking that off anyway. Then you can cut it out, so I'm just going to quickly cut it out. So always, I mean, you do lose a little bit of bond web and a bit of material, but you can do it a little bit closer, but you don't lose an awful lot. Oops. And so again, you can just have an evening where you draw all the sheep on and then cut out some little bits of material that you want. And like I say, you can use the fabrics that are in the kit or oh. if you've just bought yes. the instructions, just have a little look at your stash. Choose some favourite fabrics or some fabrics that remind you of something. I love the fact that you can make it into a memory one. Memory sheep quilt. It would be lovely, wouldn't it? Well, well, if you wanted to make, you know, I know a lot of people think, well, I'd like to make a memory quilt using squares of my favourite, but you might not have enough. No. So you could make even like a double bed size quilt, couldn't you? Oh, yes. Because literally, because of the measurements, you just measure across the top of however many squares you've got mm. and then just make it that bit bigger so you've got plenty of the material to go across and then, and then border it, which is fine. So I've done this. So this is one of my sheep. Then with a pin, I just scratch the back of it a little bit. And then you can just peel it off. And it comes off really easily as well. And if you make them the day before, say you've done your quilt and you say, oh, I'll make all the sheep and then you don't have time to do it. Make sure you put them either in a book or do them flat because they do curl up. They're a bit like, you know, those Chinese fish when you put them oh, in your yes, hands yes. and they curl up. And the bonder web does the same thing. So I'd sort of um, drawn these out the night before. So I put them in a, a plastic bag and put them flat in between. Oh, the, OK. The I never so knew that. I've stay. never left them, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so if you leave them, some, I've done that before, sort of done them mm. to come in and you find they're all curled up in the morning. So if you if you make them, f you know, sort of put them flat oh, in between okay. something. So I'm going to put this one on. Although if you had your um, fusing mat, you could just press them. Yes. 
Yes. Because that's the good thing is yeah. that with Bond web you can't press it onto anything otherwise it sticks except for onto yeah. the fuser mount. You just need to put that here. Now you need to put your little legs on as well. So I've got some little legs here as well. So you want to put the legs just underneath the sheep. So again you can cut a lot of little legs out. I just sort of roughly from this, if you should see from the side, I'd cut some out and then I had some bits of bonder web that were plain at the side. So I just cut the little squares oh, okay. out for the, for the feet so you don't waste anything like that. Now with the ones that are going sideways, you put the little legs just a little bit further apart. And um, if it was going face on, you'd put them closer together. Right. So it just sort of, but again, you can put the head in any way you want it any direction yeah so you can have it like thinking yeah with its head or on one side they can all be looking at each other because that's what sheep do and they think yes they head on one side and go hmm. or they could all be following each other because sheep yeah, tend to follow each do. other don't they and then they think should i escape from this field yes. yeah why not so i'm going to iron that one on so again i'm just going to iron it straight on there there we go and then there should be some, I've got some little faces here, but I can draw another face out as well. So if I get some more Bond web, and I'm just going to draw a little face as well. Now these are, they look a little bit more complicated, but they're not. So when you do the ears, just make sure instead of them joining, just make sure they don't quite join. So I'm, can you see there? So um, she's drawn it sort of like a crossover. So I've just drawn it so there's a little bit of a gap so that when you do your Bond web, they're it's one piece. To, you're not going to cut out the yes, ears. Yes, you want instead. the ears joined to the head. Yes. So you can just see there, and they look just as good. So I'm going to move I mean, this. to be honest, they are in real life, aren't they? Yes. The ears are not separate to the head. No. There we go. No. Otherwise, they'd be deaf. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could make the ears separate and then put the ears on afterwards as well if you wanted, but. True. You, but I think that'd it's be just, really fiddly, it wouldn't it? It would be very fiddly. So literally just go quite close up to it and then just and again they don't all have to be the same so you don't necessarily want them to look all the same i think helen's just given you them as a yeah as and a, i think that's good idea, so if you just is, don't make too much effort and if it goes a bit skewy then because i'm useless at drawing I'm oh not, god I'm so not, oh. so am i do you know i couldn't draw the sheep shape do you know i don't know if i could i actually couldn't it would and i would and i try and copy it <laughs> yes and i'd go Oh, no, they're not curvy. I couldn't draw that shape. Isn't shape. it funny? I can do abstract things and I love making yes, things. But when yeah. it comes to Can't drawing, draw. I look, mine are terrible. Looks like a When I, we do designs for Amber Makes and I send things to Amy, I have to label them with things like flower. <laughs> so I'll send her a sketch because it's the only way I can sometimes. <laughs> yeah. if, if that's the, that's obviously last resort if I have yes. to. And, and I have to label them. Otherwise, you have no idea. What I, just, I can't draw a heart. I did interior design. Did you? Um, at college and uh, I did City and Gills in interior design and it was so frustrating because I knew exactly what I wanted mm. but I had to find pictures of things sofa and I thought I want a fancy sofa Tr me trying to draw a sofa was sort of yes and I have the was, same problem so I know what I want this is it I know but exactly I what I want I cannot draw it yes at all I honestly could not draw that sheep isn't it frustrating? It is so, very frustrating. So, you know, when you sort of draw it out, it doesn't have to look exactly the same. You can sort of just yeah, draw it. Mine would look. It looked look, vague. But, the, but mine would. <laughs> I would trace same, it yeah. oh, completely. I'd even oh, trace those is. legs. Now then, um, you Helen... You could put feet on them, though. I think I'd put big feet, like you, clown yeah, shoes. Could, like little so, um, um, clouds yes. almost, couldn't you, feet on them? Look really funny. Okay, and then you could put almost like little eyes on them as well, so you could embroider oh, little yeah. eyes on them if you wanted, couldn't you? Sequins. Little beads. <laughs> <laughs> We're going into the realm of Flower in the mouth. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's getting, right, no, yes. it's going too much now. See, so, I mean, it's... Yeah. I love patterns like this, that you can really mm. make your own. Whenever I do a pattern, I want it so that everybody can make it just how they want it. It's mm. not everybody's comes out exactly no, it the same. Beats, but so if you want a big cushion or a big quilt or a small one, you yes. can do that. If you wanted these squares bigger, just make the squares oh, yeah, true. bigger. You, you know. could then make the sheep bigger. Clearly, on yes. a enlarge it, unless you could draw. Unless a you sheep. could draw them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Do you know offhand what the satin stitch is on this particular machine? Um, no. No. Okay. I no. think I had it because I tend to write things down. Yes, I'm going to recap the bundles when you right, find okay, it. Right, okay, I'll find no, it. No, I know what the then... bundle stitches on mine is forty-four, but it might well, not be. Well, I know be exactly what one. it is on mine as well, but. Um, um, 
Right, so the pink bundle that Hel um, Helen, even Helen designed and Sandy is making. <laughs> that was a nice save, wasn't it? You get instructions. There we go. And you get half a metre of white. You get half a metre of Liberty. Liberty. Liberty with flowers. Got it. You get half a metre of this really pretty pink floral. And then you get half a metre of gingham. And as you can see from Sandy's, these fabrics go beautifully together. In fact, I'll lay them down for you to see. Full instructions, but they are pretty, pretty, pretty together, aren't they? And saving should have been $29.99, but it's $27.99. And there is enough fabric in there to make the whole cushion front and back and some left over. And if you use your own fabric, you'll have even more. Yes. You could easily make if a couple. If you want some grey fabrics, because Sandy's mixed loads in with those, so if you don't have any, because we didn't put the grey fabric for the sheep's face in, because it's a tiny bit, and we're sure you must have some, but if you don't, you're making two pounds saving on your bundle anyway. So if you want to buy our special sheep accessory fat quarter, which is just called white, light grey and dark grey, but they meant sheep accessory fat quarter um, when they wrote it. If you want to buy the sheep accessory fat quarter, 5.69, three fat quarters. And this grey, because normally you'd expect them to put a black in, but the, this dark charcoal grey is a little bit softer, a bit more realistic as, as well, as far as the sheep goes. You can use makes your kit go further and it means you can put some squares in with this or not but your sheep will be your sheep will be unique right if you want the blue bundle which is the bundle the kit used to make this cushion you will get full instructions you will get i'll lay this down you can see it half a meter of white Half a metre of blue Liberty Wiltshire Shadows. Um, half a metre of this pretty pink blue floral. And half a metre of this lovely pink um, blue gingham. And the instructions. So that's that bundle there. Plus on the side there, there is the fat quarter bundle of the sheep accessory fat quarter um if you'd rather go green i think this is my favorite one actually yeah i do i think it is i think it's very springy i think it is yeah and i like green a bit of a, i think after yellow it might be my favorite color really? yeah i've got yellow and green on today so there we go both more like to yellow and teal maybe half a meter of white half a meter of green gingham Half a metre of poppy cotton. This is pretty, look at this. I like that. It's like monochrome um, wild flowers on a really pale, pretty mint background. Very sheep. Cheek sheep. Cheek and sheep. <laughs> cheek sheep. And, um, and then you get half a metre of this like teal background with the yellow daisies on. And obviously full instructions. That's the green version. And if you want just the instructions on their own, just to warn you, we are in single figures for these. $9.99 if you want to use your own fabrics, but we are in single figures. We are very close to selling out. And once that's done, you will only be able to get the instructions in the kits. Now, we have one bundle for the wall hanging, which has got weirdly, I think Hannah's lost a calculator, um, has got more fabric, half a metre more, because you get a metre of white, which I've now worked out, um, to make the wall hanging quilt. So you've got enough fabric here to make it, which did you say 70 centimetres? I think it's, and the white is for the backing that comes over and okay. binds it as well. So it's a 70 centimetre square wall hanging. You've enough fabric to do this, but obviously you can make it bigger. You can use your own fabric as well. But it's the same price, which is weird. So you get half a metre extra, so because you're getting a metre of white. And then you get this beautiful, these are ice cream colours. Ice cream green, ice cream blue, and ice cream pink. But, but if you've got special fabric and you want to make a memory sheep quilt, even like a full single bed size quilt, these are great base fabrics to start off with. 
But all you could do for the for this quilt, there's enough fabric to do the whole thing. You will need a bit of dark grey for those sheep's faces and legs. But other than that, there is enough fabric to make the whole thing, including all the applique sheep as well. If you had a bit of black felt in, you could always use the black felt. Do you yeah, know, you could, yes. Yeah. Something like that. But it's nice, isn't it, to just pop, I'm sure, yes. you could make it all of this, but I'm sure you will have some prints at home. And these pastel shades, I love that pink, it's so pretty, isn't it? Um, you could. You could have every sheep, could be one of your favourite quilt fabrics, couldn't it? Could be um, curtains you've made in the past. If you make a quilt, you've often got a little bit left over. Always. So you could say, that was the first quilt I made, yes, that was the yes. second, that was a quilt I gave to somebody. And mm. you could always even put a little date in the corner of it when you made you could. that quilt. Or you'd like, like if you were in a sewing group, you could get everyone to make, make a sheep. It. Yes, and then put their name And on then it you or could something. join it together, and then. Yes. And that's your flock. Yes. Or raffle it off for charity. Lovely. Yeah, it's all in there. Twenty-seven ninety-nine. And you see, what you could do is give everybody a square of this and say, go off and make me a sheep. I want your favourite fabric because actually, with the if you use the same base tonal shades, because we've used these tonal pastels in the base, it actually doesn't matter what colour your sheep is. If the base colours are the same, it doesn't matter if you've got all sorts going on with the sheep. And as you say, if somebody's sort of artistic, they could even draw their own sheep and make it a slightly different shape. Oh, as well, I wouldn't let them not that with my group. No, I'd say no. <laughs> Can you imagine? You'd have random sheep. <laughs> you'd have all sorts of random sheep. No, I'd too much oh, go oh, with dear. it. <laughs> or there'd be sheep hanging off the edges. <laughs> Massive, just some massive sheep in it. Yeah, don't ever let me run a quilt group. I'd be going, no, 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 the rules are. Or oh, I'd let them go random. I'd yeah, you would, rogue. actually. Yes. Yeah, well, I'll have to be in yeah. your group, but yes. I'm definitely not leading yeah. it. I think I'd be far too bossy. Um, so, £27.99, that's the wall hanging <laughs> kit. Or, if you want the instructions on your own, or... <laughs> it's a bit loud, wasn't it? Or... <laughs> Nine ninety nine for the instructions on their own. I, I just imagine using this and making a single bed quilt. How fab! I think, I think it'd make a lovely cot quilt. It would, wouldn't it? So fresh, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, just lovely, isn't it? Yes. And it's the sort of thing that you could talk to them afterwards and go, "That's that." I made a quilt when I was about sixteen. I had things like the curtains from my mum's office, you know, oh, all yes. bits and pieces. No, it was the fabric left over because yes. she'd made the curtains. Because I think they all evoke such memories, and I think. Yeah. I know when I give some of the bears back, people will suddenly look at it and there might only be a small bit in the ears and they'll go, oh, I remember that bit that was, you know, when yes. maybe a tie from a wedding or something yeah. like that. And, and it straight away it brings back a memory to people. Mm. So it could be a memory for anything, couldn't it? You know, sort of all the things you've made. Oh, and, it does. Um, I mean, this quilt that I made, there's, there's something that's like a, bride, a small piece of a bridesmaid dress. And I'm there. I'm there. Yes. Yes. In that itchy yeah. dress. <laughs> <laughs> With shocking hairdo, as you did in the 70s. Shocking. Um, right, where are we up to? Right. We are okay, up so to... I, so I put the sheep on and... So what, you just sat in stitch. I've just sat in stitched around it. Helen loves doing free motion. Okay. So on this one, yeah. I've done sat in stitch around the sheep. I've mm. done just a straight stitch around the legs and then I've free motioned the face on. Oh, okay. So done a little bit of So everything. it depends how much control you, you want, want. Um, really. I always find that people buy the machines and there's so many stitches on it and I always think if I've got an excuse to use a yes, different stitch, yeah. why not use I'm a different bottom, stitch? I'm blanket stitch at the moment. Everything gets blanket stitched. I love blanket stitch on it, mm. especially if you do like a quilting and you've got sort of, I mean, you could even blanket stitch down here. Yeah, this is yeah. sewn in the ditch. So once you've finished, I'll just show you quickly what okay. you do. So once you've put all your corners on or your borders on and you've sewn your sheep on however you want to sew them on, but the bonder web will lift eventually. So do make sure you do sew it down. Mm. Um, and then you want to put your fusible webbing on the back. Yes. And then I just sort of sewed in the ditch, so all the lines just sewed in the ditch. Or you could blanket oh, stitch okay. them or anything. So quite just easy to quilt then. So stick very your, your H640 or whatever. Yes. And again, however you want to do it. Mm. It's entirely up to you. So it could just be straight lines in the ditch. It could be a fancy stitch along there or a fancy yeah, stitch on, the, on the, yes. the four squares. 
and then sew in the ditch around there. So it's just something to sort of make it look a bit more padded and just give it that unctuous. Sort yeah, of, it depends um, how comfortable you feel. But also, I think it's particularly if you haven't tried maybe free motion quilting and tried, it's a small space, isn't it? It is. You're not full on quilt trial. No. And just have a little. I always sort of get a little practice sheet first. Yeah. So if you've yeah. got sort of like a bit of calico, put a couple of pieces of calico together, mm. a bit of the H640 in the middle of it, and then just have a go with it. You know. Yeah. Of, where it's your, safe. Set your machine up. I That's do that right, before yes. I use any of the like the a buttonhole stitch or the blanket stitches just to yes. get the right sizes. Well, I always do. I've always got a little bit of material. Mm. Um, I try out all the stitches because, like, especially with the satin stitch, you're not sure what sort of width you want, what length you want, and I make sure that I've got it just right. And then I always write it on the side as well. So that's how I found this one because I've done oh. it last time I was here. So I knew that it was 11 and it was a three and a 0.5. So put it on. Fantastic. And you've got it there then. So sometimes. Because you could be doing this, yeah. somebody calls you down, you have a cup of tea, friend pops around, you go back, your machine's been switched off, yeah, and you think, have no what idea. on earth was that stitch that I used? And then you could spend oh, hours okay. trying no, to do really it. Okay, that's really useful. So if you've just got all sort of um, bits of, you know, projects that I do, I always normally do just a little sample bit. So you've got Brilliant. it Brilliant. Um, 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 now we've got that photo, the photo oh, of the bear from Babs earlier Aww. she sent the message in we never saw the photo the what a palaver not technical am I you've done it you have attached it Babs see well done. see you have a little fake that Aww. is brilliant that's fantastic absolutely love them brilliant. what a palaver that is funny I'd been like that I'd be going I've oh. tried I've tried but it worked we've got them your bears are famous thank you Babs we were talking about that we at were. the end of the last yes, hour we wanted to see them yes, oh, and oh, where's the photo that's right Aww. oh that's fabulous and I hope you enjoyed making them as yeah, well yeah that's so lovely they're such a lovely memory for people uh, well thank you so much Sandy it's been lovely it's been lovely to see because it's been ages I know I know I don't know really we, nice. we worked together a lot at the beginning yes. at your beginning I know <laughs> your be, beginning <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a rages. I know. And then I'm working with you next time, I think, as well. Because I'm on a Monday. Yes, I think you are. 3rd of April. Yes, and you're going to stay and watch the Dewey Jumbo show. That's right, yes. That'll be lovely. Oh, I know. She's yes, lovely. because Sandy made Julie's bear. Yes, I did. I know. Has she brought it with her? She has. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, so got, if you want to see one of Sandy's Jimmy memory bear. bears, you'll be able to see in a minute because Sandy made it from Julie's dad's jacket. It's fab. Yes, yes. Um, we have, you know, we all know each other here. Yes. I know we get serious. Poor old Sandy. Right, so can you give me some advice about my dress lining? That's right, yes. Can you do this? Can you do that? No problem at all. Love it. Um, <laughs> so thank you. We'll see you back on the 3rd. When it's one of my patterns. Yes. Is it? Yes. So 3rd of April. 3rd of April. Right, fabulous. Yes. Um, right, so the fuser mat, that is a brilliant thing. I'll show you in, this is the box. So the point of the fuser mat is, is that the base, it comes with the base, which is a rubbery base. It's the sort of item, if you've ever bought a rubbery mat that you can cook cookies on in the oven and they just come off, it's made of that, that sort like of material. Silicone, so you yes. could cook cookies on it, yeah. should you want to. Um, and then it's got the sheet on top of it. So basically the bonder web won't stick to either. So you can put your fabric and your bonder web or interface in between it. So say you were interfacing a collar and you wanted, wanted to, didn't want to cut the interfacing out, but you want it to stick to the fabric, you want the interfacing to be bigger. Because you sandwich it between the two, it's brilliant for applique, it's brilliant for pressing interfacing onto fabric, because it won't stick to either. Once it's peeled off, it will then stick to fabric when you want it to. It's magic, it's only magic. Worth having if you ever do anything like that. Please do check out on your sheet, whether it's instructions only, whether it's kits, whether it's wall hanging, or whether it's cushions. Um, I will be back in a few minutes. Time for Yarn Lane, where it is. Um, where it is, how to use your stash. Now, I'd like to say this is a small part of my stash <laughs> because, you know, we're you all very proud of our stashes. <laughs> yeah. And this is a small part of it. Julie and I are going to show you how to use your stash. Because how on earth do you mix together all of these different yarns you have? It doesn't matter whether you knit or whether you crochet. We have got both. I'm going to show you how to crochet. And we've got a brand new tool. This is great. I feel like I'm conducting. Um, <laughs> I want to point at everyone. I should have been a teacher. Um, we're going to show you how to use the new tool and also how you combine the different yarns together that you can crochet into anything. Anyway, don't go anywhere. I'll see you in a few minutes' time. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? 
you can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself an overlocker. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. 
Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favorite demos over and over again. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. What I'm doing here. And welcome to your lane. <laughs> that was quick, wasn't it? Your lane. Um, as I have been promising you all morning, if you with been me, um, we are going to show you, Julie and I, how to stash, bust your stash. Is yeah. that an expression? Bust your of yarn. <laughs> and we never do that in, in knitting and crochet because how do you? But now I've worked it out. The penny's dropped. It's fantastic. So well done to all of you who have checked out because I don't want um, any one of you to miss out. This is fantastic. But I'm going to start with going through all the products, otherwise we'll forget. So we're going to go through all of those at the beginning and then we're going to show you how to do it. Anyway, as, as Hannah says, you'll just start talking and you'll just forget. Yes. She yes. just said, I'll, I'll forget. Together, we'll so forget don't talk anything. to Julie until you've done it all. So I'm not talking don't to you. Talk to me don't now. talk to me because we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> right, Hannah. So we're going to start off with the needles, which make beautiful ornaments. Look at this. 60 centimetres long. 25 mils wide diameter, handmade by Julie in a shed, all come in a beautiful box. Now, these are used for knitting. You use up your stash. This is the point. So, you know, in fabric, you cut all your fabric, you've got loads of bits left, it's fine. You patchwork it all together. What on earth do you do with all that yarn? This is what you do with it. We will show you. You get two, by the way, in the box. They come all beautifully packaged as well. When they're not in use, look at them. You can use them as ornaments. You can use them to hang quilts. I love that idea. You imagine if you had a macrame. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm to talk. I'm to talk. <laughs> Um, macrame wall hanging would be lovely, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, it would, yeah. yeah. All handmade from. Um, Reclaimed. Well, yeah, reclaimed yeah. wood, really. Yeah. Pallets and stuff. Yeah, all sorts of things going Yeah, brooms there. and B&Q. <laughs> well, it used to be. It used to yeah. be, but not it's anymore. It's expensive now. They're gorgeous, though, aren't they? <laughs> At, I mean, for £22. They are made by Julie in her shed for only £22. Work and they are beautiful. Egg. Hmm? Workshop, Beck. Sorry, not I'm a sorry, shed. it's not a shed, it's a workshop. <laughs> they are handmade by Julie in her workshop. <laughs> These are large knitting. We've also got short knitting for people who um, aren't going to knit big lengths. Not people who are short. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> you can say that because we're both fat. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm allowed. I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> no, these are for people who are knitting like scarves, you know, for short things or cowls, that sort of thing. So, because you obviously, it's the same as normal knitting, isn't it? You know, you can get like 25 centimetres needles, you can get 35 centimetres. So, these are the short ones. Again, use up your stash. Very nice for hanging wall hangings. Uh, 12 pounds, 12 pounds. And that's for both of them. Handmade in Julie's workshop, 12 pounds. And they all come in this lovely box because you don't want them to get ruined. Nice gift for Mother's Day. Look, let me show oh, you. Oh yes, perfect. Much easier to wrap. Great gift for newbies as well. Gift for, gift for kids, teenagers. They get yeah, into I've it. Yeah, a few children mm. using them. Yeah. And if you've bought things from Sewing Street, still the same PMP. Don't worry. So if you've bought something already from Sewing Street, you've paid your PMP. Um, once the, your basket closes at midnight, still the same PMP. Although this is Yarn Lane, it's the same thing. Um, right now we're going to do the crochet hook. Yeah. Now. I got one of these in the post last week. How excited was I? I said to Julie, here's my address. Don't send it via this place. I'll never see it. They'll pinch it. So I have got my very own now. Look at it. Now, half of the stock has gone on pre-order. They are only £12.99. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous because that is so inexpensive. I'm not allowed to say cheap. So inexpensive. <laughs> not allowed to say cheap. Uh, yeah. Very inexpensive. Or was it value for money? I think it's very... Now, we are more limited on this because loads of you bought them on pre-order. I'm going to show you in a moment how you crochet with them because I've worked it out now. I mean, do you know what? It's pretty much the same as how you crochet with another one. There's just a, a couple of things I found while I was doing it, how to do it. But aren't they beautiful? 
beautiful again nice ornament um and then tunisian long tunisian so those of you who know about tunisian because obviously it's half a crochet it's half a knitting needle basically it's a crochet with a knob on the end but um for anyone who does tunisian crochet we've got a long one that confuses people i bet people look at that and go what is that yeah, they do all the time they'll yeah. say well, what do you do with that what yeah. do you do? What do you do with I that? I have all of Julie's knitting needles and crochet hooks. Amazing quality products. I'm now obsessed with jumbo knitting from Susan Essex. There you go. Oh, thank you, Susan. It is fab, though, isn't it? It is fab. Yeah, honestly, once the penny drops and you go, wow, that's amazing. We'll time, we can demo. demo. Yeah, you need this, especially when you have a go at it. Um, right, this is short Tunisian crochet hook. Fourteen ninety nine, all made by Julie in her workshop. Fourteen ninety nine. Um, penultimately, these are cool. Oh, they're stitch markers. These are lovely, and you get two in a pack. Yes, you do. Yes. Gorgeous. We'll talk about what they are and what you do with them. Four ninety nine. They come on one of these. Um, lobster claspy things and you get two because if you've got bigger needles you need bigger, bigger stitch, stitch markers, markers yeah. they're not going to fit now these are previously sold out because obviously they're not those little stitch markers you buy are not going to fit well, they do but these do and you may need them there we go um if you need them for crochet let me just say what you'll have to do is attach it to there all right because you can't thread it on right so with knitting you thread it on oh, and you right. move you can't do that with crochet but that's absolutely fine because you can attach it using the lobster class that comes with it so then you attach it to your right. crochet I see right because that's something with knitting you put it between the stitches you do. yes that yes. doesn't happen with crochet but no. no they're perfect with crochet you get lots of stitch markers that have a little lobster clasp oh attached right, to them loads right. of them so what i would do if i was using them for that i would put the um key ring bit i'm just going to adapt it for you you put it through like oh, that no, it's worth knowing because I'm, I'm not a crochet <laughs> like really. that then when you get your crochet if you want to because you mark with crochet you mark the crochet right. not the hook not the hook and with knitting you tend to mark the needle, needle. don't you yes yeah. yes so all you can do then so once you've got your thing is you just say if i wanted to mark that stitch i'll just attach that around there and then when you get to there you know that's where oh, you've marked right, I'm with you. it's right. kind of the other way because yeah. if you mark the hook it'll fall off it'll fall off won't yeah. it because you're going down to one yeah yeah so you can use them for crochet yeah. but you just need to attach them that way around there we go so those are those and then the final this is brand new this is I, we're going to finish with this one because so because julie's going to explain what it's for mm. so this is a stick with a hole in yeah that's what we call it it's the stick with the hole <laughs> <laughs> i know it says don't call it a stick with a hole and I don't, well, what else can i call it no it is it's a yarn winder yarn gauge so i want to know winder. what do we do with the yarn right. winder right Am I allowed to come and talk to you now? Yes. Well, first of all, I need to show you how, what I get asked all the time is, how do you know how thick yes, the combining yarns? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So the whole point of this is that we're going to use up our stash. So yes. you've brought some of yours with so you. So I've brought some of mine with me. And you can see they're all different types. And I brought some of mine. So what I would do is... So we've got... Oh, this is nice. Yeah, that's this nice. This has now isn't got it? a bit of a yarn stash envy. This is like a chenille. Yeah, so obviously you can see right. Half of it? the stock of the wind has gone, by the way. So we've got a bit of Let's start really with that and I'll thick. show you. What you probably can do is because these are 25 millimeter, everything's 25 millimeter, you probably won't need to put any more yarn together for this. But what how you find out is you just put it in the hole. I really should get a pokey tool, or a pen or something. I'll get you a pokey tool because I've seen one over here. I'll have to invent a pokey tool. <laughs> ah. Would you like that one? No, that'll be all right. Or that one? This one's fine, thank you. Loads and loads of you are coming through for the yarn so, thingy. We so. have got now, and you can see now, we've got that in there. 
Right. Now what I look, I do is I look down if I can see any any light at the other side. Yeah. Then I know I've got put some more yarn in. But okay. you can't see any light. So that'll probably you could probably just use that on its own. But if you wanted to Right, so say we were gonna do like this double knit then. Yeah, I mean if you wanted to So take that one take out that and put out. that one in. Let's put this one in. And this is where you start mixing. So this really is the only way you can mix double knit. Aran, chunky, super Ooh. chunky, four ply, lace weight, acrylic, wool, Anything. cotton. Yeah. T shirt, yarn, I've got some of that there. Um, anything. So you just poke it through. I just poke it through, yeah. I mean, you could put it through a needle. Well, you could, yeah. If you wanted to. So I'm just wondering if we can see it. So oh, okay. Now you can oh, see yeah. there's a lot of room there, isn't there? A lot there? of light. A lot of light. So just keep putting more in until we fill it. So you could use all the same colour, but to be honest, well, I got, I thought I'm going to use all the same colour, but then I had to, I'd have to cut the ball. So I just had all of my balls on the floor yeah. and just put them all together until it felt right. Yeah, because we sort but of I used to handle guess. yarn, aren't we? And, you get to know, I, that's what people say to me all the time, how do you know, how do you know, and I said, I just know. You just know, yeah, that's, obviously yeah. people, not everyone does just know. Um, so, again, we can see we can get some more in. Yeah. So, let's keep going. And you can choose what colours you put together, but, you know, maybe you want to just knit a really, or crochet, beautiful blanket. You could use any colours. Maybe you're doing it for charity. Maybe you've got all of this yarn. Why yeah. not do it? Or sometimes, I mean, you've done, you've, Everybody at knits or crochets has a stash, don't they? Yeah. And, and they also the say, I don't things. know what to make. Well, make some blankets. Yeah, make some blankets. Because that one, this one behind mm. me, look how many different colours is in I that. I know, look at this. That's a bed runner I've made. I mean, that's gorgeous, isn't it? You give it to homeless people. Well, I might do, yeah. you? Yeah. Well, not this one, because this is yours. I don't but... really go out at night, though, much. <laughs> 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 to find homeless people. <laughs> around in the daytime well, as well. well you could go and give them to a charity or a shelter I couldn't you yes i would but yes. that's what if you gave them to a homeless shelter you know because often you know we've all got this yarn and we don't always know what to do with it you could i mean look at how thick that is that's just garter stitch as well as yeah it? it's just garter stitch yeah yeah and you've used up loads and loads of yarn in there so you could give them yeah. to a charity you and don't all, actually and have to go and find a homeless person no no trust me to say that just, that's a typical uh, thing I would say. Right, as we can see right, now, yes, we so can hardly see any light coming through now, can we? Can the camera get that? But just think of what oh. you can do with it. So that's about right now. That's about right now. You get, probably get one I mean, you might get through. another one. Oh, look, we can get some really, or we can get some fine. Well, you could then go, right, well, I'm going to put a bit, of, a bit fluffier. A bit of cotton in or... Yeah. Yes, you could put that in as well. So I just double it in half and then right, push it through. Right, there are fewer than 20 of these um, yarn gauge slash winders I know, I ought to think of a jazzy name, didn't I? Anybody got any ideas yeah, for a good name? Yeah, what should we call it? Because I can't, we just practically mm. what it does. So right, so we've got all those now. So we've got, I mean, if we've got one, two, three, four, Five, six, well, the good thing is, is after a while you will in. work it out. But this does two things. It does. It's not just yeah. a yarn gauge. When my husband's helped me uh, invent this as well. But I were, in, I were in bed one morning and I were like, oh my God, I had this idea. I <laughs> shot out of bedroom, running downstairs. I said, look, we can do this, we can do this. And then between us, first of all, he went, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> and then we kept going and getting and I said, look, this, this is what we can do, this is what we can do. So there is a name for a yarn winding stick and it's um, a Swedish sounding oh, name and I can't remember yeah. what it is. Yeah, no, I have seen I'm them. A oh, it's a funny word, isn't it? Here. Oh, yes, oh it's is a, it French? Is it French? I don't know, it's a funny snickle or something like Could you Google that for yeah. me, Hannah? And I knew it this morning and it's, it's gone out of my head. It's called a yarn winding stick and it's slightly pointed. Yeah. yeah. If anyone knows, can you message us in the special name for I have these moments a lot. Right. right. Someone will message us in. So it's coming through oh. like this. Yes, it's called a Nostapin. That's it. That's a Nostapin. A Nostapin. Thank you. It is Swedish, not French. Thank you, Kat. Right. So it's called a Nostapin, yeah. And some mm. have little notches in the top. Some yes. have different ways of doing it. But basically, I wanted it to be two things, this. So obviously, this yes. is how we know yeah. now. So what I do now is... I'm going to bring this over the top. Let me just get my balls together to start with. So we've got, which ones are we using? And that, that's one in top. 
Right, it's more I've got them. I've got them. It's like taking five puppies for a walk. <laughs> Look, yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> so, so let's start. So we go there. So what I do is I took it over the top and bring it down this way. The strands that are poking out of the hole. Let's move. We move them to just to one side, like this. Just hold that there with your like your pinky or or one of your fingers. So this comes over the top. It's not really precise, so don't mm. worry about it. I'm just trying to do it so you can see. And then start to wind and just wind a couple to start with, just as you normally would. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna like go diagonally. So I put a finger there like this and then I go, hold one down here right. and you go across. Right, you can watch this back on YouTube like otherwise. This. Oh, okay, so and we're just not keep, just winding round and no, round and round. we're going to just keep winding but on a diagonal, just keep your hand and then keep turning, turn your pin. So why is that then? Wind. Because this is now going to give you one of those um, oh, I've got cakes, one. Yeah. like they call it a cake, like that's that. it. Yeah. It's going to make one of those. I made that on my, I made that winding. on my mind winder, yeah. Right. I, I, what I didn't try was whether I'd get this amount on my winder. This is only a chunky, Right, well, thing. this, honestly, you think like, this little stick won't take it all, but it doesn't fill up down here, does yeah, it? Yeah, but it I didn't know whether my winder would, ah, would yeah. take it. So what you do is you just go across, okay. and always go across on a diagonal, and just keep turning your stick every now and then. So I do about three. Oh, okay. There's no, and then I turn And I guess it. you get like faster and faster, yeah, you don't do. you? Yeah. And then you just... I'm just trying to slow it down oh. for tell her and turn it. <laughs> yeah, could you do that a bit quicker? <laughs> no. <laughs> I bet there's a competition to do this, do you? Yeah. The fastest yarn winder. Uh, question, question. I have hundreds of metres of t-shirt yarn. Would you recommend knitting or crocheting with it? I want to try to use in something large. Either, Beverly. Either. 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 I've done both, yeah. I've done Tunisian crochet with it. As I say, you're, you're a good big crocheter, aren't you? Um, and... I've done knitting with it as well. Yeah, I, either. either. I've combined it like this, you know, with a yarn. Do you need fewer than 20 of these um, gauge winder sticks? Fewer than 20? Left. Oh, I thought you meant, do you need fewer than 20? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I one. love these large knitting needles. I have the long and the short ones, plus all the crochet hooks. It didn't take long. Um, it didn't take long to knit this large blanket, which is lovely and worn. I found that you can use the silicon spool holders from Sewing Street to keep your knitting in place when you pause. Oh, very mm. good. Oh, to put on the end. That's, put that's on amazing, the end. isn't it? Look yeah, at that. That's a good idea, isn't it? So with the t-shirt so yarn, you'd keep need winding. more than one length, wouldn't you? Um, with a t-shirt yarn, actually, if you're doing Tunisian crochet, you want it. You can do one length. You right, can one okay. Length, but because it's more compact, it's Tunisian. Right. But if you're doing knitting or crochet, I would do two, two held together. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But you'll know when you put it in the hole. This is about to sell out. Right. So I'll leave you. And I'll get back you know, in the shed now. And get some I'm going to. I shall. I'm going to talk about crochet. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna, while you wind this and then you finish, I'm like. going to show you um, some crochets. So, now I've never, I've never used it before, so this is what I started with. Now, if I did it again, I think I'd actually sew all my ends in and probably do it a bit tighter. But this was just, this was just my start. I used for this uh, two chunkies, um, and I used four. Um, double knits. So I had two chunkies, four double knits and two chunkies. All right. Depends on yeah, where, because yeah, I wanted different yeah. colours. But can you imagine if those, so that's just one granny square with only three rounds. So I could keep, kept, kept going, but I decided I wanted to try something more compact, so I stopped there. But I could just have kept going all the way around, and it was absolutely fine. And as is with crochet, whenever you start, it, it's more complex in the centre, because it's harder to see. But once you get further out, like normal crochet, and I did it in exactly the same way. Three trebles, um, one chain, three trebles, two chains, three trebles, one chain, three trebles. So exactly the same, two in the corners, one between them, nothing different. Right, we have now got fewer than 30 crochet hooks left. So when I've done that, and when I've now got the rest of my yarn stash, so obviously I'm going to carry on and do more and more and more. I then thought, um, how about half treble? 
because that would be nice. So I got, I had this, I don't know what, that's really boring, isn't it? That is super chunky. Yeah. Beige. I don't beige. even know what I bought that for. <laughs> and I've got like one ball. Um, but I had some of this. So I thought, well, what, what if I put that together? Um, and I have got quite a bit of this. Oh, I know that's because I crocheted my trousers in it, but I've only got that much left of each one. So what am I going to do with it? So, so I did that. Now I left this live so that you can see. Let me just put through. So you exactly the same way. I don't, do you know, I don't know whether I've ever demonstrated crochet on yarn. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I did. I wrap the yarn around my fingers in the same way that I do with normal crochet. Can we do um, overhead? Do you want to swap seats? Oh. oh, it's decided to stop. Oh dear. Is it working now? Right, there are fewer than 20 of these crochet hooks now. And there are only five winding sticks. <gasps> Is it stopped? Shall I move over? I'm going to move over to Julie. You might have to shift over a little bit. I will, dear. But I think, I don't think you have to shift over too much. There you go. You can have the chair. Don't you want a chair? No, no. 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 I don't know whether I can, I don't know. I could, but I'm not sure I've crocheted sat on a chair. Me, with this. Yeah, yeah, a bit. Right. Cook okay. Delicious. <laughs> yeah. it makes a lot of difference. <laughs> it does. <clears throat> so, are we there now? I'll slow down now, then we can show that. We are getting there. There we go. Right. Okay. So I wrapped, although it's a lot of yarn, I still wrapped it around my fingers in the same way. Now, normally with my crochet hook, I hold my crochet hooks like that, but you just can't with this. You, you kind of, you'll have to play with it and see, but you kind of need to hold it like that. And if you already do, that's fine. I just tend to, I hold mine like that and yeah, you can't really you can, do the same you? kind yeah. of flicking method. So you just um, wrap it round, go in the hole wrap it round now obviously when you're using more than one strand when you pull it through because I'm because I'm doing um, half treble you have to you've got to get it through two or well through you've got to you have to kind of lift them up a bit yeah you do because you? with a normal hook you just go like that you can't do that because of the number of strands that honestly is the only difference right really yeah but you see if I was doing um, if you want to get through three, then you just lift it up a bit. And then when I want to go up to the next level, I did two. But that's the only difference I'd say, and I, and I got quicker at it, is you need to lift it to go through. You and just then have to get used to holding it, don't you? Yeah, you do well. You with the knitting needle, you hold them differently to how you would The yarn is the same, which is mm. great, because I think that's the hardest thing to learn with crochet. It's more to, it? it's, yeah. is getting the yarn, but, it's just great. So even with um, half double crochet, it's brilliant. And then, yeah, and like, I mean, this beige is really boring, isn't it? So if I wanted to do um, a treble, wind it round once, I just decided to do half and then go round through two. But that's the, honestly, the only difference is you really need to, I tried pulling it tighter to see whether the tension looked any different. And, and it does a bit, but, it's actually quite hard work trying to pull it tight. Oh, well, that beige yarn has been sat in my stash for I cannot tell you how long. <laughs> and I would never have used it, would no, I? No, no. You think, well, it's not like you, that colour at all. But you see, you that like could be, colours. all I've got, I think, is 15 stitches. So you imagine if that was 15 in normal, it'd be like that big. Yeah. So if I'd done double that, you know, I could, if mm. I wanted to do a blanket, mm. and then I've mixed it. So what I can do now is that even if you don't want a completely multicoloured mad effect, you could keep one base colour and put another colour in, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. That'd look good, wouldn't it? Yeah. I yeah. want to see what that looks like knitted now. Right. So we need to cut this off, and I'll just show you what it's like. Yes, I've seen scissors. No, that's the rotary hook. I knew there'd be something, but I'd forget. Pair of scissors. Can we get some scissors, please? We're moving everything around, so things have gone missing. It's because we're winging it, aren't we? Yes. Let's see if I can break it. Right, the gauge and the winder. So I should I'll bring some scissors. The gauge and the winder has sold out. Goodness. So, <sighs> done uh, it. Oh, so look, she's got scissors now. Oh, bless. 
thank you. Um, what happens when you run out? Do you just knot them? Right, so say, say it runs out, I would just, or say you ran to, to the end of, say the purple. Yeah. And you went and got another colour. You'd have to, you'd, all I'd do is, I don't even really, I, I try to get the same see, sort oh, of no, gauge. Can't see you. Um, so that's not the same set of gauge. It just might be nice, because it, it'll, if you've got like a thicker gauge, then it, it might be a bit bumpy and uneven, might it, your, ten, your, your yeah. tension, but... Yeah, I guess so. I so just try them, and yeah. probably not on the same, but as long as it's not a massively difference. Not a massively difference, yeah. I, um, so... Pretend, so just knot it on. Pretend that I run out, just knot it on. And then what you find is you can just weave it in. Leave a little bit longer, you know, don't leave... Don't, don't not, um, tie it right at the end because they don't weave in as well, do they? I would, I leave, leave, leave it a bit yes. longer. I say it's with my, yeah, because with my crochet I did it but on the ends. Yeah, but, but sometimes you can just sort of get it to wind in itself, you know, just yeah. twist it round. But leave longer ends go, to tie yeah, it on. And then carry on with your winding again. Just, Can't you know, believe that's sold out now. Yeah, which I've obviously cut off now, so. They were. And just carry on and it seems to like hide itself because i think as you're twisting and winding it wraps it around itself which is better isn't it when because i brought them in it wraps around also itself because i've been doing mine i mean they're fine like this but it would have been better if they were sort of a bit more twisted yeah. together but what i what i just love is that how you get that center pull that center oh can pull. i have a go with yours now then so right so now what we've done is i've just tucked it in your your, uh, yeah. your end and then pull <gasps> it out Oh, and because you've got it through the hole. Because you've got it through the hole. Oh, that's where we put that knot back on. <laughs> that's why that, because I demonstrated adding it into it. You can watch this back on YouTube. So when you get your so wind now, at home. You just will keep. <gasps> that's amazing. I want to go good? now. That is like amazing. a little egg, isn't it? The toll has sold out, but the crochet hooks are still available. I love the way Julie's wound up this and I'm going to have a go of it. No, you're fine. I think it's good. <laughs> it's lovely to see people using it. <laughs> Look at this. So when you come to do normal chains, absolutely the same as normal. I'm keeping it around my fingers in the same way. A lot of people hold their crochet hook like this anyway. But I tend to, I, I couldn't really, I don't know, maybe if I practiced a bit, because this is how I normally hold my crochet hook. Maybe I could. I just found it easier. You'll have to have a little fiddle with it, to be honest. You find your own way, don't yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. Which way? Them colours are really good together. So they're so they random and you'd never choose them I, no, really, you would wouldn't, you? But don't they look amazing? Mm, this is like a do. Jubilee quilt. It is. This is coronation blanket, this is. Right. Isn't it? Mm. I think it's a bit royal. It is actually, isn't it? Yeah. Look, that's lovely. And all of these would sit in the bottom, wouldn't they? They would be... Yeah, you'd never use them, would you? No. I mean, they're like me. I, 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 they're there and I, I walk through them away. I'm like, oh, this is a so and so. Well, I know, and it's, so -and -so. I know it's ridiculous, though, isn't it? But, but you see, silly, aren't we? you could make yourself a blanket. What wasn't this? This is your picnic blanket for the summer, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know any other ways of using up yarns. I mean, I guess you. Well, the thing is, even if you would do. Well, pom poms. Yeah, pom poms, yeah. But you've got to have the right yarn, and with this you can mix and some cotton. Some make better pom poms than others, don't they? Some yeah. Yarn, you know, you can mix cotton. You can mix acrylic. You can, you know it doesn't just have I to be one. I could even you know like back of there there's a, a metallic one, a lower next one. You could even mix that in. <gasps> Look what that that because it's so fine. Is this? I wouldn't you? It would take me forever to do anything with that. Yeah, but if you uh, but if you wound mixed that it in through that, with things, yeah, it would be be really nice you'd have a really unusual yarn yeah so oh, all i'd say that. the only difference is is that you have to help this but with knitting you don't really just should we do knitting should we now? do knitting yeah while i do this well there's another ball there that i sort of oh, okay. done, but i haven't done it on the wind of that one but that's all right so we're trying to get right let's thread. talk about the long knitting needles first Thank you, my, my dear, dear assistant, my lovely assistant. <laughs> right, um, let's just cast on. Now, I just, I use the thumb cast on, or I can do the knit cast on. Um, if you D do Does it matter? Not really, no. So, just no. normal knitting? Just normal knitting. So, every, I've seen so many different people do a cast on, different ways, but we'll just do a few stitches. But this can take up to, 
Oh, I bet you can get about 60 to 80 stitches on these. Yes. But these, I mean, and imagine how big it'll be. A quarter of the stock of the long knitting needles. You can just get an amazing amount on them. But I, I wanted these to be so longies because they do sell this type shorter, like, like we do sell yeah. them. But you can get the other ones short from other companies but none of them make a long one like no this. and also none these are them. beautiful so you why make we made these. them yeah, you I make, make them yeah, make them myself um and, and they that's are why we invented them my dad and i just started started doing it because i wanted them and it was just one pair i wanted and then i just started selling them to people i'm amazed at that yeah and people just kept saying where have you got them from i want to yeah, sell but for them 22 pounds and the amount some. of use you're going to get from them yeah so this is my way of casting on Oh, we can see it, that's fine, we can see. Can you see? Yep. So I sort of scoop it up, I sort of go under, onto my thumb, into my needle and then knit it on, like that. Oh yeah, that's unusual. Well it's probably not, I just don't do that. I've never seen that. My grandma taught me how to do this, <laughs> my great grandma. I don't even know what mine is. I don't know what it is. It's probably a funny, you know, you just do funny it. Yorkshire thing is this. <laughs> but I think my grandma told me to wrap it round like that and go in like that. You know, some people do it that way. They sort of wrap and then hold it against the palm like that. Well, I don't know. I'm and just I think I've just adapted this odd way. I'm just going to have to get a piece of you because I can't remember. But you can knit them on as well like this No, way. but you know, I mean, you can't remember how you cast on. No, you just automatically I do it, don't you? I've got to do you? it to find out with this T-shirt. So there's another way to do a few cast-ons. So you can do it. Go into that first stitch and cast on. Keep checking out on these long needles that way. because. So you go in, round, and then you twist and go in that way. There's that one. Right, this is how I do it. What's mine? So I go under. You go in between, don't you? Yeah, yeah. and then I go round. Oh, they, I haven't used the knitting needles. These are great. And then I go over. What's that? Oh. Is that a cable cast on? Yes, I think it might be. Yeah. So well, I, I don't, I don't tend to go in between, ones. you see, I go into that stitch. Oh, yeah, no, I go underneath. It's, totally, it's the way my mum taught me. Yeah, it's just the way you're you taught into oh, it. I'm using the I short do prefer ones. The, thumb, the thumb method, me. I must admit. The only other one I've ever done is, you know, the long tail, which you have to do because it's stretchy. Have you ever done that well, one? Well, that is the thumb method, isn't it, the long tail? Oh, that when you've got a sling. Well, I you have to, to do that. You have to. No, it's where you, you you pull out the yarn and you start from the other end. So if you want it to be really stretchy, so like the collar or right, something, right. and you kind of pull out the yarn and then you start from that end, it's really weird. Oh. And it makes it super stretchy. Oh, does it? Well, yeah. I, you have to teach me that one. I've only ever done it a couple of times right. where if you're doing a jumper and you want the bottom to be a bit stretchy. Right. It took so me ages, see, actually. you just knit. As you normally would do. But I always put my needle under my arm. We discussed this once before, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, did we? Well, I guess, you see, if you've got the little ones... Right. Yeah, because I struggle with little ones because I can't get them under my arm. <laughs> but most people prefer the little ones. Yeah, so the little ones are great, but if you want to do something big, if you're going to do a big blanket, you will need the longer ones. Yeah, because you don't have to sew any pieces together. And that was really the, that, what was behind it. I didn't want to sew pieces together. I wanted to do one all Well, in there's one piece. the long ones in the graphic. And if yeah. you did, say, like granny squares with it, you could even still crochet them together. Um, I use six strands of tinsel yarn with the large needles. Oh, that'd be nice, Ooh. wouldn't it? Very nice. 70 Very stitches for a fab king size blanket. Thank you for that, yeah. 70 That's good. stitches, good 70s. idea. See, that'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Make one for yourself, make one for everyone you know, have one for in the car, one for your picnic blanket. Yeah, and you've used all that yarn. Um, on the large needles, £22, you need to check out very quickly because they are about to sell out. Oh, this is good, right, I've done a whole line of knit now. I'm gonna try pearl. Mine is That's useless, just what by I'm the way. Now. I'm going to Because I've pearl. only got a few stitches, so I don't think you could do anything with mine. But this is just one T-shirt strand. So did you reckon two would be better? For knitting it, see, it is better, yeah. It depends what you're making. If you were doing a blanket, it might be okay. It's a bit loose. It, but yeah. if you were doing, say, a bag, you'd want it more compact. So I would do oh, two. Oh, okay. But you see, actually, that's what I should have done. They would look nice together, wouldn't yes, they? Yes, they would, wouldn't they? Yeah. Oh, I'm going we'll to start again now. Them. Oh, I've still got 20 minutes. Um, hi, ladies. We can the wind that. I have a question, just to make sure I have it right in my head. You can mix any yarns. Yes, Carolyn. Right, look. Yes. Right, I'm going to show from you. from three-ply right up to Super Junker. Right, look. So I've got T-shirt and I've got gorgeous fluffiness. Chenille, isn't it? Like, that's yeah. beautiful, isn't it? 
I mean, you can use, obviously, if you mix yarns, you've got to think about washing. That's the only thing I'd say. Good, is that's that you've a good got thing to think say, about yeah. it. Yeah. So probably hand wash it, because if you're mixing, well, what you're going to have to do is wash it to oh. the one that's the most sensitive. So yes. if you mix wool with cotton and a, or wool with acrylic, you'll have to hand wash it. You know. Yeah, because it'll other, fail, to, won't it? Unless you, yeah. Unless you keep it really, really cool. Yeah, that's what I mean. Fail. It only that would it gets be too warm, the it? only thing and what i would say with it when you do it is use the stick to test the um how many strands you're putting together but then do what i've just done just cast on or um crochet five I've, i cast on five didn't take long to undo or crochet five chain quarter the stock of the short needles have gone when you think about it when when you buy a pattern the first thing as tension. a designer, that uh, we yeah, have to do point. is do your tension. Because when yeah. you're designing, that's how you design from a tension square. That's, yes. that's how you get all your calculations and everything from your tension square. So I know it's a bind, but it really is better to do a tension square. Yeah, and you don't need to do loads because the thing no. is, you're not... Well, you could knit clothing. You could. You could. You could. I mean, you can do scarves, cowls. Um, you can do, like... The short ones are great for wraps, scarves things. and cowls. Um, but I mean, honestly, it depends how great you are. If, you, if you're good at patterns and working it out, you could. You could knit a I, pair of I trousers. I have some patterns for T-shirt yarn, which... Marvellous, thank you. I'll buy a hook because I have loads of wool from Carolyn. Yes, do. Which are due do. to be released, redone again. I made out of T-shirt yarn. Um, I have a jumper and a gilet. Oh, so I yeah. I haven't them on yet. So you can, you could. I mean, but again... We will fetch them on eventually. You'd have to do a tension square to yeah. see. But, you know, if you want to just... What I would say is when you get yours, just go, right, I'm going to make um, a scarf. Start off with a scarf. You'll get ideas then. Yeah, yeah and then start, you'll think... Once you start, your creative mind will kick in and you'll start thinking, oh, if I do this, I'll yeah. do that. Mm. Yeah. And like I say, I sat there and watched Beyond Paradise. I love Beyond Paradise. Brilliant. Then I watched Death in Paradise, um, <laughs> which is very strange that they were on after yeah, each other. Yeah, Paradise. That was Friday. And... Oh, I worked. I thought, yeah, this is great. I yarn everywhere. Cause... Right, look, that's run out now. I don't know how that happened, but it has. But oh, so you have I'll to tie is... another one in. Yeah, that shouldn't happen because it, I've, I've wound it, haven't we, before? But if it um, did, you'd just tie another one. Do you want one. that green one? That yeah, goes we'll try with that it. that one on. But it's, what's weird is it's that... It's just nice for you to watch um, while I'm doing it. What's weird is that you can try these combinations and you don't know what they're going to look like, but they just seem to work. They don't they? It's funny, isn't it, how they work? Yeah, I know. I mean, I just sort of played. This is amazing. Played with it and just left it in a bag, and I didn't look, and I kept pulling it out because I kept getting very. I'm a very pink and purple person, and, and right. And so I kept everything with them colours. <laughs> and we're trying to get out of that and try something different. So I thought I'll just keep putting it in and getting like getting one and not knowing what's there. Yeah. The most amazing things went together. I yeah? mean, this is great because you're using all your yarn which you already own. And you know what, if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, so say something like this scarf. So if you thought, well, I really want a scarf, you could buy, if you wanted, the base colour. Then you could use your other yarns yeah. to mix in with it as the other colour, if you wanted to. If you wanted to. Sky's your limit, there's nothing, yeah. but nothing, you think there's no these, rules or anything. These short needles are £12. £12! And how much, yeah, that would be How much fun will you have with your £12? Well, how pounds? much money have you got sitting in your yarn stash? Yes, that you're good willing idea. to admit to. Yeah, and now you can put it to use. Yeah, that. So the twelve pounds for the short needles opens up the value for that. But you know, if you've got kids, teenagers, newbies, knitting, get them a pair of these. They'll love it. I use the short knitting needles to make blankets. My cats, they love them. I got a second oh. set of long needles for a friend who loves to knit. Cat, yes. Yeah, cats will like them. They like to pour it. Don't yes. Them. Yeah. Right, more of you are coming in for the knitting needles, that's good. It depends whether you like crochet or it'll get both. And you will get, actually, well, I worked out with the crochet hook, you need to lift it over a bit. But, I mean, honestly, I only did two, a couple of hours. And same with the knitting, you will get used to it. I've worked out yeah, doing you do pearl, get used to it. it's easy if you put your thumb in to lift it up. Yes, yeah, you find your own little technique, don't you, of doing it. Right. I just wanted to show you, look at that. Look what that looks like when you mix it together. Oh, oh that looks lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> look at that. You've got the t-shirt. I mean, and that, who knew? Who knew, yeah. I've never done that together actually before and it looks really good, doesn't it? Cool. 
Those are short knitting needles. Look, I've just done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just because I was trialing it. But you could easily work out, couldn't you? Probably only need to do that much. Go, oh, okay, so those two yarns makes four inches. I want it to be it, so I'll do more. You don't yeah. need, that's the whole point, is because it's your yarn that you're using. I mean, I've that's basically going to um, be a tension square, that little bit I've done in this little bit of time, isn't it? You can work out. So let's show yours. Oh, wow. And that I'm going to hold them up there. So. Um, that's what you get with them. Well, you'll get the same with the long and the short. It's obviously you can make more. Yeah. That's yeah. fab. And then well, this you can blanket. see them from there, can't you? Yeah, I'll, I'll be spaced out. You can think, well, I've got 12 there. I can get another 12 Yeah, there. and then you could Just, measure that as yeah, well. Yeah, you could, yeah. yeah. I mean, look at this. That. I mean, I did that in one night. Did you? Yeah, because I needed to do it for here. So I just did it in one night. I mean, it's what I look like, so thick. Tassels. It feels like this is like you could take this on a picnic, couldn't you? Yeah, it's it's really quite, it is thick, that one, isn't it? Yeah. You imagine you, uh, we should go down a National Trust shop on our way back and we'll sell yeah. this. Because <laughs> I reckon. Yeah, get in touch with them. We'll yeah. start making them. <laughs> with tassels, I reckon we could be on a right winner. Right. Well, that, I thought that'd be nice as a bed runner, that. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Bed, wouldn't it? Yeah, as well. it's gorgeous. Mm. Gorgeous. And what's your in your bag? One. That's the that's the Pennine blanket. That's See, the, look you've got at the that. pattern on the website. So this is the Pennine blanket. Look at that. And, and this is it. just yarn from Julie Stash. Yeah. I just get fed up, so I just did a bit, a bit different pattern yeah. on it, you know. And so, how lovely yeah. is that? So, it depends on this the yarn. This goes everywhere. You, this is usually in the car, and it it's depends on the yarn that you use yeah. as to what it feels but like. There's loads of strands there. Look. Oh, you've got loads. I mean, so this, I, is, this is all four ply, I think. Is it? Yeah. There's loads and loads of it because I had absolutely lots of. Can we get uh, an overhead on this? Loads of four ply. Look at them all. Bet this. Whoa. Yeah. So now look at this. This is four ply. If I pull it out like that, just make a little yeah, hole in Julie's out blanket. Out. No, you're not. I'm pulling one out as well. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Yeah. Well, I've, I've counted thirteen. So um, perhaps, perhaps, yeah, you might. I might miss one. one. Th well, yeah, thirteen. Yeah. So look at all that. That and you think of all the yarn you're using up, or what you could do, you know, because you can work out with your stick, or you'll just have to try it and see. Yeah. Knit a few rows. How how much um, double knit you need, or how much chunky, or whether you're going to put four ply with it, just to get that right thickness. Look, you just pull it back into shape it just again. Goes back, yeah. But, you know, you can do something like Julie's done here. She's put blues together and sort of reds and blues together. Yeah, you yeah. have sort of... Yeah, I tried to get that to gradually... That was when I were trying to get everything to match. Well, a bit like with gradually my, go um, through. my yeah. granny square. Bit of an ombre effect here. I'm it is. <laughs> so I tried to, you know, I sort of put... Um, sort of put colours together. Right, there are single figures of the crochet hooks left and there are more of you've got it in baskets than we've got available. Um, right, thank you, Julie. You're very welcome. That was fab. Very welcome. That was absolutely fab. Unbelievable. Um, right, I'm going to have to go back through the, the products. I'll just remove my knitting. <laughs> well, I'll wind it for you. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but I am taking my crochet hook with me. Yes. <laughs> I did gift you that. Yeah, later. there's no way I'm, I'm giving you some needles. No I shall be expecting way. things done on your needles next time. <laughs> there's no way I'm giving this back. So this crochet hook, that's mine. I'll put mine there. Right, oh, okay, the crochet arm. hook. We have not got many of these left. Twelve ninety nine. We've shown you what it does, we've shown you how to use it and how brilliant it is. An amazing opportunity. Twelve ninety nine. Keep it as an ornament in your home when you're not using it because it's so lovely. Well done on all of you who checked out this morning. We are in single figures of the crochet hooks. We have got, we have now got more of you in basket. I've got it available. So busy. So busy. The winding tool is sold out, so we'll have to get more of those in. More of those. Brilliant. Um, Thank you so much, everybody. It's brilliant. It's just well, it's just brilliant. They're just brilliant. Um, long needles. This is what Julie was using. Da, da, da. 
comes without the knitting but it does come let me show you because you've seen what the long needles look but look at the box not only that comes with the lid so gift yeah beautiful boxes aren't they look yeah. at that For, your no, box comes them. with it 22 pounds and you get the box and you are making use of what you've got in your stash it's like patchwork for knitting yeah, it is, isn't, <laughs> isn't it? it? Good, yeah, yeah. Patchwork for knitting and crochet. Fantastic. Please do check out on these. Again, we are oversubscribed. We have more of you've got these in baskets than we've actually got in stock. If you don't want to miss out, you do need to check out. Then we do little ones. These are the ones I was using. I'm going to hold them like that so you can see in the box. They have a green lid. Green lids for long ones. A uh, quarter of the stock has got these. Maybe you've already got the long ones, you want to have a go with the short ones, or you want to buy some for a friend, or do you know, what a fun present. Maybe you know someone who, who does a bit of knitting. For £12, it's a really fun pre present for someone to go, here you are then, you think you do knitting, have these. Yeah. It's quite... know, people would never go to got them, yeah. yeah. No, of it's hard they to get haven't. for a knitter because you think, well, do they like that? Yeah, I know. And what once you say to them, want, and... you know all that wool you've got. Yeah. And you honestly, people will be commissioned. Start now, you'll have all your Christmas blankets knitted in you time. Will. Yeah. Um, Tunisian long. So there's the Tunisian crochet hook long. We did demo Tunisian today. But on the 16th of January is when they were launched. And was that demoed on the 16th? Yes, it was, yeah. Okay, so it was demoed then. Yeah. Um, so on the 16th of January is when they were demoed. And you can watch it back if you want to see what happens. And we're doing it happens. the next show. I know we're demoing the next show. Yes. Aren't we? Yeah. So get ahead. Get so ahead for the next show. I think it's two it. weeks. Is it? Oh, I don't know what the date is. It's 31st. Okay, we'll have a look. We'll have a look. Um, then we've got the short Tunisian. I've got, I think I've got that yarn. Fluff up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> All that little yarn. Gonna need this. Um, that's going to look amazing when you do that. There we go. That's the short Tunisian. The only difference is, is how long a piece you can make, because obviously the diameter, 25 mil, is exactly the same on all of them. So it just depends on what length you want to do, whether you want to be limited. Obviously the crochet hook only comes in one length because you don't keep the um, stitches on your needle. And then I won't show you the stick, because we haven't got any of those left. Oh, right, got to Have we got on. stitch markers? Stitch markers times two, so you can use them to hook around your needle like this if you're knitting to mark or if you're doing crochet then you can take one off and then use the lobster clasp to um, mark that because obviously you'll need something a little bit bigger to see and particularly with the knitting normal markers will not go around them there we go 31st of March 31st of March yes Friday is Tunisian Ooh, crochet. Idea, it's no, John. it's not my day. It's no, not on the 31st of March. That'll be John, I expect. It'll be John, won't it? Yeah. Please do check out on the long knitting needles because we are very limited in stock left. And we can see how many of you got them in baskets. We know who you are, but we won't name you. No, <laughs> joking. <laughs> Caroline! 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 Check on out! <laughs> no, that was dead over. Um, we know how many people we have got them in baskets. <laughs> That'd be so funny, wouldn't it? That's funny. That that's my sister's name, Caroline. Oh, is it? <laughs> Caroline, please, can you check out? <laughs> She'll be all like the shouting at me. <laughs> oh. No, please do check out. We, that's the point is that we can see how many of you got it in baskets. And what happens is you don't check out and then you miss out. And then it's not like we can order some from the factory. Julie's got to go back to the workshop yeah. and make some more. Yeah. And that isn't going to happen overnight. So if you want them, if you want to use it with your stash, once you've invested in the needle or the crochet hook, then that's it. Don't need to buy anything else. Please carry on checking out. Thank you, Julie, for today. Thank you for Fabulous. today. You've been brilliant. It's been great. Um, tomorrow, Enjoyed coming up it. on Sewing Street is, presenting tomorrow is John. John. And 8 o'clock is Gemini Junior and Crafters Tools. Oh, he's got Janet Claire in at 9 o'clock. Freya and Fred. That's weird. That's my, two of my children's names. Anyway, Freya and Fred Isn't and Cat Quilt. Yeah, Freya and Fred. 
10 o'clock new tools by emily roberts um, 11 o'clock janet claire is back with janet claire victoria quilt and at 12 o'clock it's the elna 680 plus sewing machine um just a reminder please do check out on the long knitting needles there are loads as hannah keeps telling me there are loads of you in baskets please do check them out because they once they've sold out um it's a case of julie having to make more on her own and it will take quite a while so um thank you for joining me today i'll be back with you um next monday next monday i was thinking when am i back yeah, next Monday. Oh, yeah. um, we've had a great day. Have we yeah. had a great yeah, morning? We've been looking forward to this. It's we? been really yeah, it's been good. Brilliant. I know. Yeah. I love Thank that. You, You're going to have to make that. Thank you, yeah. everyone who shopped today, and I will see you back here next Monday. <laughs>